proxies from, the place in which we're deriving any of our, our basis for what reality is, is all within this narrow scope of, you know, theisms, and it doesn't align with what I come to know and believe in my short 43 years here is, you know, more questions than answers, but I know that the theisms don't fit. It doesn't when you have a science-based mind and it doesn't when you have a spiritually-based mind. And it doesn't when you're like me, and I know for a fact I've seen things that nothing that we know about science or spirituality can even begin to explain. So I think that there is a God. I don't think there is probably one in the context of the theisms. I think it's too narrow. I think that it limits the idea of the creator that I've been able to formulate in my little tiny brain. I don't I don't think that the question that is being asked is exactly what you think it is, though, in the way that it says, you know, prove to me that God exists. I can in a million and one ways, but not in the scientific manner that you're asking us to, because you're asking us to prove whether or not this theistic God exists. So that was like a rational argument. And again, I made a distinction between deism and theism, but it doesn't sound like you necessarily disagree with what I'm having a conversation about. So I do appreciate you coming on, but I'm gonna look for the next person. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, send a guest request if you disagree. Only send a guest request if you believe in God and you disagree, y'all. We're just looking for some debates, everyone. Yo, Matt, I appreciate the travel with you. I appreciate it, man. W, Matt, in the chat. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah, are you driving? Hello? Hello. All right, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yo, what's up? Are you driving? Uh, no. I'm okay, just, just making sure. Kidding. How old are you? Uh, 28. For sure. Do you believe in God? Uh, yes. Why so? Uh, just personal experiences, but, um, you know, saying prove to me that God exists is impossible. And you know that as well as I do. Do so you believe? You, so if you can't prove that something you believe in exists, why do you believe in it? Well, I can prove to you. I can't prove to you that it exists, but uh, I think even you believe he exists because you spend most of your time trying to get people to prove to you that he doesn't. So that tells me deep down, you must believe that he does also. No, it doesn't. It just means that I acknowledge that people in the society that I live in believe in this, right? And I think that there should be a process in which we, you know, debate people who hold these particular types of beliefs as that can affect legislation, policy, the critical thinking within society. So it's weird to say that I believe in something just because I debate it. As for example, if we were to talk about like whether or not Naruto is like stronger, or a greater, um, I don't know, superhero than, than Mario or something, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that we, we believe that they are in reality. Do you, do you want to believe? Are you even open to believing is the question. Yeah, I am. Absolutely. Right. But it would have to be something that I would have reason to good reason to believe. I can't just there believe something because I have a preference because I, I mean, I prefer to live as a Pokemon master when I die, right? And beat the elite four and win all my gym badges. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it corresponds with reality. Yeah. But it, even, even if you don't subscribe to, you know, Christian ideology, which is what I subscribe to, um, when you die, pretty much all, all the major religions, when you die, you're going to hell if you don't believe in God. So there is a dire, if I'm wrong, so be it. I'll go be a Pokemon master. If you're wrong, you'll go to hell. Yeah. So, um, do you care about Islam, right? They say that if you don't believe in Islam, you're going to go to hell. If you don't submit your will to their God, right? You're going to go to hell. Are you scared about that? So at that point I have, and like, I'm not saying I don't respect you, but I can respect their their position a lot more because at least they believe in something. Wait, 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 no, no, I'm asking, are you scared? Am I scared of what? Uh, of their hell. Uh, no, I'm scared of... No, wait, if you're not scared hell. of their hell, then why would I be scared of your hell? I mean, I see the point you're bringing up, but like I said, they at least believe in something. Most oh, okay, but that's separate to the question, right? They are saying the same thing. If you don't believe in this, right? If you don't submit your will to this God, you're going to go to hell, right? In the same way that you are saying the exact same thing. If you're not scared about them, why, why should I be scared about you? 
Well, when you when you start talking about Islam and and Judaism and Christianity, they're very closely related, and you would have to really dive deep into each of them, and and see and you know pick and choose, look at historical facts to back up each one and you so know, evidence, timeline. right? So we appeal yeah, to the evidence. evidence. It's now not just based upon faith. So if we appeal to the evidence, it seems like we're not going to be accepting any of these religions. I would argue against that because. You know, okay, and, let's go through the evidence then. What's the argument then? Well, if you look at history, the Bible goes, the Bible is very historically accurate. Um, you know, you a lot of people. Like what do you mean by historically accurate? God, a lot of a lot of people that don't believe in God, for example, they believe in evolution. Why do you believe in evolution? Because of faith. You have faith in evolution, not because of science. No, we have evidence. We have evidence of evolution. No, Clear we do evidence. Not. Yeah, we do. We, we have, have lots evidence. of evidence. What are you talking we about? Have evidence. We have evidence of God then. We have fossil records. We literally have fossil records that you can go and you can look at, that you can engage with, that you can date, that you can you can do all these different tests to that we've already done. You can't do that same thing for God. That's not evolution. What are you, what are you talking about that's not evolution? Evolution. We see evolutionary patterns theory. through the fossil record. What are you talking about? You can see patterns, but that does not mean it's true. Evolution is just a theory. Any real scientist will tell you evolution yeah, is theory, a theory. Yeah, theories are fact. proven. Theories are proven. Evolution has not been proven. Just like you're yes, saying, it has. God evolution is a fact and a theory. Thank you for the hand. Evolution. I appreciate it. Evolution is not a fact. You can. Yes, it is. Anybody, yes, it is. It's proven. Anybody, it's a fact. Any real scientist will tell you it's not a fact. Yeah, they will tell you it's a fact. They're going to say it's a fact no, and a theory. They will not. Yes, they will. Any real scientist. Yes, they will. What is a fact? Something that is provable and proven observable. to be true. Yes, evolution is proven. Okay, go repeat evolution for me right now. What are you talking about? We observe it in nature, right? We observe it not only in nature, but we observe, to, observed it in the lab. We've seen speciation. To, we've seen we've seen mutations, adaptations, right? Currently, right now, my eye colors are, are is is technically a mutation, right? Adaptations are not evolution. They they clearly are. No, they're not. They are. What adaptation. do you mean? They're totally different. If you go back to first grade science, you'll learn evolution and adaptation are not the same. The adaptation is a part of evolution. Okay. All right, we can agree there. If if evolution is real, then adaptation is a part. But we still have not had provable, repeatable, observable. We have. Yes, we have. Evolution. Yeah, it is. What are you talking about? I again, I just I related to. We've seen speciation amongst like fruit flies, amongst many different types of species within labs. We've seen speciation even amongst finches. We've seen uh, adaptations. We've seen mutations. Right. We've seen clear evidence of micro, right, and then macro evolution. As macro is just micro plus time. That's it. I mean, what, what are you describing as speciation? Are you are you saying like when a Rottweiler and a pit bull mix together, they create a pit waller, and you're calling that evolution? There, there's going to be a point in which the the the, spe the species diverge into like a separate one, in which cannot reproduce with the other. And when does that happen? Right. It depends on the depends on the circumstance. You look at something like a mule. A mule can't reproduce. It's half, half horse, half donkey. A mule can't reproduce. It's uh, I'm confused. What your point is. Like, are you calling that speciation? Yeah, yeah. When they have so many different different uh, types of uh, characteristics and genes comparative to the prior, since there are so many different changes, we then say that there would be a distinction between the two, right? In terms of the species that it is. That's what speciation is. That's still not something that you can repeat and observe. It, 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 it literally over. is. It literally is. Right? I have stuff listed, listed in my Discord. I can show you stuff, right, clearly of them actually doing this within labs, with doing experiments, right, stuff like that, especially for these particular types of things. So clearly, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Well, like I said, I mean, it's still... It's still not – either way, that's completely off topic. Anyway, i just saying a lot of people believe in that. You still have faith that that's a real thing. No, we have and evidence. You, you, but do we not have evidence of God? Um, I don't think you have good evidence. I don't think you have proof. We have proof of evolution. You don't have proof of God. Actually, we have contradictions that we can bring up for your, the particular religion you, you believe in. Do you want to go through some of them? So in court let – me, let me go this way. We'll just do this. This has been my last point. In court – would your evidence for evolution stack up against my eyewitness accounts for Christianity? If we were, we're just going to take a separate subject. Subject. Uh, if somebody's on trial and I have eyewitness accounts, 
multiple eyewitness accounts and archaeological dates to back it up. You know, I know this is the modern age, so we consider it something different, like video or something like that. And then you had all your evidence that you have for evolution. Who would win in the court if you were defending that person? Us. No. The eyewitness, eyewitness, the eyewitness is literally the lowest account. form of, 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 of evidence. You understand that, right? We would absolutely win. It's not even close, right? The fact that you even think it's close is actually like extraordinarily sad. Like I'm actually serious. I really like, dude, when it relates to, when it relates to the court system, right? Reasonable doubt is what we go off of. You think that we don't have reasonable doubt that a God exists? Reasonable doubt that a God doesn't exist. I mean, no, like, that a God exists. Reasonable doubt that a God does not exist. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I was, it was mixing me up. Um, uh, reasonable doubt in a God's existence. That's what I was meaning to say. I don't. Sorry. I don't see how you could have reasonable doubt for God's existence. What do you? What do you? What do you talk? Okay, so here, do you think God is perfect? Uh, yeah. Okay. He would have. To. Given a perfect creator, do you think that you would expect to see a perfect creation? Um. Well, if you look at the Bible and read the Bible, then you would understand why it's not perfect anymore. Well, no, so I'm, just, I'm just asking be... you the question, right? I'm just, I'm just trying to see what your, what your beliefs are, what your commitments are, right? Given the fact I mean, that the there is... In the beginning, yeah. In the okay, beginning, yes, There's a perfect free throw perfect, shooter. Yeah. Do you expect a perfect amount of free throws made? If there was? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if there was a perfect would. test taker, would you expect perfect test results? Oh, yeah, yeah, if they were perfect. If, if, if someone was a quote-unquote perfect test taker and they got 98% on a test, are they a perfect test taker? Uh, not anymore. No, 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 they, they were never because if they were a perfect test taker, then they would have got 100%, right? Where would you where would you compare that with God? Like, where did he mess okay, up? Well, we'll, we'll show you, right? Do you think human beings are sinful? By what the Bible says, yes, they are. Do you think sin is a flaw? Yes. Do you think humans are created by God? Yes. So if humans are flawed and they're created by God, that means that there's a creation which is, in fla which is flawed, right? Given that there's a creation which, in which is flawed, right? That tells us that we don't have a perfect creator because if there was a perfect creator, we would expect to see a creation in which is flawless or perfect. Not necessarily because, I mean, you can be a great painter and then paint some shitty art, but yeah, then you're not a great painter, right? Or a perfect painter, right? If you, if you are a quote unquote perfect well, that's, painter that's and different. then you paint something imperfect, that means that you were never a perfect painter because if you were a perfect painter, then in no circumstance would you have ever created an imperfect painting. That's different. Whether the person is flawless and perfect and what they create is flawless and perfect. It's two different things, especially when you add in free will, which is what humans are given. You know, we have free will. Just like, you know, animals and everything else. You know, you go around, they do what they do, we do what we do. Yeah, but so does God. God has free will, and God always does the right thing. God never succumbs to the temptation of the devil, right? So if we, we, human beings were perfect, they would never get, never succumb to the temptations of the devil and still could have free will. And the same notion that God does, because God is all-knowing and all-powerful, which means God knows how to create the reality in which human beings have free will and never do evil, Right. Um, and God can actualize that reality as well, because God has the capacity to do the set of all things. Well, that goes into the why we don't have the capacity to understand why he chooses not to have everybody perfect, no sickness, no health. I mean, no sickness, no disease. That's not it, if literally like we can't even comprehend creating a universe and all that. Like, how are we supposed to comprehend what God thinks? That's not like a. We can't be on that level. See, we don't have to comprehend what a God thinks. What I'm saying is that given a God being a perfect creator, what we would expect to see given a perfect creator is perfect things created, right? Or perfect creations. Okay. If we don't see perfect creations, then how could we say that there is a perfect creator? Because the expectation we have for a perfect creator is that we would be perfect. That's my point. Okay. I mean, I see, I see your point. I just, like I said, it, it will never, I will never be able to prove to you that God exists through my, you know, through any, anything that I say to you because you're not basing the same beliefs as I am. Well, so, why don't I have the same beliefs? I don't have the same beliefs because this is, this is literally a contradiction, right? With, with our commitments, 
right? Our commitments are that perfect creators create perfect things, right? We see that there are not perfect things created or in reality. Therefore, there would not be a perfect creator. It's just a contradiction given our commitments, our beliefs. Yeah. What would it take to prove God existed to you? Um, a rational argument. All right, there's no rational argument here because there's a contradiction. A rational argument. Okay, so what, I mean, what do you think happened? You think just everything magically got here. You think that's more likely? Magically? Well, I mean, you're the one that believes that God magically created the world. I don't believe anything magically created us. What I say is that I don't have a sufficient explanation for why we exist, right? But I could provide a better explanation comparative to, say, what religious people would, would give or um, um, spiritual people would give in terms of, right, uh, like the theoretical virtue of simplicity. But um, I, I don't think there's a sufficient explanation. Would you accept a uh, simulation theory? No. You don't, you don't like that one either? No, it, it, you rely upon so many more explanations, I mean, so many more assumptions that don't necessarily explain the data set or explain why we exist, right? It just adds another layer to explain, right? Because if there's a simulation in which we exist in, well, that doesn't necessarily explain where the simulation came from, right? As what we would expect given a simulation is that there is a simulation creator, Right, because our we have, our experiences with simulations are that they have to be put into place. I'm not convinced this reality is a simulation. Therefore, it wouldn't give me any type of right um, an inference that we would have to have some sort of creator with a mind or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's all given but, our prior experiences there. Where where technology is now with the ability to do all these computer programs, artificial intelligence, we're at a point where we can create like worlds within you know software where people and you know characters or what do you want avatars they can interact with each other without outside influence it's in the code you see what i'm saying yeah but that's not like it's not like they're sentient right so um when it relates to um like simulations yeah sure at some point we're going to develop a simulation in which has these particular characteristics but when i'm talking about analyzing it from the situation we are in we would have to posit more assumptions to be able to say that th this was a simulation, because when we say that there's a simulation, it then still begs the question of why we exist. It doesn't explain the question that we exist. So it's an unnecessary assumption in terms of explaining or giving a sufficient explanation as to why we exist. Yeah. The reason I brought that up is just because, you know, we don't necessarily have to know how God did it, but the more technology advances, we see ways in which a God makes even more sense because we don't know where we're going to be at 200 years from now. Right now, it seems completely out of the stretch of our imagination that someone could create a whole world and do all this and do all that. 200, 300 years from now, we probably will be able to do the exact same things. Maybe the but, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, so like, I, I, I'm, I'm confused what your point is, right? I don't, I don't think that, I don't, I don't think that there's good reason to believe in simulation theory as again, it would, it would, it would assume things that are unnecessary in terms of providing a sufficient explanation. What I'm saying is a lot Stephanie, of people I appreciate trouble, description. Thank you so much. A lot of people have trouble believing in God just because they can't see all the science and the, you know, blah, 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 the how, and it's hard for them to just, you know, trust it. Like every time you mean I the go, evidence right like well yeah because we we require evidence to believe things in almost ev like, any other circumstance if someone I don't claims have to have you, evidence to eat a, a cheeseburger you know i'm like okay well yeah, yeah you do like, because because the evidence that you have with cheeseburgers in the past is that they are not going to kill you if you had experience in the past that said that it could be likely that this particular thing could kill you you probably wouldn't eat it right but because you have experiences in which indicate that it's not going to kill you because the statistical probability is low that it was going to kill you you feel okay with eating it I guess, but like I said, some people have that. Most people that cannot believe in God, that's their problem. They they, they get too scientific based, and they blind reason? themselves. No, no, no. What, what you're doing in the circumstances, you're a special pleading. You're saying that in every other circumstance, we require evidence for the beliefs that we have, right? But in this particular circumstance, we don't require evidence for the beliefs that we have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I don't hate science. I seen somebody in the comments say no, that. No, I'll ask like, you this question: If I said the Earth is flat to you, are you going to accept that? You just got to trust that the Earth is flat. <laughs> to be honest with you, and that's a funny. I'm glad you asked that because 
A lot of people say it's round. A lot of people say it's flat. I don't see how it really matters at the end of the day. Um, but I have not seen the whole damn earth, so I don't know. <laughs> so no, I'm not just going to accept it. If you say the earth is flat, I'm not just going to believe you. But if you say it's round, I'm not going to believe it either. We just have evidence to indicate that it's round. Like very, very clear evidence to indicate that it's round. I mean, we have a lot of, I mean, that don't mean, <laughs> that don't mean it is if I haven't seen it with my own eyes. If we have really good, okay, do you have to go to the moon that it's, that it's a star? I mean, I mean, not the moon. Do you have to go to a, the sun to know that it's a star? No, but like. No, have, wait, 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 why? Before I believed the earth. Why don't you have to go to the sun to know that it's a star? Have you, have you, do you know the sun exists? Have you been to the sun? I mean, it might. I don't know. Have you taken a scoop out of the sun to make sure the sun exists? I don't know. I just trust it. I have faith that it's the sun. You, it's only faith, right? You have no evidence? I just trust. I just know it's there. So, I mean, it's hard not to have faith in that. You know it's there because we have evidence, right? Very clear evidence, right? Yeah. I mean, I can look up and see it right now, but. Yeah, and you can go outside and you can see the, you can see the sun get blocked by the horizon. Right, if it was flat, right, it would the perspective would make it so that it gets smaller. Right, it doesn't get smaller; it gets blocked by the horizon. Yeah, yeah, so that, you, that you can't be explained Earth, under a flat Earth model. So you think the Earth is round? Clearly, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can't believe we're having this conversation in 2023. Like, I really, I don't believe it. I actually, I really don't. I mean, can we not just? I mean, maybe it's a little bit curved or something. Maybe it's not completely flat. Yeah, so it's gonna be like this. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like gonna like be a like a domed up, like a triangle. Yeah, a triangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like this. Yeah. Okay, so there's gonna be one point at the top, in which can see down both sides with no perspective error. Where's that at? Oh yeah, the the bottom. Yeah, it just it, it depends where you live. For real, so real, so real. That's why it's hot. This is Switzerland, that's right? And, that, and, and that's, that's why they're, the they're never in any war because they're right here at the, top, at the peak of the world. That's the equator. Equator? <laughs> Wait, oh, so yeah. the sun, so the sun does it, what, how, do you, how do you explain like the different temperatures around the world? Um, you just, uh, I, I blame evolution. <laughs> I, I'm talking, I'm saying, how do you explain the different temperatures? Bro, I'm totally, I'm totally messing with you at this point. No, uh, I don't believe the Earth is flat. I think okay, we're gonna go to the next person, everyone. If you disagree, send a guest request right now. Please only send a guest request if you disagree. Tap that screen. Let's try to get to 150,000 likes, everyone. Oh, he accepted. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Yo. How old are you? 25. What's your birth year? 97. I mean, 26. Sure I'm 26. You hear me? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. You said 25 and then 26, so. No, I'm 26. January 1st. I mean, January 21st, 1997. I'm 26. Okay, okay. All right. So, do you believe in God? Yeah, I do. Why so? I mean, would, I, would you believe me if I told you? Well, show me one thing in the world that doesn't have a creator show you one thing in the world that doesn't have a creator yeah um well uh, I, don't, I don't i don't know what would have like a creator headphones. and what doesn't did your, did your headphones make themselves no my headphones were created by something but that's because i have experiences with my headphones being created with things right uh, by human beings i i don't have experience with things creating universes therefore i wouldn't be able to make an inference about something creating the universe who's more what's more complicated you or the headphones um, probably, um, complicated. Or, I, like, I don't, I don't know how to judge that. It depends on what you're looking at. Probably my body. body. Is the human body more complicated than your headphones? Sure. Right. But just because something is complicated doesn't mean that it requires a creator because God is more complicated than humans. Right? So hold on. Where do you think we came from as human beings? Um, well, evolutionary processes. Evolution. What is, can you explain that? Yeah, yeah. So ch evolution is essentially just change in allele frequency over time. So there's going to be a specific change in the in the number of like uh, like characteristics within your genes, right, over time, so that you develop different characteristics over an extended period of time. So you just think we just made ourselves boom? 
we didn't make ourselves, right? Um, uh, life came about through processes, um, like uh, we, you can explain by like a biogenesis, other things like that, given the particular conditions that exist on the earth, right? And uh, clearly speaking through the changes that we see within, uh, like through adaptation and through mutations and stuff like that, um, we, we can see that com clearly speaking, right, complexity came about through the the adaptation of these different types of uh, like uh, like characteristics. So what are we going to be next? I, I don't I don't know what what we're gonna look like next. Thank you for the hand. I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. It depends on the environment that we exist in. Depends what we need to live in accordance with it. It depends who decides to reproduce. So you think all of this stuff right here is by coincidence? Like the human body, we on this ball that has stuff that grows from the ground that benefits us, like fruits, vegetables. There's water here for us. We're not too far, not too close from the sun. You think all of this is just just boom? It just it just happened. Yeah, if the conditions weren't particular that way to like sustain our existence, well, then we wouldn't be able to observe that we didn't exist because we okay. didn't exist to observe that, right? So clearly speaking, the only place in which we would be able to observe whether or not we exist is if we exist in the first place. That's why it's an observational bias. So you just believe that some organisms came together and it just, it just made us? I believe that there was a there was a complexity that came about over time due to evolutionary processes. Yeah. But that but then that why didn't we turn into nothing else? It's been over two hundred thousand years, and we've still been the same species. Um. Well, clearly speaking, we have been adopting different types of qualities. Right. That's why um, I have different qualities from many other humans on the planet. Right. I have hazel eyes, in which are you know unlikely to exist. It's about like you know two percent of the population. So I mean, clearly they, speaking, I think that color, um, we see many eyes, different man. types of characteristics. And Blitz, thank you so much for the raid, man. I appreciate it, Blitz. Thank you very much, man. I don't think the color of your eyes matter, bro. Whether it's blue, red, green, as long as you can see, that's what matters. Oh, no, no, no. no I agree, right? But I'm just saying that these types of characteristics have been ad like, ad like adopted over time. So why don't you believe God exists? Well, uh, it depends on the type of God that you believe in, right? We can provide internal contradictions with many different types of beliefs. We can provide probability-based arguments that relate to the amount of assumptions a particular explanation might have, uh, different things like that. Yeah, I don't believe God is a human being. I don't believe Jesus is God. I well, believe what God do you believe is God? It's an entity, a divine being that we, we don't know what it looks like. We've never seen it. But it's a higher source. It's a higher power. How do you know that there's a higher source if you don't know any of the qualities that it would have? Because for me, bro, there's, there's, if, if I was to put, say I, I brought you somewhere and it was a room, right? And then I opened the door, it's a shoe in there, and I told you the shoe just made itself. Over five years, the, the, whatever in the room came together, boom, boom, and the shoe made itself. Would you believe me? Um, no, I wouldn't believe you, right? Because the shoes don't have properties in which could bring about this particular reality. Right, but in terms of the explanations that I provided to you, you can provide a particular reality that would exist without a god and which would have properties and which can bring about um, the types of affairs that we see in reality today. But bro, there's nothing, nothing just creates, everything has to have a creator. Logically, if you was to start a business or create anything, you would have to be, even be the boss. Wait, wait, if everything has to have a creator, right, then does God have to have a creator? That's like me asking, why can't a boy give birth? Some things are just is. That's I, that's oh, way. Oh, maybe I the know. universe just is then. What you mean the universe is just is? Yeah, yeah. In the same way that you're saying that God just is, can't you say the universe just is, and then you don't have to assume a God outside of that? And then you would have to you then you would have to prove all this stuff is just by it, 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 it's just by chance. That there's water here for us. Out of all the planets we're on, this one that has water. That the fruits and vegetables that grow out the ground are good for us. That we're not too far, not too close from the sun. You would have to prove all of that to be by chance. And the odds of that, bro, is, is, is slim to none, bro. Like, there's no way all of this is a coincidence. You, you, when your, mom, when your mother had you in her stomach, she didn't even know what you were, whether you was going to be a boy or girl. But she actually did at a point, right? But, like, when it relates no, she, to this. No, I promise you, she probably had to have, like, yeah, they, they, the yeah, yeah, they went to the I'll hospital, and even though I was still in the womb, she, she knew, right? But here, my, my point would be that is that this is also true under the theist model, right? God's desires being this particular way to bring about a reality with human beings in which we have water, in which we have all the amenities we need, rather than a reality with Nickelodeon slime, or rather than a reality with just marbles, or rather than a reality from Rick and Morty, right? Um, it could have been any of those other realities, but God randomly had the particular desires to bring about this reality, 
rather than another one. So the same issue also exists under the, the, the model in which you say that God created the universe. Hold on, run that, say that again. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get what you Yeah, saying. God's desires are random insofar to bring about this reality, like a reality in which we have water, we have the sun, we have amenities that we need to survive uh, in the perfect conditions, whatever you would consider that way, rather than a reality where there's Nickelodeon slime everywhere or marbles everywhere or shoes or pizzas walking around or, or um, floating pigs. Right. Any other possible reality that there could have been. There's an infinite set of possible desires that God could have had to create things that are separate from the reality in which we exist in. But a creation has no right to ask the creator how to make it. Like, imagine if an iPhone was to tell no, 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 Steve Jobs. No, 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 no. You were asking the question of, oh, you have to explain how this could, random process could happen. And I'm saying you also have to explain how this random process happened when it relates to God's desires. Do you, you see how you both have, we both have to assume that God had the necessary desires to bring about this reality rather than another one, and the state of fundamental particles prior to the universe had the necessary properties to bring about this reality rather than another one? It's the same assumption on both sides. Bro, the odds of some random stuff just coming together and creating this human, perfect human body, like, bro, why isn't our butthole on our forehead? Why isn't our ear? Yeah, same thing with God. Same thing with God, right? God could have desired to put, um, to put that on our forehead. God could have desired to put our eyes on the bottom of our feet. God could have desired to put our eyes on our ears, so, okay, right? Okay, but God okay. decided to, to put it on the front of our face, right? With our nose, with our mouth. Thank you for the paper crane. I appreciate it. Randomly, rather than another want. So all these, these little things that came together, who made them? Yeah, who made God's desires to be this particular way? I'm saying, like you said, these things that came together in this evolution before us whatever whatever came together to make us who made it who made god's desires this particular way you see how it's a base assumption that this particular property is necessary and that they have this the same way that you say it's necessary and they have it under the god you can't a creation can't ask a creator why that's like what? imagine if you got hired you can't ask a creator that's like say if we get hired at amazon then we want to go talk to jeff Bezos and ask him why he did this why he did that you can't so a, your creation can't ask his creator why you did this? Why okay, you then, did that? Then don't ask the fundamental particles. What are you saying? What are you, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Th you thank you for about? the paper crane. I appreciate it. The fundamental particles is the, is the comparison, the explanation that I'm uh, comparing to the explanation you're providing. So if you're saying you can't question what caused the universe, well, then don't question the fundamental particle view. I'm, I'm, I'm really confused. Yeah, that's what you were saying. You, you, said, you said don't question the, that, the creator of the universe. Well, if, if the, this f uh, set of fundamental particles created yep. the universe or led to its existence, well, then clearly you can't question that what, explanation what, what, what either. What would you question the creator and say? Um, I, I could question many things. Why do children die of cancer? Bro, there's many reasons people die from cancer. Yeah, why, why do people die in earthquakes and tornadoes? Why are people enslaved? Why do children get raped? Why is there child sex trafficking? Why are their illnesses particularly targeted to unalive old people who are younger, old, younger people? Why do people get dementia and die? Right. Um, I mean, we can we can go through a million different things that negatively impact people. Right. And you can you can have no explanation for any of them. But all of this stuff is, is it, it comes from man made stuff. People, people, people dying. We made guns. People so, so, so gen genetically, genetically based diseases, right, and illnesses. Those like are what? those are, uh, well, for example, if we want to relate to leukemia in some circumstances, it's genetic, right? That's not determined by Let's, by us, right? You, That's if, genes. Who created make, our genes? If you make two categories and separate everything in the world that man made and, and stuff that man can't claim, like, can you explain fruit? to me how how human beings created the hurricanes? No, I don't know what you mean. A human being cannot create yeah, no hurricane. Yeah, they can't, right? So who created hurricanes? Bro, it's, it's a natural, it's a natural, it's a natural thing. And who created nature? It's like rain. Who created huh? nature? God. Well, okay, so God created hurricanes that kill people. Bro, we all have to die at some point, bro. Okay, that doesn't mean that God should be able to kill us. That doesn't mean that I should be able to go onto Fifth Avenue and just use a Glock or something, right? Like, that's unbelievable. But then that, 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 that determines your faith. Like, I'm a Muslim. We believe in heaven and hell. We believe this world is just a test. After this, it's either heaven or hell. Yeah, so you, you believe that if I don't know if a God exists and I don't decide to believe in that particular God, I deserve eternal conscious torment. No, you don't. No, I don't believe that. You don't believe in eternal conscious torment? No. Well, no, it, it, it depends on what the person is knowing. Like, say you, 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 you don't have a faith. 
So in my faith, God, God, God would only judge you on what you know. So, so, okay. So what is God judging me on then? Whatever the knowledge you have. Well, I mean, I've heard about the different religions. I don't have knowledge that they're true. So do I not get right. judged on that? I mean, did you really go do your research in debt and read and read and read? And let's say I still, I did all the research I can. I still, I don't know whether or not it's true. I don't think it's true. Stuff like that. Right. Do I go to hell? Do you believe in right and wrong? Yeah. Okay. For there to be right and wrong, it has to be one truth. They can't be wrong if there's no truth. Well, I believe in subjective morality, right? So the, the truth of morality is determined by my stance. Bro, no. One plus one is two all around the world. I don't care what you, you could think is three, four. I don't care what your stance is. One plus one is two all around the world. That's a fact. Okay, that's right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that. I'm talking about morality. Morality is preference-based. If my preference is that one plus one equals three, it doesn't make one plus one equal three. If my preference is that I think that grape is immoral, well, then grape is immoral under my view. Bro, it don't matter. It's certain things you could say you view like, but it's not reality, bro. There's one truth in this world as a being lies. Like everybody in the world can agree that they don't like to get stuff stolen from them. Yeah, if God didn't exist, would there be a truth about morality? If God didn't exist? No, there would be no truth. So, so the truth of morality is dependent upon God. Okay, so it's subjective? Because he's the creator. He, he gets to make the rules. So it's subjective? So it's just God's preference? Bro, he's the creator. He knows what's, Every creator knows what's best for his creation. Yeah, but in the same way that I believe that morality is my preference, you believe that morality is God's preference. You know? Thank you. I appreciate the marvelous confetti. Thank you so much. You just believe that God has a bigger stick, right? And we should listen to God. Bro, he, he made us. Bro, he's the... Yeah, he's, he created us that from massage. Thank you so much. Yeah, he's got a bigger stick. That's about it, right? You think he's... You think you like his preference better? Bro, he's... If any if, if anything in this world breaks, say, your iPhone, your car, the best way to fix it is to go back to who created it and who designed it. They know what's best for it. Yeah, sure, but we don't have even we don't have reason to believe that a God created the universe. Bro, if you think all of this is by coincidence, that is And actually coincidence. actually wait, yo, if I create a simulation of sentient beings and then put them in a place in a simulation where they just, you know, burn alive for hundreds of years. Right? And I say that that's what's best for them. Is that truly what's best for them? No. Okay, you're right. So just because I created them and just because I set that reality in place doesn't mean that I can't that they can't question me. Right, but who right? told you that was that that's the reality God made? You probably have a, a, a wrong I never said I never said God created that reality. What I said is that no you can't say any rule is permissible. <laughs> like because because then I can say that that's permissible. Bro, I'm just trying to understand. If you can't believe a shoe can make itself Thank you so much. Home. Appreciate it. If you can't believe yeah, your phone made itself, your computer, your headphones, why would you believe you, your human body just made itself? Or I don't believe thing? that we made ourselves because that would imply that we existed before we exist, which is a contradiction. So what, what, what would make you believe God exists? I'm a rational argument. As in like... Um, um, a cosmological argument, contingency argument. You can provide fine-tuning arguments. You can provide... I mean, you kind of already kind of did a little bit. I didn't see it to be convincing. Arguments from prophecy, um, historical-based evidence, if you, if you think that okay, any that, of those are convincing. That, okay, I can, yeah, yeah, we can go into it. that, but we would have to really sit down. I really had to show you. Here, I'll, just, I'll just ask you this question, right? Um, mm -hmm. if, if, if police are seeing a P3DO grape a child, do you think that the police should step in and remove that P3DO's free will? A, a police, if the police see what? Yeah, if the police see a P3DO graping a child, should a they... A P3DO? Yeah. What is that? Um, oh, I can't yeah, say yeah. that. You yeah, know what I'm talking about? I can't, I can't say that online because it's TikTok TOS. But um, yeah, they see a P3DO graping a child, right? Uh, should they take away the free will of that P3DO and stop that from happening? I mean, no, they, they should stop. You can't take nobody's free will away. People are going to do what they want to do. But what do you mean? Wait, we can, we can, if we stop them, we, we're taking their free will away. We Bro, put them in. We put them in prison, right? That takes their free will away. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, so do you think that we should take their free will away and stop them from, you know, graping that yeah. child? Yeah, it's certain things like yeah. I feel like yeah. Do you, do you think it would be wrong if the police sat there could stop that from happening, let it finish, and then after they let it f finish, put them in prison? 
No, they should stop before he gets too yet. Yeah, they, they should stop it while it's happening. Okay, so so God knows that this is happening, that P3 videos are graping children. God can stop it, and God chooses not to stop it. No, bro, God gave us, it's, he told us his word is a test. He gave everybody free will. He said, these are the laws. You can either take this path or this path. I, my, 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 I believe in life after death. I believe in judgment. Day. I believe in the day where we all going to get held accountable. That's, a, that's why everything makes sense to me. There's a day in my faith, once we die, and everything ceases to exist. God's going to bring us back up and hold everybody accountable for everything they did. So see, that's why in this world, he's letting you wrong, do what you want, because there will be a day where you get held accountable for it. And there's see, a reward and there's a punishment for everything you've done. Yeah, that's the same thing as saying that the, or in, the, in the situation with the police, the police saying, oh, they're going to be in prison someday, right? They're going to get their judgment, right? So we're going to let them finish the situation, right? And then they can get their judgment. Bruh. But God's punishment is way different. That that's a that's a that's a forever punishment, bro. You can't compare it to this earthly punishment. Thank you for the head massage. Appreciate. It. Thank you so much. So so again, but the idea is that the idea is pretty clear. It's that um, clearly speaking, it's rules for thee, but not rules for me, right? The rules for thee oh. are that if you watch that happen and you don't stop it, right, then you're doing something wrong. But the rules for for the God, right, is that if he watches it and doesn't stop it. That's completely fine. That's exactly bro, how it should be. You get punished regardless. He tells you there's a Yeah, yeah, and the, that's what the police would say in the circumstance in which they didn't step in. No, the police cannot No, the police have you can't compare the police to God, my nigga. You can't by the way, you can't say that on the live it's TikTok TOS, but um no. But no, yeah, like we, we can in this circumstance because we're talking about whether or not judgment is permissible or whether or not you should step in and take away their free will. Say it again. We're talking about whether or not th we should step in, take away their free will, right? Stuff like that. That's why it's relevant. Okay, look, it's like this. When you're in school, right, throughout the year, the teacher could have an analysis and know which student is going to fail and which one is not going to fail. Would it be fair that she just jumps in the middle of the year and says, hey, Parker, if you talk too much in class, you joke around too much, I'm just going to fail you. So that is doesn't that necessarily fair? mean that you're going to fail, right? But you know, this is a better analogy. Right. If I'm in a relationship and I know 100% that my partner is cheating on me, right? Do I need to test them to see if they're cheating on me? Or is there any reason to do that? Bro, that's a difference between God is all knowing. He knows the Yeah, God knows exactly what you're going to do, right? So in this scenario, I know exactly that they did cheat on me. Is there a reason for me to test them to see if they're cheating on me? What? Yeah, I know for 100% fact that they did cheat on me, right? Do I need to test them again, right, to see if they cheated on me? No. There's no reason, right? Right. Because I, because I already know that they cheated on me. So if God knows exactly what we're going to do, then there's no reason for God to test us. Bro, it's so late on, we can't say, well, God can, I ain't gonna, he can stop everything before it happens. But then later on, when we get held accountable, that won't be fair to us. It would be because God can give us this knowledge without the experience, right? Does God have knowledge without experience? What? Did God always have knowledge? God has knowledge of everything. So God has always had knowledge of everything. The future, the past, the present. Yeah. So God didn't have to experience something to gain that knowledge. So it's possible to have knowledge without experience. So God can give us the knowledge that we would have engaged in this action without us having that experience. Bro, I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're trying to get at, bro. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying that th there's no reason for the test. If God there's already knows, there's no reason. Thank you. I appreciate the mirror bloom. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Taichi. Bro, just because God knows, bro, you can't compare God to... How can I say this? Um, just because God is all-knowing, but that don't mean we, we don't have to go through the test. He's letting us go through it so we could build our own receipts up. Okay, so so, so so should I test should I test my partner in that circumstance that I already God, know right? cheated on me? Well, no, I know it doesn't matter, right? That's special pleading, right? Because that's just on the basis of him being God, not on the basis of the circumstance. Bro, you if you already seen her cheat, why are you still around? What what are you testing her for? Yeah, if you already know that if God already knows whether or not you accept him or not, then what are you testing him for? Thank you for the cap. I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. You, you answered your own question. Bro, you're a human. You cannot compare yourself to God. Uh, why not in this circumstance? Give me a relevant distinction. Bro, no creation can compare itself to its creator. 
Give me a relevant distinction in this circumstance that means that I cannot compare the two. You're not all knowing and you're not perfect. In this scenario, I was knowing about this particular proposition, right? I knew that they right. did cheat on me, right? So that was the only proposition like that was relevant to the scenario, right? The same thing would have been seen in God knows the true proposition that whether or not you accepted him. Bro, just because God has knowledge of the future, bro, that don't mean that, 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 that what he's doing is wrong. No, what I'm saying is that there isn't reason for him to test us. The same reason there isn't reason for us to test like a partner that we already know cheated you can't on us. Tell there's no re you, you can't tell him what he wants to do. If he wants to test us, I'm not saying what God wants to do. I'm saying what there's no reason for, right? In the same way that there's not a reason for me to test my partner I already know that cheated on me, there's not a reason for God to test us if he knows exactly whether or not we accept him. But there's a punishment, there's a reward. So there has to be a test. Okay, so I could say the same thing. Well, can you say the same thing about your relationship, right? You test them again to then say, oh, if they do it again, well, then I'm going to I'm gonna punish them or reward them. No, you can't punish another human being, bro. What? You cannot, what are you going to punish? Sean, I appreciate the galaxy. Thank you very much. I don't understand the analogy you're trying to make. <laughs> yeah. If you no, want a relationship, that's like, I don't yeah, get that, isn't, isn't it the same thing as God having a relationship with us? Right, but you're not intimate with God like how you're intimate with your girl. Well, can, well, what do you mean by intimate? You and your girl are like, y'all like this, but you're intimate. Y'all came together for a, a, a certain thing. You're yeah, well, uh, well it, it depends on what you mean by intimate, right? Like, I don't, I don't believe in God, so I don't have some type of intimate relation with God, right? But I've heard many Christians talk about their intimate relations with God. I'm not Christian, bro. So okay, I well, I mean... Well, well, clearly, I'm just, I'm just acknowledging like some people who believe in God. All right, uh, you're saying that you have no relationship with your God. You do. You do. You I mean, do have a relationship. So you don't have an intimate relationship. What does it mean to have an intimate relationship? Bro, to me, intimate is 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 is, is freakiness. Oh, you're That's saying like some... sexual? Yeah, it's a sexual type of relationship. Okay, yeah. Well, um, do do you believe God is within you? Like define what you mean within. No, I'm just trolling. Um, <laughs> I'm just I was just trolling. Uh, so like, okay. Um, yeah. So okay. Clearly, you don't have like any type of sexual intercourse with God, right? I don't think that's happening. So, <laughs> right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Clearly, by that definition, yeah, you are not intimate with God in terms of your relations. My relationship with God is I try to follow what He tells me to do. I don't eat pork. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Thank you for the butterfly. Person. That's the Thank type you. of relationship I have with God. Okay, well then that's that, that's good within that respect for you, man. But um, uh, like I I think that you can not do those things even without believing in a god. Appreciate the cat, thank you, bro. We're human beings by nature. We're followers. You follow something by nature. Everything you got, your ideology, you got it from somewhere, somebody, something. Wait, but that doesn't mean I follow someone. That means that if I decide what I it, agree yes, with. Yes, then you're following it. You have to agree with something to follow it, bro. Um, what do you mean by follow? Your ideology of this evolution theory and, and how we just made ourselves, you got it from somewhere. You read it somewhere. You heard it from yeah, somewhere. Yeah, there's evidence of this, right? And then I, so I follow the, the evidence. What's the evidence? Where's the well, evidence? Um, we see clear evidence within the fossil record of what fossil many changes. Record? What's up? What fossil records? What do you mean? The evolutionary fossil records? We've been like, here. Do you want me to give you like a specific species? There's no proof that we came from another micronism or whatever there's no proof of it yeah actually there is clear evidence of that we have we have common dna with almost everything on the planet that is living yeah that's a clear evidence yeah we, just, yeah just because we have common dna don't mean we were exactly that thing yes we're made out of 70 percent water so our fruits and vegetables and animals yeah we can see more common dna amongst uh, different types of species on the planet comparative to us to show how long ago actually our like ancestors diverged from their ancestors where, where can I find this proof in it? Because I've never seen it. Yeah, so thank you for the hand. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You can look up evidence so, for evolution, or I can send you resources on this, or you can look in my Discord, which is in no, the entry of my bio. I need to go somewhere with actual fossils that they have. I don't want to hear no article. Or what you you, you want to go in person somewhere. I want to go in person and see where they found and stuff in. Yeah, so, I mean, are you even willing to actually go to somewhere in person? Because I can send yeah, you places, I go in person. like museums yeah, I and stuff like that. I don't believe articles and he said and she said. Okay. Right. So, 
you could you can go to the natural museum of science right you can go to any science museum that you'd like and they have an actual human skeleton yeah i'm pretty sure they have well i mean i don't know if they have them on display they have remakes of them but they do have have actual actual ones and you could probably talk to them to see if you can actually see the real ones have you seen it with your own eyes i've seen pictures i'm pretty sure i have seen some fossils though what if the picture is fake yeah i think it's unlikely Right, because of so you, because of the you, because of the international like uh like uh like a uh, like a uh, interactions and stuff like that. What you mean is unlikely? How, how they just human beings? They can lie too. Yeah, they, they have they have supercomputers in their pockets, right? Uh, they, literally, all this information, if it was fake, it would likely you know. It so would, where it would where's come the out. organism that, that 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 was here before us? Where they at? That made when us organism that here our parents. No, whatever whatever you said came together and made us. Where where is that at? So like a species prior to human beings, yeah, like wait, Homo wait, wait, sapiens. Mm-hmm. Oh well, um, they they don't necessarily exist anymore, right? The same sort of way that like, um, my great grandparents don't exist. Huh? Yeah, they don't exist in the same sort of way that my great grandparents don't exist anymore. So damn them them things is kind of got made a new species and they all just died off. Well, yeah, different types of uh, adaptations are adopted over time, right? So over time, we about to all of us. So we can we can look at we can look at Homo erectus, Neanderthalus, Denisovians, right? They make up modern DNA along with Homo sapiens. Um, we, we can also see like uh, Australopithecus, right? There are different types of hominin species in which led to the particular species we exist as today. So we 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 all about to die off in a, in, in the future. Another whole new species about to yeah, come about. Yeah, new species will exist in the future from our offspring. And damn, and what like how is that change gonna happen? Like, what, 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 what? Over what's time, the over time. You know, we've been around for one hundred thousand years, right? You don't think that's long enough? Two hundred, uh, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand years for Homo, Homo sapiens, and yeah, we have actually seen characteristics being adopted. That's why we see, uh, like humans with different types of eye colors, different types of hair colors, um, many different characteristics across the board. So some, how some humans have wisdom teeth, some happen, don't. Like, what are we going to do to change into something like what are we going to do we adopt different characteristics right some human beings have wisdom teeth some don't Wisdom teeth wisdom teeth being not existing are, are fading is i mean uh becoming more prevalent uh for those not to be there well, well uh, th- those are types of adaptations in which you know make it make the situations better for humans and whatnot you really think that's realistic bro what's realistic just because we have different eye colors and different hairs yeah that, that's adaptations yeah. The whole and mutations thing? Yeah, adaptations and mutations are pretty clear within the evidence. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, that's hard to believe, bro. You know that you know that believing in evolution is compatible with believing in Christianity or believing in uh, Islam or believing in any of these other religions. No, not in Islam. It literally is right. Um, there are many people that try to claim that that like the that the Quran is like a is a book of science. It is. I mean, I don't, I don't believe it. It is now, of course, it is. It's not right, but it many is people do claim that. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, I could show you about a hundred scientific facts that back up science today. Oh, really? So, I mean, when the when the Quran makes a claim that that you result from a spurting fluid between the backbone and the rib, right? Is yeah. that accurate? Yeah, look it up. Yeah. So, 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 sperm does not come from, from testes. Sperm comes from no, between comes the backbone from the and the rib. Area. It comes from the chest area. Look it up. If you think I'm bluffing, look it up right no, now. No, it does not. It does not. Look it up. No, it doesn't. I you can. I have looked it up. Right. I've talked about this before. Fall, bro. Sperm does not come from your heart, dude. It, it, it did say how it comes from the backbone, the chest area. No, it doesn't. Hold on. Let me see your phone, bro. Go to go 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 to the phone. <laughs> I can't, man. Hold on. Yeah, look it up, right? And you you know what you're gonna see. That it does not come from between the backbone and the rib. That is wild, bro. I can't believe it, dude. Apparently, 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 sperm is coming from my chest area. That's wild, dude. I didn't know that before. That's crazy. Don't worry. That that's not as bad as yesterday. Yesterday, someone claimed that praying mantises are smarter than human beings. So, yeah, it's pretty wild out here. Everyone, tap that screen. Let's try to get to two hundred fifty thousand likes. If you like this content, follow me if you haven't already. What really? Yeah, no, I'm serious. I'm serious, yeah. chat. Oh, finally. I need to. I need to record. I. I mean, I did record it. I can actually post it. So, I will.
dang, I missed that. Yeah, it, yeah, chat. It was it was wild yesterday. Yeah, that was. The phone, yo. Was it shark? Was that shark? There's no praying mantis emoji. There needs to be one, huh? Yeah, everyone keep tapping that screen. Let's try to get to 250,000 likes. Again, if you like my content, follow me if you haven't already, everyone. We'll give them a second to find this real quick. Sharky? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Did you find find what you're looking for, bro? Yeah, one second. All right, for sure. Make a TikTok for that praying mantis comment. I will. I will. I'll have to find it and stuff like that. Hopefully, I can make some time outside of the context of doing homework and school and stuff. Um, but yeah, give it a second, everyone. Yeah, tap that screen, everyone. Again, let's try to get to 250,000 likes, y'all. I heard mm -hmm. little. Yeah, no, it was bad. It was bad. Um, make a praying mantis emoji. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. The female top G. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I posted that. I think so, at least. Pretty sure. Yeah, again, everyone. Again, everyone, if you like the content, follow me. Follow me. You already know the deal. Wait, yo, Matt, are you serious? The hazel eyes are the rarest of the common common eye colors? That is wild. That is wild. No, no it's loading. For yeah, sure. You, you found the evidence? Yeah, hold on. Sperm produced. Hold on. Sperm. Oh, green. Oh, that's what it is, Matt. Oh, sorry. Sperm is produced in the testicles, and the sperm plays a role in the reproductive process by transmitting signals. Oh, so it does come from the, the testes. Okay. So. Um, a good spinal health is important for overall well being, but it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't it's come from between. No, it doesn't come from the chest area. Well, yes, it does. Show me. Well, why are you sitting out? I'm trying to make you can get it to load. No fucking way you saw that on the site, dude. No, what's the title? Uh, Neo Medical. Here, let me see. Let me see. Show me. I, I just made it so you can, so people can see. Hold on. Don't worry. Just, uh, hold on. The camera. How you flip this camera? Flip the camera. How you flip the camera? Flip the camera. Okay, there you go. Um, I, I just see your profile picture now. <laughs> Still zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, give it a second, everyone. Tap that screen, y'all. In the meantime, let's try to get to 250,000 likes, everyone. Uh, we're going to be on for a long time today. We've only been on for an hour and a half, y'all. What you said? Okay, I'm so confused, Chad. I'm so confused. All right, bro. Like seriously, you could just if you literally just look up where does sperm come from, it's not going to tell you between the backbone and the rib. It's going to say comes from the testes, my guy. Is it you learned this in what? Bro, like, I swear uh, to goodness, bro, I in, just in like fourth grade me. biology, right? Hold on. You know, wait one second. I just, I swear, to you, I just seen this like two, three months ago. Two, three months ago. Yeah, I, I, I wonder where. I wonder where. So um, this actually originates from uh, a Greek understanding, like the ancient Greek understanding of uh, of the body, and this is what they thought, well, and they were wrong. Good. They were wrong. Yeah, and this is why we need sex education, chat. Bro, oh, that is wild. Did you did you find it yet? Do you want me to pull it up for you? I got you if you want. No, one second. If you just look up, look up on Google, where does sperm come from? First thing that comes up. Oh, wait, the testes. Hold on, where is it? The first thing that comes up, Healthline. Um. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see where, where you're talking about, um, the between the backbone and the rib, that the spurting fluid comes from. Wait, what particular place in your body produces this fluid? Like what oh, like what organ or something, you know? What'd you say? What organ in your body produces this? What? This fluid. What organ in your body produces this fluid? 
with semen? Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly. Hold on one second. Because if we if we think about what's between our backbone and our rib, we've got our intestines, we got our we got our uh, kidneys, we got our uh, um, our stomach, right? We got our heart, um, you know, stuff like that. So, like, which which one? Hold on a bit, bro. I'm reading this for sure, bro. Thank you for the cowboy hat. I appreciate it, Mama Jean. Thank you very much. Yeah, everyone keep tapping that screen. Let's try to get the 500,000 likes, everyone. Let's try to get to 500,000 likes, y'all. But give it a second, everyone. We're going to let him find it. We'll let him read. Uh, if you have any questions, put in the comment section right now, and I'll respond to it while he does find this. Just give it a second, everyone. You want an email? I got you, Parker. I have 15 already maxed out. So I like, I, I literally oh. I don't know what ones I would get rid of. Where is it? Um, Seth, no, that's not happening. Parker, are your parents Christian? Yes, they are. Oh, shit. Uh, um, yes, they still are. They still are. Um, uh, can we do flat earth topic before someday? Yes, I have done it before. It's hard to get people on, to be honest. No, nah, bro, I just seen it the other day. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I promise you, you're not going to find it. Uh, unless it's, it's like a religious Justin site, Lucas. unless it's a religious it's site claiming it. Oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. From a water gushing forth. Yeah, so I don't think you're going to find it, Dooley. I really don't think you're going to find it. Um, it's 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 literally just true that it comes from the testes. Oh, oh, it's not sperm. It's, gush, it's, it's water gush. It's not sperm. It's water. It's what spurting it? fluid, right? Used no, to produce water, human pork. beings, which is relating to sperm. He said he's created from a gushing liquid. Oh, gushing liquid. Gushing fluid, yeah. Bro, I just seen a science. I just, I just spurting up fluid up. that is that is meant to produce human life. What is that? What does that sound like? I think there's only really one thing that I can think of. I think you know exactly what know exactly what it is. It's a little bit of riz, you know? <laughs> stop, everyone. Stop, bro. So real, so real. Okay, bro. The spurting fluid. Whoa, are, are we gonna... Bro, I got... I, hold on. I gotta find this article I read the other day, bro. You found bro, you it? Like, it? Here, do you... DM me, DM me your number after this. I don't know if I'll give you my number, but you can just DM me. Yeah. I mean, damn, you that important in the world? No, I just, I, I don't like, I don't think it's smart to give away my number to people that I just met, right? Yeah, I got, I got, I got a DM. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna DM you about this. Thank what you, I appreciate that massage. Thank you so much. All right, my DMs are open, bro. I'll see you then, man. Appreciate you coming on. On to the next, everyone. If you disagree, send a guest request right now. Please only send a guest request if you disagree. We're just looking for some debates, y'all. Yo, what's up? How old are you? 48. For sure. Do you believe in God? I do. Why so? Uh, the Bible, signs, lots of things. I, I was kind of curious if you've heard, I imagine because you deal with a lot of different people, a lot of Christians and the things that are going around in the world. I'm sure a lot of them told you that many of us Christians believe we're living in the end times. Have you been hearing that narrative? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm just curious, you know, the Bible's pretty clear that there's signs in the sun and the moon and the stars from Genesis 6 all the way through the Bible. And it's even for, uh, obviously, for the Jewish people that, that the aspect of it is for also uh, signs of, for solar eclipses and those kind of things. And as being raised as a Baptist, I was never much into those kind of things. I didn't know much about it. But now, just in this end times, I believe that literally the Holy Spirit is pulling all Christians together, the ones that are truly serving him. And I, I was going to have you check out um, Hourly Watch. Has anybody told you to check out Hourly Watch on YouTube? No, I have not heard that. So just look have it up I talked on your to you little... before, by the way? Uh, we've talked many times in the past. We've had okay, some I, am, I, I was getting messages that we have talked before. I... 
I always can't quite remember. It does. It did sound a little familiar, but I'm, I wasn't quite sure. But we we went. We've had some really good battles and great feedback on both ways. We end up usually getting to the ten perfect god with the free throws at the end. Which the last time I think I got you on, believe it or not, from everybody that, that text or text me, they said I finally put Parker somewhere that you'd never been. But we could Where? revisit that and with see what, what they think. With what? With what claim? Okay, so this is the claim that nobody ever gave to you, which we ended on because you had to go, kind of too. Um, you're, when you uh, present your argument about God being a perfect God and making 10 out of 10 free throws by sin entering into the world that he's no longer a perfect God, making the 10 that he would only made 9 or messed up, correct? Well, he would have created something in which is flaw, uh, flawed, right? Okay. So that would indicate that, yeah, he did like 9 out of 10 free throws or something. Yeah, so, so basically this is what we got and where you kind of slipped up and, and I asked, because God being perfect made Adam a perfect being. So Adam had the choice to maintain his perfectness and God is perfect. He's, God is perfect just because he made another perfect being, God is still perfect. Adam, with his choice given free will by the perfect being that made him, then it goes on Adam. Adam chose to sin, so that does not take away God's perfectness. And as a matter of fact, God made it more perfect. This is where everybody always tells you he made it more perfect because he wanted right relationship with his creation, but he wanted to get him, give them free will. So they got to choose to serve him on their, of their own volition and not to be forced to do it. But they, Adam, in his perfectness, made by a perfect God, broke that. And that's where sin entered into the world. And then all of his children, the curse of death was presented on all that came after him. So God, in his wisdom and his mercy from a Christian perspective, paid that penalty that Adam broke so that he could restore right relationship with himself. For him to maintain his holiness and to, to still be, uh, say, a God of justice, then the penalty of sin that was broken by the perfect being he made through his own free will, he restored. And that's why Christians, when they accept that free gift, their sins that, that they no choice of their own were born into, they accept that and they see how merciful that was that no longer are they condemned to be uh, absent from God. And, and hell's just, just the absence of God. And he, he's absent from you because he's so holy he can't take apart his sin. So he paid that penalty himself with his own son to make that relationship right. And that's where so many people misunderstand. And that's where your question about him being perfect, he still is perfect. And he brought around his perfectness again. And many would ask, why even do it at all then if he knew they were going to fail? And the reason why that he did do that is because he did it for us so that we knew that And when we're judge ourselves, our mind will remember when we're outside of time and you're at the judgment seat of Christ, your mind will remember every feeling, every thought, every breath you had in an instant. You will see your whole life. And if you, uh, you know, review or look at any study, any near-death experiences, many of them will tell them about a whole life review that they remember everything, feel everything, see everything. And that's just a little glimpse I think he gives us for many of us to see, but it's going to be on a much bigger level. Also with those near left, there's better colors. You smell more. It's more vibrant colors. Everything about the other world is more real. We're only here for a very short time, and God's really clear about that in his word. Our life is nothing but a vapor, and then it's gone. I mean, at best, we're going to live 80 years, most people. I mean, and that would still only be probably 60 or 70 percent of people in the, in the world we live in today, but it's a worldwide and the whole thing. It, it's very short. So what we do is so much more important than what we realize, that this life isn't the real thing. Eternity is the real thing. And God's made that clear through his word. He gave us a whole manual, an owner's manual, just like our car has, that tells you why he put us here, how we got here, what we're supposed to do, why we're here, and what happens after we pass. And then he gave you a roadmap of how he paid the whole redemption of sin through his power, but also for ourselves. Why do it? It's so that we remember the little bit of time that we have, whatever days or minutes he gives us, we will reflect on what decisions we made. Whether And we get choice. People say free will. And that the, the only depiction I do say where the people say, well, you didn't get chose to be born. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you're doing is you're contradicting yourself here. You're saying Adam is flawed and flawless simultaneously, right? Because you're saying that God created Adam perfect, but then uh, Adam sinned, which is a flaw. So you can't be flawed and flawless simultaneously. So I don't know why any Christians would have thought that you got me there when you're just contradicting yourself. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, just to point that because Adam sinned, 
if God's perfect and he made Adam perfect, is God still perfect? Say that again, sorry. Okay. If God is perfect and he made Adam perfect, is God still perfect? Yeah, if Adam is perfect. Right, but the idea is that if Adam is perfect, then it would have never been the case that Adam would not be perfect. Now, God being perfect made a perfect being, but gave him autonomy and free will. That perfect being, he gave free will. Yeah, and, and even though they have autonomy, they're still going to do the perfect thing as they're perfect. But that's you, your, your opinion. That, that, that there's no, no rule that's logically that entailed that, given their characteristics. If they are perfect and they have free will, they're going to do what's perfect. Why is that logically entailed? Okay, so then By why does course? God always do what's perfect? He has free will. Because he, he chose to maintain his perfectness where Adam didn't. Okay, but why does he choose that? Because, because he's perfect. He's because he has the ability to do it, he maintained his perfectness, just like Adam could have. No, because he's perfect, right? So again, the idea is that if they are not perfect, then they can have a flaw. If they are perfect, then they cannot have a flaw, okay? So if they do exhibit a flaw, they were not perfect in that state. But that's just man, once again, with their free will, making a decision to put that label on God. You're okay, saying that, go ahead. No, but I know the, deci what this, the decision could never be imperfect, right? Because they are perfect. The same way that when God is all good, the decision could never be bad because God is all good. So when God makes the relationship perfect, once again, though Adam chose of his own free will to make it unperfect, God restores it to his perfectness. How is he not perfect? Uh, because it was because it was imperfect, right? At some point, God had a, I mean, Adam had a flaw, exhibited a flaw. If, again, Adam was perfect, Adam would have never exhib exhibited a flaw. But that would be man's opinion to say that God's not perfect. And he said, no, he's no, no, creator. no, this is what happened. This is what happened. Okay, get, get, these, these are logical entailments. So if you're arguing with God and God says, Parker, I am perfect in the way exactly I did this, but you disagree with me. What basis no, no, it's not, it's not a, me disagreeing. It's, it's literally a sin is a flaw under God's view. Okay. So this is an internal contradiction. It's not just me saying, oh, I disagree with you. It's saying that you're saying that Adam is flawed and flawless simultaneously, which is a contradiction in terms. No, but, but what I'm saying is you're labeling God as not perfect since Adam sinned. That's your decision to do that. It doesn't yeah, because, entail. No, that no. It's because God sees sin as a flaw. It's a separation from him. You're Does God see sin as a flaw? Uh, I, I believe it separates him from his creation. Does God it's, see sin as a flaw? Definition of flaw, it, it would be a negative thing, yes. Negative, negative so, so a sin is a flaw? Yes. Sin, sin, uh, okay, so, they would, it, yes. So, so if they were flawless, then they would never sin. If Adam was flawless? Yeah, then he would never sin. I don't know. I think decisions, but, but that's what I'm saying. We still got to get to the root point that you're saying that when you're standing there, you're going to, you're going to try to tell God with, with a loophole argument that you're not perfect. You're going to try to tell God you're not perfect. I'm not going to say anything to it because it doesn't exist. Right. And we, we know it doesn't exist. Thank you for the hand. I appreciate this perfect God because we are imperfect given its own definition. Right. Cause again, we have sins which are considered imperfect, right. Are considered flaws. Okay, so you can't say that Adam was created perfect and then engaged in a flaw, right, or had a flaw. That is a contradiction in basic terms. That is the most basic contradiction you could ever get right in front of you. But the, and then this is exactly it. You know how we become back into to perfect relationship by his righteousness that he paid the sin on the cross. It doesn't matter us. that we would come back. The expectation would be that we were perfect originally. Okay, so you're then saying that a perfect creator does not entail a perfect creation. Yeah, I'm saying that. I'm saying that I still put, say God's perfect and you say he's not. So when it comes down to it, the argument that you're trying to hold on to still does not. God trumps that since he's the creator of all. He's the creator of logic. He's the creator of our thoughts. Just like, okay, okay, this, exa this exact argument. I know you don't like this, but. No, it's the, it's the God created logic point um, because then yeah. that implies that there was not logic prior to creation. That's correct, because there has to, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, yeah, so, so, so God could exist and not exist simultaneously. God, God always existed. 
But what I'm saying is God. Yeah, can't but change. God could always exist and, and not always exist at the same time, right? Because again, there was no logic prior to creation. Well, I'm not saying there was. I'm, I believe that God is a creator of logic. Yeah, so, so that implies that there was a point where logic didn't exist. Doesn't have to imply that, because God's a logical. If God, God created it, that implies that there's a beginning. Within our time frame, yes, but because He created. There was a beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, there was a beginning within our Is there dimension. a beginning to logic? Yes, I believe. So well, if there's a beginning to logic, that means that there's a point prior to its existence. Well, there's a beginning to logic with, within our constraints of time, correct. Once he made Adam and earth, and, and in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. He doesn't hide that. So that's a beginning that our universe that he made is created logically and with certain parameters that must be followed. And that is the way he created us and made us. Just like, and, and they always say, can God do this or can God do that? He can't go against the creation of the logic he did. Just like God can't make two plus two equal five. Because in I'm the saying dynamic... prior. Wait, Thomas, I'm saying prior to the, the notion in which it exists. God could exist and not exist simultaneously. That argument, if he existed, why could he not exist? We would know because we weren't created yet. No, no, so no. If Again, if logic doesn't practice. exist, there's nothing stopping from that, that from happening, God existing and not existing simultaneously. So my preference is he did exist, so he could not have not existed, correct? Oh, Outside okay, of because of time. logic, because of logic. Because of our logic? No, because yeah. of logic. Logic had to always exist, because if logic did not always exist, then you could not negate the idea that God could exist and not exist simultaneously. Yes, we could not negate it, because we can't even think or contemplate it until, until we're created, correct? So again, so logic always existed, and logic is always applicable. Within our realm. No, you know, who knows? No, before. to God even. To God even. To God even? I believe he did. Yes, I believe he, he, he's a, a logical God. That's why he, he explains everything to us. But God did not create logic, as that would imply that there was a point in which God, a logic did not exist. I don't quite understand how you flip those words. You're saying that logic could not exist unless God... That, so you're saying there's a point. No, you're saying that logic was created. I'm saying that that cannot be the case because then there was a point where, again, logic did not apply. And it was the God alone. Okay, so God can exist and not exist simultaneously if logic doesn't apply then. So you have to say that logic is always applicable even to God and that God did not create logic because then, then there wouldn't be a point where God would exist or logic wouldn't. Thank you. I appreciate the subscription. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, so your point being, what, what's your point – with my my point God. being that God didn't create logic, like I just said. So you think logic is just inherent? Logic always existed, yeah. Yeah, logic is a necessary property of, of all existence. Okay, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I believe that we have a logical God. So how does that disprove God? I never said it disproved God, right? What I'm saying is that logic is applicable to God. If logical logic is applicable to God, clearly speaking, right, you can't use that as a reason to deny what I'm telling you. There was a contradiction, right? Very clearly, there was a contradiction. Um, I, I believe, well, this is where the whole point is. So are you saying that God shouldn't have made man? Or you're saying he can't exist because... Uh, I'm saying that since we are not perfect, right, given God's own definition, that entails that God or the creator of the universe, whatever you believe that is, could not be perfect as if it was perfect, that would mean that there was a perfect creation. So that would mean that we are perfect. So where's the where, where's the definition, God's definition of his own self saying he's perfect in that way? That he could not allow a creation with a choice. Wait, sorry, say that one time? So so where where are you saying that per, God being perfect that it takes away his perfectness by making a being with free will that chose Thomas, that's not that. what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying, Thomas. I've literally clarified this to you probably probably fifty times, Thomas. I've said the exact same thing to you a million times. I don't I don't know why you don't get it at this point. I've literally said it very nicely many times and you just ask the same question over and over again. It well, is going because... to be the case that they are if they are perfect, they will freely always do the good thing, as that is what's perfect. It's in accordance with what's perfect, the same way that God has free will and always does things that are in accordance with what's perfect. Thank you, I appreciate the hand art. Thank you. In freely so as this... well. So th th this will be man's gets to make that decision. If you want to say he's not perfect, then that is your free will to decide that. No, that's right. not my choice. That is literally given his own definition, okay? Given the own definition that you go off of within your Christian belief, right, it is the case 
that there would not be your own God as there is an internal contradiction with your commitments within reality. Again, a perfect creator entails, logically entails that they create perfect things. Okay, so, so let's do this. Let's say he's, under your definition, he's not perfect and he messed up. Let's say, let's say this being uh, that I believe is perfect in his ways. But let's say that I'll say, well, he's not perfect. Our world isn't perfect. And there's all kinds of things, obviously, Sue, that aren't perfect. And this God who, who says he's perfect because he wants to say he's perfect, but he isn't. Let's say he messed up. And even there's points in the Bible where he said he regretted making man before the flood. So, so let's say that. But the dynamic is he's still in charge. He is the creator. And if we don't follow what he gave us in his mercy, let's say he's a big, mean ogre. But he's real and right. So you believe God is not perfect now. So you disagree with the Bible. No, I don't. I'm going along with you just saying, let's let's go along with your program. What option? Well, then you're we just going to reject your belief anyway, because it disagrees with the Bible. Right. And then you have no basis for describing any of God's characteristics. You have to back off of the religion. Right. This dismantles okay. the entire belief. I don't think you realize that. Well, I, I don't think so, because I, I believe that the definition for me is that's where you go to the preeminence of, of God is literally that, that we believe that he's merciful God, he's a righteous God, and that he made things perfect. Out of bad, he made things good for his ultimate glory. And it says that. So, I mean, so, but, but let's, let, let's say you're trying to dismantle the whole argument, but I'd like to get on a couple other things. If we can give each other a couple points here, all I'm saying is I still believe he's in charge no matter how we get in the sticky point of you saying perfect and using that same argument that you're that I believe you made a perfect man with free will and with that free will that man chose sin but that doesn't take away from God's perfectness and I'm saying that it made him more that's perfect. incoherent gibberish but well that's your belief no no no, no that's not my but, belief that's logic that's logic but, right? but that's all a Christian that, that's all a Christian no, no, it's, it's logic people. it's logic tell me what premise you disputed in my argument I'm disputing that you believe he's imperfect and I believe he is perfect yeah that's a conclusion that's not my that's not a premise but it's a belief. But, but right. let's continue on. No, no, I don't believe that it's imperfect because, again, I don't believe in its existence, right? Because we're talking about a perfect being. So it can't be perfect and imperfect simultaneously. So, so, so by this, so anything that is structured or worked, if we take – so everything you believe would be random and nothing is perfect or nothing is designed. God's desires are random. So, so, you, so you believe if there is a God that his desires are random, so it wouldn't be a yeah, perfect you're, God? Yeah, under, no, if you're comparing the different explanations, the same issue of random properties to bring about this existent, existence rather than another exists under every model that you would bring up unless you assume that it has the necessary conditions to bring about this reality. Well, I, I, the only big places where we would disagree is we would say that he paid for it to maintain its perfectness. But, but you're saying he could never have created it to make it perfect, so it's just a different a difference in time. We believe after no, right no, time, no, no. it'll be perfect. No. Okay, so you no, because it wouldn't make sense for it to go perfect, imperfect, to perfect again, right? Because then a perfect being would have just stayed at perfect. But so, and what, also what, again, they wouldn't have created an imperfect thing, as again, they're a perfect creator. Well, that, but there again, if it's perfect at the end, wouldn't it maintain that it would? Have been, if it does go from perfect back to perfect, then wouldn't it have always been perfect? No, because because then uh, you would be going back to something if you didn't leave it. I don't b believe that. Maybe in the the aspect it. It, if the perfect creator deemed it perfect, then who are we to say it's not perfect? That's your it's opinion. not. It's not deemed perfect by the creator. That's what you're not understanding, Thomas. Again, given the creator's own definition, sin is not perfect. Sin is a flaw. By the own definition of the creator, you literally are not perfect. Okay, creation is not perfect. By the and own definition. But it is back to perfect relationship once that sin is paid for. No, perfect creation, right? There would be no sin if you were perfect. Again, by God's own definition. This isn't my opinion. This is an internal contradiction with your own view. Well, and we, I, I would like to study where God thinks that that's complete perfectness other than that's where the free will dismantles your 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 argument because then he would have free just robot thomas, You're thomas saying... can you actually respond to my argument then because i've told you a million times when it relates to free will that again you can freely do the perfect thing in every scenario the same way that god does so if you're saying that it's not possible for them to have free will and do the perfect thing in every circumstance then you're saying that god can't possibly have that characteristic but so then we wouldn't be in the situation where we're now is what you're trying to say yeah given your your belief we wouldn't be in this reality well, there again, as like I said, we may not like the reality or we'd like it to be a different way.
but that's what God says. So I'm back to my other thing. You're saying it dismantles my argument, but I am choosing for the things that I can't explain or I don't know, I'm going to choose his perfectness in the way he set up. But you're saying that that can't be possible. Supposedly from your logic, a logical, like a two plus two equals four, then it has to mean God doesn't exist or it has to mean that if there is a creator. Yeah. Yeah. Is sin perfect, Thomas? Is sin perfect? No, it's not perfect. Clearly, right? So then if, if sin exists, then it's not perfect. Therefore, right, we live in an existence that is imperfect, or we are a creation that is imperfect. Therefore, we don't have a perfect creator, right? Because a well, perfect creator entails a perfect creation or to create perfect things. A loving, perfect creator would 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 fix the problem and make it perfect again. That's what I'm saying. You're saying it can't go back and forth, but if it's perfect at the end, that's where I'm saying... He, 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 he paid the penalty for the imperfectness. And I guess we just disagree about that. I understand your point of view, but what I'm saying, you're saying it can't, for whatever reason, you're saying it can't go from perfect to a time period of not perfectness or sin entering in and then back to perfect. Where that, again, is just an opinion that we can decide at the very end of it, God says it is perfect. When he comes back, reigns for no, a thousand No, no, Thomas, that's so wrong. Right, it is not perfect under God's view. That's what you're not understanding, right? Like again, it's, it is very clear that God does not prefer sin. That God has a preference against sin being that way. That God okay. sees sin as a flaw, right? This is very clear within your religion. Very clear. This is not something that's disputed by any person who's Christian. Okay, but so when God makes a perfect heaven and a perfect earth, and all things are good at the end, after Revelations, when the streets are, are, are gold, and the tree of life is there for all to, to eat, does but God not everything is perfect. Humans were not perfect, right? That, That's that, the idea. It, 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 the, the idea is that everything that was created by that perfect being would be perfect. But what, wait, at that point, now, do we agree that Christians believe and the Bible believes, and God says at that point it is perfect? No, at that point it is not perfect. As again, sin exists, and sin is not perfect. Sin is it would, it would no longer exist. It would got to be absent from sin. When he makes You're saying that there was a diversion. There would never be a diversion if it was per if it was perfect, because the diversion or even the diversion happening is evidence that there is a flaw. Well, so what, what I'm saying though, where where in the Bible are you saying the definition of perfect for God is that the sin is not allowed in the world? I is mean, that there's where... flawless? No, flawless. Well, because sins are flaws. So do you want me to give you the, where it says that perfection is flawless? Within the Bible, yeah. Yeah. I got you. Um, yeah, it, Psalms 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all those who take refuge in him. Yes, his ways and his word. Yeah, he's perfect, that. flawless. Yep. Yeah, so flawless, there we go. So is sin, is sin a flaw? Yes, we've agreed that sin is a flaw from man's own choice. They give that, but they did God, but it. in God's choice, did, does he sin? Do you believe God sins? Well, by creating the universe, you technically could consider it a sin. But right, um, God, God itself would not would not sin, right? The idea is that God created something that was flawed, right? I don't know why but, you don't understand this, Thomas. I feel like you just have a bias against it, and you don't want to acknowledge the argument. This is no, a very I, clear, cut no, and dry, you simple said it argument. The, the, you said it perfect, actually. Thank you. You brought up the point. God Himself is perfect and does not sin and has not sinned, but. He made a, cre a creation that was given free will that sinned. That does not take away from God's perfectness. God, oh my God, dude, I literally have acknowledged this a million I, times, Thomas. Like, I, I, I don't know how many more times I can acknowledge the same thing, right? Again, free will does not entail that they're not going to be, not going to be perfect, okay? God has free okay. will and is perfect. Okay, there's a bunch, bunch of subjects that we can go on with proving God. But this one, no matter how you do it, then you would never be able to debate any Christian or talk about any other proofs that are out there because you would always say, if sin's here, there's no God. I mean, you wouldn't even have to do any lives because all you would do is argue with everybody that comes down with the righteousness of God and all the other things, prophecy, the Bible, things that are happening right now in the stars. Yeah, I can, I can provide Virgo. this contradiction. Yeah, yeah. Now, I can do that in every single argu argument I do. I, I run different arguments to spice it up, right? Because there are many different arguments you can run against it. But this is a very clear, simple argument. This is like an extremely easy argument to understand. A lot of people that don't don't try to engage with this, it seems to be that it's like based in bias, right? I haven't heard a good response to this ever. 
Well, well, this is it. This, this is what I'm saying. No, it's not. It's really not. I told you that you're contradicting yourself, right? I I gave you the contradiction. You're just you're applying the exact same reason after, and I'm pretty sure we did this the exact same time. Uh, you came on last time. We literally just went over the exact same point for like 40 minutes to an hour, right? This isn't a difficult argument. This isn't something that posits this. I've heard well, no legitimate response. It is response. a point. This 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 is where we ended. But the point being was it God being a perfect being makes a perfect being with free will. And if that perfect being with free will chose to, chose not to sin, then God then is perfect. perfect yeah. Yes, and he's still perfect. But because that being that he created that has free will chose to sin does not take that away means from that God they're imperfect. Purpose. That means that they're imperfect. Yeah. If they chose but to that, sin, they're imperfect. That's where you're wrong. That's where no, you're wrong. No, no, I'm not. No, that, that is that's where I'm right. You already agreed that we disagree. Sin, no, you agree that sin is imperfect. You already agreed. Yeah. I, okay, so so God, then you just you just conceded. You just conceded because you no, you just God made the is, point that sin was perfect there. <laughs> no, God That's is literally perfect not to sin. God is perfect. No, no, no. no. You sin. said that it was perfect for them to have sinned, right? That was not a flaw. But clearly speaking, you consider sin to be a flaw. So if they engaged in a sin, clearly speaking, they were flawed. Okay. I can see because we've had this argument so many times. We will. Well, then I don't know what you're, not, what you're not understanding at this because point. Because I want to continue on. What I'm understanding is that I'm, I'm disagreeing with you. I'm going to say God's perfect. And I understand what you're trying to say, but I'm saying in his perfectness, he is perfect. And that Adam being a perfect being brought sin himself and did it is what i'm saying so so and you're saying that, that, that yeah that's 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 a contradiction you're, right you're, you're, you're contradicting saying yourself that, you're wrong you're believing that's a contradiction and no no, no i'm not believing I, it is a contradiction okay but here here once again what i'm telling you is there are so many more things that we can go into proving that this god is real whether you want to call him imperfect that's fine no no, no to, this god does not exist it's wrong you're literally wrong here right like this so this is this. So let's this, go on yeah. to the next one. That's yeah, what I'm this saying. God so, doesn't so, exist. According to you, but so this God that you're no, no. Is given this, given this argument, right? You accepted the argument. You just disagreed with the conclusion. What I'm, what I'm saying is, I, I'm willing to step over the next spot and say that, that that we'll both say that your contradiction here, the way you lay it out, saying factually that this God doesn't exist. But what I'm telling you is, with the Bible and everything that's going on in the world right now. And what's going on in the stellarium right now, God gives us signs. He's so merciful that he's literally doing miraculous signs in the stars and in the moon and in the sun and in stellarium that he designed and put together just for the naysayers, is what they call them, the mockers. Because then every t mouth will be shut. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the problem is at the end of it, no matter whether you disagreed with this person or not, or thought you had this logical argument to say he wasn't real, and then you're sitting there and he is real, that's what, what, what the whole debate would truly be about at the end. And that's where I'm, where I'm coming to. But I, I would really love for you just to at least put in their hourly watch, Pastor Patrick on YouTube, and just check it out because the thing is this is happening every day, and you're not going to have a long time to wait. We can – Debate here again in a couple of weeks, but the way the signs are going and the Feast of Trumpets coming up, it's we're just starting a couple of weeks. So if we're all wacko and nothing's going on and we're World War III, we're World War Three. Thomas, the happen. Q and say the same thing. Thank you for the Mr. Orange. I appreciate it. They say in two months, the entire world's going to collapse, right? Um, the entire internet's collapsing, everything, right? I hear this stuff from people all the time. Thank you for the Mr. I Orange. I appreciate it. How do you know that you're separate from the Q and here? So, so this is why, because there's, there's signs in the heavens and there were signs in the heavens all along. There was a star when Jesus was born. In Amos, when they said that he was going to be born in Bethlehem, he was. All the different signs. And then the wise men from the east followed the, the star to Bethlehem. But, but what I'm saying is he's always used these signs. And right now, scientifically, we can use the knowledge we're talking and discussing about right now and take a look at them. You know what I mean? So you can take a look at what's factually available for you and then analyze it and just see what you think because it is so overwhelming that it's mind-boggling he has every star up there from basically the whole bible story and the child in the womb in virgo right now and the timing in nine months yeshua come in there the whole thing is mapped out and showed for anybody who wants to look at it and god did this and told this bible that's written thousands over thousands of years 40 authors 66 books over 1500 years of writings they didn't know each other, all telling this exact same redemption story from the Revelation 12 sign that is in our, our heavens right now. And it's indisputable. And so we can haggle back and forth about how perfect God is or isn't and say he's not real. 
Wow, yeah, no, this, this, is... God, this God doesn't exist, and these particular claims have happened for the past few thousands of years. Every single year, the same thing is claimed. Every single moment, the same thing is claimed. There's no reason to accept this assertion, right, that doesn't apply to any other point in history in which this would have occurred. Well, like I said, we've we got a really short time now, so if nothing happens by September 23rd, well, we can argue again, go, oh, here we go, it's just another QAnon, another thing. But all I'm saying no, Thomas, is, it, it, after after 23, if nothing nothing happens, are you still going to believe that he's coming soon? Yeah, you're still well, going to believe it. You're well, going to believe the exact same thing regardless. Well, right? That's exactly yeah. what every other QAnoner does. They, they, they're like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen like in, a, in two weeks. It's going to happen in two months. Right? It comes by. They just forget about it. Thank you for the galaxy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I've been hearing the same thing for years. Right? I, we've been hearing the same thing for generations. And, and the Bible even says that. They'll say, where is this coming? <laughs> you know, they've been saying that forever. And, and and at some point, no matter how we do it, it's going to happen. It just happens to be 2,000 years. Wait, no, no, Jesus... you believe that it's going to happen, right? But you believe it's going to happen in despite of your view yielding a contradiction. Well, the thing, the amazing thing about it is the Bible never pulls any, any punches about that. When Jesus came in, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were literally sitting there condemning him. And he rebuked them and even said, you're going to be blinded. Because you should have known the seasons and times. You know your scriptures. You should have known when I was here. He fulfilled literally the Feast of Passovers exactly on the day that it was developed in the book of Leviticus, hundreds and hundreds of years before. He fulfilled the first four feasts on the exact day with his death, then his his burial, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, his rising from the dead. The I don't, I don't accept fruits. the burial or the rising of the dead. And that's your free will to do that because you got no, that's, choice. This is the evidence indicates it's most likely that they were decomposed on the cross. That what was the? You think their bodies were decomposed Jesus. on the cross? Thank you for the hand heart pressure. Yeah, but most times when when people were crucified, right, they were left on the cross to decompose. Well, there's all kinds of writings that we can go into and, and discuss that whole thing. But there again, God did go through great lengths, as you can tell to do this also with signs in front of us, but by faith, so that this whole thing, I, I view it as a big simulation, because within it, really even science can't explain our eyeball, how it all completely works, and it brains and feeds our brain, and we understand things, and how we touch, feel, taste, and all the dynamics of what we say, or you would say, come out of just randomness, and it all works so perfect, and everything relies on, on, on each other, and then we live into this constraint, but yet we war within ourselves with even an atheist or an agnostic would admit that you have thinking of right and wrong and what you should do and not do. And we all wrestle within ourselves. And that's a God given literal conscience. No, that's that literally says, what you believe that empathy and rationality can explain the exact same thing. So again, we're, what we're not, what we're doing here is we're not acknowledging the contradiction, right? And we're still just wanting to accept the same belief without questioning. Right. And this is ultimately speaking what I think the great society, Thomas, I actually really do. This is the reason why I do these lives is because this is straight up confirmation bias. This is you're going to accept your belief regardless of any evidence, regardless of any argument that's provided to you. Right. And you're going to think that the other side is not accepting or not trying to engage. Right. But realistically speaking, we've already provided the contradiction. We've given the proof by contradiction. You're even still holding to the view. Well, but the thing is, that I think we contradict ourselves like you to say or, or anybody that you want proof of God. But also to think that it just goes black within our hearts and in our mindset. Anybody who examines themselves, I don't know what happens. State, Wait, Thomas, okay. I have no clue what's going to happen. Okay, well, I appreciate that side of it, but but so we can at least agree on that part that there is something within you. So my question would be, and if you also want proof of a God, some kind of clouds open up, say, "Hey, Parker, I'm here, man," and the Bible's completely no, like right. a rational argument. Like, like honestly, if if Jesus came to the earth, Jesus could have just wrote the Bible himself on a paper that never degraded glows literally levitates right so we all know that jesus is god right that, that could have happened that's okay. that would be very clear wouldn't that be clear you no know, other paper I, exists like that nothing else okay. right okay. that would be overwhelmingly clear okay I, I agree with you and guess what he did that with the jewish people do you realize that when they were in the desert for 40 years that they had a pillar of fire by night and a big cloud by day that moved and told them when to go and what did they do they they bitched, they moaned, they complained, and they still went and had big orgies when Moses is gone for 40 days. And literally, they saw God's presence right there. He gave them manna right in front of them. He fed them in the morning, and he, they'd hit a rock and water would come out of it. Just like we're talking about, God knew the sinfulness of man. Thomas, he did or that. it's a story. 
or it's a story that's true and that's why he designed it this way because he knows how we are. or it's a story right like we've heard stories all the time right i i don't necessarily think that we'd have reason to believe that this is something that happened any different than some of the stories that we see in marvel movies okay but so logically let's go with your way so you don't know what happens you're saying so so okay so you don't think it goes black at this point i mean yeah i, do I don't have a belief when it relates to that okay you don't have a belief but if you're just to weigh it out in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, just being honest, I mean, obviously agnostic means that you're looking for a proof of God. If we go down that, that trail, what do you more link? Is it something when you finally do go black? Do you think there's something when you die, or do you think it's more likely it just goes black? Just out of curiosity. I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't make a likely assertion because I don't think there's evidence. So are you 50-50, or is the I don't know? I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, the probability is not, um, I'm not sure of here. Okay, probability. So probability, is, I don't know, would be it is possible that there's some kind of afterlife. Is that what you're saying? It's po yeah, it's logically possible that there's some type of afterlife. Okay, and, and it's I also would logically that's... possible that afterlife is the Pokemon Master World. Well, that definitely could be. It might be fun, but so let's let's examine and take that next step. If it's possible there's an afterlife, how is that possible? within the constraints that we're in. Because for that to take place and say that there's an afterlife, what would have to have created that afterlife that obviously from our reality and within the constraints of knowledge that we're in, how could that take place with our, within our understanding? Wouldn't it have to be that it goes black and it's, there's, there's nothing else? No, it wouldn't have to be that, right? You can, you can posit that say some fundamental particles lead to this particular afterlife. So you would say, uh, uh, there again, the randomness would continue on from, say, the Big Bang went out for 13.5 billion years out in existence, but that once these particles that we are, this body frame as we know it, uh, passes away, starts rotting, or whatever, that there is some kind of essence within us uh, wrapped around the same initial spark of creation or life. Is that what I'm understanding? Wait, so I'm confused what you're trying to say there. I think of this okay. super power, I appreciate it. I didn't, I didn't follow, my bad. Okay, no, no problem. No, it's hard to follow because what I'm trying to do is get to our basic logic is th there's only one way. Either either it's all BS and it's random and nothing means anything, and we just out of the cosmos, this all this perfect world and the way everything works and the magnetic Wait, hold field. Up, hold up, hold up. You saying it's meaningless is that that's that I don't know why theists always do this. What is meaning? Meaning is going to relate to minds, right? It is not meaningless in the sense that we have minds and we apply meaning and value to reality. We apply purposes, okay? That it's a straw man to say that there's no meaning in an atheist worldview. Well, we, we apply purposes on the basis of why would we get out of bed if there wasn't a purpose? So our structure of life, even from an atheist point of view, is there is a purpose. And maybe that purpose is only to fulfill our own lustful desires or to make ourselves feel good within the constraints of whatever randomness that we get out of this life, but there's still a purpose to go to work for you to be on here and, and be able to debate. And also, like you said, what's your purpose? You kind of said your purpose is because you see it's a flawed, flawed worldview to believe in a perfect God. And so you want to free Yeah, because of my desires, right? So I have desires that our society should function a particular way. This particular thing, right? This way of thought process hurts that process. Therefore, yeah, clearly speaking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be against that within that point. Okay, so so you're saying that the beliefs of Christianity hurt the society, you believe? Yeah. The beliefs? In, in what way? Uh, the fact that you just accept a belief without having good reason. The fact that there's contradictions that can be outlined and yet you still hold the belief. The fact that it supports things like confirmation bias. Um, uh, yeah, I can, I can go through a million things. But so that belief, from, from my perspective, if you take any a blood blot bot Christian, their perspective would be that without Christ and, and the penalty paid for our sin and the newness of life, that we would be degraded human beings living for ourselves. And each one of us, if you examine, that's why a lot of people, when they give you proof for God, they say it's personal, personal belief or a personal relationship or personal experience that they experienced with this God, which you, I've known when people ask you that, they say, well, I had a personal relationship with him or I had a personal experience, you know, and then you would say, well, that's personal and you can believe it, do these things. But even with scientific method, it is a repeatable process. Doing doing something or an experiment or an action that you can repeat over and over and get the same results. And then with peer review, you have to have at least two scientists within the, the body 
of that belief to review it and decide whether there's enough evidence to accept the writing or to discount it, or to, they will add to it or take away and give their thoughts because they're the head of that particular department. Well, with, within life itself, and for a Christian, we can go over the peer review of Christian after Christian for time as back as far as back as we can go, and with our secular writings and Christian writings and the Bible, all peer reviewed that many of us, millions and millions of us, have had the exact same experience, repeatable and peer reviewed by others, many others in the same field of belief that lives have been changed, our hearts have been changed, our desires have been changed, and that we struggle with sin doing right and wrong, and that of ourselves we know that we would choose the wrong thing, the thing that would fulfill our lust and our flesh, that we know it's only wrong because of the basis that the Bible's laid out for us, that there's a God and a creator who says that's wrong, and that you'll have a better life to love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Inherently, we don't want to do that. We want to love ourselves. So peer-reviewed by other people and Christians with each other, we have writings upon writings and more information than any other documented thing scientific-wide. Everything is peer-reviewed. People who agree with you aren't the only ones who do peer review. When atheists when atheists go over the Bible, do you think they form the same conclusions? Do you, do you think that they can reproduce the same results, or do you or do you think that this is something that's going to be specific, hyper specific to the people that already hold these particular religious beliefs? Well, well, that's where I would say the amount of people, and that's where documentation comes in, just as even the Bible as we take it today. Still the number one best-selling book on the planet, most given away, most available. And that golden tablet you talked about, if the Bible of Jesus, why didn't he do the floating golden but, but tablet? Before the Bible existed, what was the, what, like, and it was just like, say, Hindu scriptures that were out. That was like the best, biggest book or something, right? Does that mean that it was true? Well, there wasn't. You're saying older manuscripts? Well, well yeah, yeah. prior preach. to the Bible, prior to the Bible, there was another book that was the, the most sold book. Or most I've heard it, I, I studied this. I think you brought this up before. And the only thing you're discounting is that you think there's an older manuscript, which there weren't very many of in this one Hindu writing of the book of it. Very there were Hindu few. scriptures thousands of years prior. So the point is that yeah. at, at, there was a point where there was a separate book that was the most purchased book and the most sold book out of any other book that was not the Bible. So in that situation, was that book right? So, so this is what I'm saying it dwarfs in comparison, not even, it, it, it's a 1% compared to 100% with the writings you're talking about. But this is why. The reason why that we didn't have older manuscripts is because the Bible was getting read daily and it was getting taught. And what was my question? What was my question? My question is like, most people have bought this book or a lot of people got this book this is the most of the time, right? Therefore it's true, right? So that at, at that time, it would be the case that that particular book is true. Do you agree okay. or no? No, because there's only a few thousand people that read those Hindu scriptures that you're talking about in that older book. And there's billions. I don't think, no, I don't think there were a few thousand, right? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm saying there's billions that have read the Bible. There, the there are billions Christian that have Bible. read Hindu scriptures. Thank no. I appreciate the head of mustache. Okay. Thank you so much. There's a that billion was, Hindus that exist today. Yes, but so you're saying that, that you believe that Hindu scripture is more widely known than the Christian Bible throughout all time. No, that's not what I'm saying right now. But different books in the future will be more widely known than the Bible. No, they won't. There's there will be more people that will exist in the future, right? Clearly speaking, there are going to be more people that have interacted with other books and bought and sold other books comparative to the Bible in the future. My, my point being that the Bible is that golden floating thing. If you actually research history. It's really not. It really isn't, dude. <laughs> It really is. No, it because, isn't. You're lying to yourself. You really are, right? Like, that's ridiculous. Come on. It's not, it's seriously, it's not glowing. It's not floating. It's not eternal. It's been changed. It's been translated through many different types of religions. Jesus smoke Aramaic, right? We clearly don't see that within the context of the Bible. It's clearly speaking a different language. I don't know why you're acting like it is the same. That's ridiculous. If, Come on. Because if you study it, believe it, it'll transform your life. And that's how we know it's the golden floating tablets because it's transformed. People say the same thing about, about the Quran. Life. People say the same thing about many other types of religious texts. Yes, and there's always a counterfeit. So if we get back down to the brass tacks of things, if there's good and evil and there is a war that's going on here, Satan is the great counterfeiter. He's the one that's in the garden tempting and doing these things that he has power within it. Even And the, and the Bible never pulls any punches on that. If it was a fake book, they, they, it, wouldn't, it would hide the sins of its champions, but it never does. 
Paul was a murderer and a persecutor. David was a murderer and an adulterer. All the, all the top people that are supposed to be worshipped or looked up to, why do they worship and look up to for? It's for their repentance and for their uh, admitting their sinful ways. Thank you. I appreciate and, the jellyfish. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, I mean, and, and, and literally embracing the forgiveness of, of God. And so, and that Satan, they show, they didn't pull the punches of that he was in the garden, did it, that it's a war against good and evil. And that's what's going on. So, I mean, there's always going to be try to be a counterfeit to lead lead the good away and, and, and for the righteous to be uh, duped or misled, you know? There's no way to differentiate between these views, though. Yeah, so also, like, again, yeah, you can say that. You can say that there are going to be different views in which are not true, and this view is true. But you have no process to differentiate between which one is true and which one's not true, right? And if you did have a process to do so, you're going to have to appeal to something that's going to end up rejecting all of these. Well, but on the basis of you still, everything that we examine, even in the scientific world, what has the most evidence? What has the most backing? What has the most reality to look at and examine? So when we're examining people's lives, which are all pretty short, like I said, we all live about 80 years at best, and that's if things are going good. No, but, not at, clearly not at best. Clear, my, my grandma's older than that right now. Mine is too. I just my grandpa to, too, right. <laughs> My grandma just turned 96, so I just went to her birthday. <laughs> yeah, so clearly it's not the highest is 80, but, right? Well, if you I'm, have I'm a saying, family member that's 96. I'm saying throughout the world and history, and if you take all the world you, as a You say whole, the average people, is around that at best. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a life okay. expectancy now, I think 72, is literally what's life expectancy is. So I'm just taking an average that if we no, all I think it's like that, 70, 77 or something. Yeah, it is 77 point something. Higher in Israel. I think it's almost 80 in Israel. 79 or 81 in Israel. But... But, but my point being, they go talk to some old people. I just talked to my grandma at 96 for her birthday, and she talks how fast life went. She says at moments it seems like it was a long time ago, but then she's talking. She has her mind, too. It's amazing. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank it's, you for the cowboy hat. I appreciate it. Experiences in her life, and when they reflect back on them, no matter how you do it, it's the kindness of all the stuff. And to me, it's the evidence that's presented before each one of us of how we choose to live our lives, like, like trying to make good and trying to do better. But you examine what everybody else past lives were. So if we examine that, like I said, peer reviewed, there is, and I know there's people that have been changed, horrible alcoholics, abusers, bar fighters, that they will attest that the Lord came into their lives and changed their hearts and their lives and changed their actions, their outward actions that are observed. And that's a huge thing about Christianity that many want to deny. And why would we do it? I mean, if we're queuing on and just believing this for the excitement of, Donald Trump taking back over or whatever agenda. Yeah, just because your preference. Their preference is that Donald Trump is the Lord's savior, is always going to control everything, is currently president right now. That That's all their preferences, okay? The same thing as you have preferences for how the world is going to look, right? And there's no distinction in terms of the process that you use to confirm or disconfirm any of the claims. It's simply a gut feeling in both circumstances. Well, but Thank you. I appreciate the hand art. Thank you so much. Although the preference for the life, like, okay, so... So you're saying a Christian life that, that they would preference, prefer to live a holy life just so that their life's better is what you're saying and not that their struggle with still... Uh, no, not even because their life it. is better, just because they just want to believe it, right? It doesn't mean your life is better because of it, it just means that you want to believe it. So that, so you believe they're doing it on their, of their own will because they want to believe yeah, it? Yeah, just, just because and, they want to, yep. And the benefits are, I guess, that they have a better life they don't have a hangover if they quit drinking or if they start doing not even the they just they just feel in, internally validated in their own belief so so they get a sense of security or peace out of it so what you're yeah saying. generally They're validated within within their beliefs so so Thank i you the duck i appreciate my, it that would be my point so if, if you dismiss that or take that easily examined uh, uh thing or life that we can look at and see the millions and millions before us that that see the transformation in lives and especially with people, if, I don't even know if, I, so do you know anybody personally that has become a Christian and changed their life? There was a horrible, awful abuser or anything like that, or have you ever seen that? Out of curiosity, I know you're No, I don't, I don't know anyone in my life that was like even like a horrible, awful abuser. Okay. Yeah, you live, you, you've had the, the good life for sure. I think it's because you have Christian I just parents. don't really have friends. <laughs> Join the club, right? <laughs> no, no. But for sure, and some of that, what I'm telling you too, is I think, you know, your parents are Christian, and also I believe that God literally puts his hand of protection on Christian parents who raise their children, love them and stuff like that, and they give them somewhat of a sheltered, blessed life. 
not in all circumstances, but in a lot of circumstances that I've seen, because he does say that his word will not return void. So, I mean, obviously there's been people that, that experience hardship and those kind of things, but I guarantee you, your parents are, if they're Christian, the other thing about being Christian is just because we want to believe it, we pray for others. That's another thing about Christianity and the true belief in, in Christ and what your parents would do. Your parents are praying for you. When they say their prayers, they're praying for their son Parker and that God will reveal himself to you in a way that they can for protection for you, for mercy for you, for love for you, because they love you. And, and when we do that, we do that ourselves beyond ourselves. We're not just selfish and seeking it for ourselves to validate ourselves because we want to believe it. God gives us a heart for other people, for other yeah, people. You want to believe suffering. that about other people. Yeah, I want to believe that other people aren't suffering. I want to believe that other people don't have cancer, but that doesn't change the reality in which they do. Well, exactly. And, and we know that too. It's not that we want, don't want to believe it. We know it's a reality. So within that reality, we are asking for God's mercy, for his, his grace. And it says the prayers of a righteous man will avail us much. So being, and the only way we're righteous is imputed righteousness from what he did and accepting that. Then we have power. And that's where it actually works is he gives us that desire to pray for others. Because I don't believe most of the time on our own, like you're saying, that we just want to establish that within our heart, our own gut that we want to do this because we want to believe it. Most of us don't even struggle with that. If you, you see all the Christians nowadays, I'll go down, flip up a few TikToks, and they're all deconstructing. They're all saying, oh, this is bad, and I didn't believe it, because we all still have internal struggles and in internal struggles with belief. No, even no, Christians. Thomas, because they're put in a social media platform and in, a, in a place where they're communicating with other people's beliefs. And when they communicate with other people's beliefs, they see how they don't have a basis for their own. The same thing happened with me. Like, like I, the reason why I started questioning it is because I started hearing other perspectives. The more you hear other perspectives, the more you question. So what was the biggest perspective? So you were, I think I've heard you before. At one time you did pray and I think, had you felt, felt the Holy Spirit kind of felt that like, I've never, I, I felt like warm feelings, stuff like that. I think I appreciate the, the, the jellyfish. Thank you so much. Nothing that I would attribute to a God or something. I appreciate the jellyfish, but, um, yeah, like I, I, I used to be Christian. I was Christian for most of my life. I, I believed genuinely. So the biggest thing that kind of turned you was what basically the God argument? Or, I mean, what I was just, can't, I just can't make sense of it. I, I, I really like I want to believe in something like this. Like I have a preference towards like there being like a heaven or there being some state in which is better than the current state that we live in today where all of their all the suffering is gone or something like that. Right. But like I, I have no way to rationalize it like at all. And I can't okay. believe something genuinely that I can't rationalize. So I guess that would bring us back to basically, that's why I was curious about, you know, you said you just don't know if something happens afterwards. But but to me, I, I believe that if it's not the the good versus evil, wrong versus right, and that, that there's a creator who made a way to go back to him, that it would have to go black. Because what are the other options to fit into the narrative of knowledge or not breaking the rules of contradiction for facts like if if uh, if like we said you're, you're saying where does that come from it would have to still be from the randomness it's, i don't know how we would explain anything else rationally that could that could make sense you know what i'm saying i mean like you said there could be something a spirit but but, but for there to be a spirit that comes out of this fleshly body that we can not examine or see scientifically um what would explain that because then there again it has to be some kind of creator some kind of something that would, and then there would have to be something that's governing that realm. I mean, wouldn't no, you really? I, no, you, no, I think you're, I think you're just like uh, inferring that without good reason. Well, what would you infer then? I mean, so I, I know you say you just don't know, but but I, I believe that's what the Bible says: to study to show thyself approved. That that we're supposed to try to figure it out and know, and that God even wrote that on our hearts. So, what would you? Is that just your answer? Is you don't know? I mean, that you don't like the Christian perspective. And you believe there's no, there's a contradiction in the Christian perspective, right? Uh, okay. That doesn't exist when it relates to um, uh, when it relates to an explanation of the universe. I don't have one that's sufficient, right? I don't think there is an explanation that is sufficient. So clearly speaking, I can still reject explanations without necessarily having like a true explanation. Like I know that the explanation as to why I exist, right? Or I mean, why we exist is not the tooth fairy creating us. We can rule that out on the theoretical virtue of simplicity and stuff like that, right? Um, so, but I still, but I still don't have a sufficient explanation. So then, why, from a Christian perspective, can't I say I don't know? 
that I believe God's perfect, and I don't know why I can't explain what you're seeing as a contradiction. Well, then you I'll hold unjustified you, I, beliefs. You hold an unjustified belief. Well, I'm not. Th this is what I'm saying. I'm not to the to the extent just like you are. So what are, you're holding on to nothing. Then you're saying you're just floating. So you can say you don't know when you get a tough question asked against you. But if there's something a Christian don't know, then we're discounted. That we we don't we can't do what Parker can do and say I don't know. But I'm going to accept it because that's the best evidence I have presented before me. If you say you don't know, then you shouldn't hold a belief. I don't hold a belief, and I say that I don't know. You're believing Sorry. something even though you don't know. That's like me saying, I don't know, and then I accept that Stewie Griffin created us through a temporal loop. But you're contradicting yourself because you are holding a belief. You're holding a belief that God can't be perfect the way he set it up. And that's I'm not saying... a belief about what explains the universe, right? That's, that, that's a belief that, that this doesn't explain things. It's separated. So your, your belief doesn't explain anything either. You're saying you don't know. That's what I'm, that's my point. You're coming yeah, I, back with me. What are you me. talking about? I'm saying you're allowed to say you don't know. You have no clue. You're lost. You you don't know how we got here. You don't know what happens after we pass on and we die. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you can say that too. Just don't hold the belief. So, so that's what I'm saying. But I'm not allowed, according to you. I mean, or yeah, to, yeah. You're I, not allowed to hold a belief because you're special pleading. Yeah, you don't hold that in any other sense, right? That's going to lead you to absurd beliefs. So, so that's, but this is where I'm saying, this is where we decide that dissect that, that battle is that I can say, just like Parker can say, I don't know all the answers. I don't know exactly how God maintained his perfectness through this whole thing he created. But I choose just like Parker, who really doesn't believe in anything. I believe to leave it in his hands. And with the best evidence that, that's available to me, that being the Bible, other people's writings, my community, relationships, church, seeing lives change that miraculously, th that I choose it. It's, well, and then so you say so you believe it, right? So, so again, that's the yeah. distinction. You so could yeah. say this, you could say the same thing as me, but then you can't conclude, oh, then I believe this. Yes, but I think then I you say, that. thank you. But then you would say you don't believe it. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, that goes right back to free will and choice. Yeah, yeah. Me saying I don't believe this, believe it isn't the same thing as you saying that you do believe it. Because you believing something is making a positive claim. Me saying I don't believe it is just saying that I am not making a claim. So how does that put your claim to preeminence? I mean, or, or your belief to preeminence because... Because I'm refraining truth. from judgment. I'm not at an unjustified standpoint. You're at an unjustified standpoint. To who, though? To myself or to others, you're saying? To anything. To anyone, even yourself. Yourself, to me, anyone, right? Because you have no evidence for your assertion, right? You would say that other beliefs that just hold a belief without evidence is just, you know, uh, unjustified as well. You think it's unjustified for me to say that Stewie Griffin created the universe through a temporal loop with no evidence, right? But, but this is where it is. You say I have no evidence. This, this is back to what I'm saying. With all the evidence you and I do have, which all the we seven literally we don't. We, we have evidence that indicates that it's not true because of contradictions. So like I'm, I'm giving you I'm giving you too much when I'm literally comparing it to Stewie Griffin, right? Thank you for the golden. I appreciate it because there's not a contradiction with that explanation. There is a contradiction with your explanation, right? It's not going to exist, Thomas. Like I'm, well, I'm serious. Given, given these commitments, given these beliefs, given what we've already established, this does not exist. So uh, there again, you're saying that, but I know you always get sticky on this because You've convinced yourself that you can say it, that it cannot exist. So this because is there's a question. contradiction. What if it does exist? Well, it can't because there's a contradiction. Well, I, I, I don't, I guess, I guess that's where we're always going to end on that point of it. But I, I've got to run. I got a kid who smashed her finger in the hot tub, but um, we yeah. will talk again. Make sure to deal with that, Thomas. I'll talk to you later, yeah. man. All right, man. You have a good one. Peace out. Yeah. All right, everyone, if you like the content, make sure to follow me. If you haven't already, tap that screen. Let's try to get to 500,000 likes. If you believe in God, make sure to send a guest request right now. Please only send a guest request if you believe in God, y'all. We're just looking for some debates, everyone. Let me go on to the next person. Everyone, only send a guest request if you do disagree, everyone. Oh, all right, let me get to the next person. Thank you for the gamer cat. I appreciate it, V. Thank you very much. That poor kid. Yeah, I know I heard that. Yo, what's up? How old are you? 38. Uh, do you believe in God? 
Um, I do, but not, um, I don't know how to turn my camera on. I know that makes me sound so much older. No, it's fine. Um, no, just hit the guest and then you can click the camera right next to your name and then click uh, save. Guess in the bottom left, the click the the camera button yeah, on the right, right side, right, and then there, there you go, you got it. <laughs> All right, so I do, but not in the. I believe it is an entity in the sky, um, holding puppet master ways, but kind of like um, stemming from the. Um, a lot of first of all I, I love how you handle these conversations very emotionally mature i don't know how you do it sometimes and that but that that last guy um and so many others that that are on here because they are so deep in that belief system of really believing it's a person and human energy put behind that makes it very real in our world but also i do believe god is whatever everyone's interpretation is of that energy of love throughout history, the way that it combines and echoes, I believe it becomes dangerous when it is in a religion and it starts to believe, I mean, you believe that you know what's gonna happen next, you know the future. Um, I think that's a psychosis. And then when the when everything is possible, then when anything goes against that belief system, you have a psychotic break and you're upset. And so, that's where the way that people believe in God is so dangerous. But the fact that is, is that they do believe in God and it makes it very real because of that. So God very much exists. And the fact that we're even discussing it proves that it exists. <laughs> and, but it depends on what people's interpretation of it is on whether that's like an entity. Which yeah, so, to me, yeah, yeah. By exist here, you just mean conceptually, the same way Harry Potter exists conceptually, or that the same way Stewie Griffin exists conceptually, or SpongeBob, or uh, Ash Ketchum. Right, right. But I do believe it's people's interpretation of because like Stewie Griffin, he's kind of like the interpretation of the shitty kid that wants to rebel against their parent. That's in all of us. The way that creation, the ability to create, is in all of us. And so it is the echoed, it's an echo of something that is very real. Okay, so if you just mean conceptually, you're not necessarily disagreeing with the topic, but I definitely do appreciate you coming on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. All right, everyone, send a guest request if you disagree. If you want to debate, we're just looking for some debates, everyone. Let me go on to the next person, everyone. Tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to 500,000 likes, y'all. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Uh, 29. For sure. Do you believe in God? I do. Um, but my, I, I would say more in the same way that, um, like the same way, the relationship that, that you have to yourselves, if that makes sense. What do you mean? So like in the same way, like you are made up of a bunch of things that kind of act on their own whether it be, you know, cells, molecules, yada, 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 uh, God would be essentially like the most zoomed out creature that you could possibly imagine. I don't know what you mean by zoomed out creature. Like if you were to keep like uh, similar, sorry, I'm kind of doing a bad job. I actually didn't think I would get on, but uh, um, I appreciate you having me. Um, so essentially like... I think that Are you just saying it's like the it universe? Has, if the universe was actually like a living sentient creature. Okay, okay, so you do believe that it's it's sentient, it has consciousness, it created this? Yes, but by accident. Rather than on, on purpose sure, with sure. willful intent. So it has intent, but it didn't use that intent to create the universe. Instead, it just randomly created the universe without intention on accident. Okay. So if it accidentally created the universe without intention, right, the way that I would not accept this particular explanation is by saying that it requires like uh, unnecessary assumptions to explain the data set, right? We can explain why we exist, say, with a prior state of fundamental particles in which have the necessary properties to bring about this reality rather than another one, or we could say it's accidental with these with these particles, the same assumption, and then we can shave off the, 
the mind, we can shave off the, the uh, having desires, intentions, things like that, and we can still explain the data set. So essentially, right, one just requires like a, an unnecessary load of assumptions. Um, uh, therefore, it's less likely to be true. Okay. Uh, so are you, are you saying that like, I, I don't know, to go a little, I guess, metaphysical with it, that there's like the kind of multiple realities thing and then we are like uh, kind of like a sentient accident or like uh, the way that that like one one way of a, of a billion different ways things could have possibly gone. You can either or, right? Because you, you were talking about an accident. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take the exact same assumption that you did. Right. But what, okay. what we would want to do is that we'd probably want to say, okay, well, your, your God has the necessary properties to bring about this reality. And then the particles Correct. also have the necessary properties to bring about this reality rather than another one, because there's an infinite set of desires in which could have been the case comparative to this one. There could have been a desire to create a universe where there are floating pigs or there's Ben 10 or, you know, slime from Nickelodeon. Right. But God decided <laughs> to pick this particular reality over the infinite set of other possible desires. Uh, that's that, that would be one way of thinking it, but I thinking of it, but I guess what I'm saying is that what like the creature that would you would call God in this case would be so big that it would be the whole version of all of that of all of the possibilities that could possibly uh, happen. And I think um, that there is I think that there's like a little bit of evidence. Um, if you look around in like things like math, right? So if you look at like, for example, um, like pi, right? Being an infinite non-repeating number, um, all possibilities can be found in it, right? Like your phone number um, could be found in it if you trace it indefinitely, right? And so uh, if you were to like attribute it to letters, like one being A, two being B, et cetera, et cetera, you would eventually find every single word right? Every sentence, every book, anything that could be like, that has been written. Yeah, that's why I say an infinite set of desires. My fingers could have been on the bottom of my feet. Right, exactly. But I, I think that whatever God is created that like set of, of infinity, because you need like that possibility of, of limitless things to happen in order for there to be like consciousness and life. Because otherwise, you know, it would kind of be like a big game. It, it literally would be like a big game of Sims, you know? I'm confused. Your point is what I'm just trying to show is that you have the same base level assumption for each of them. And then I'm just shaving off the, the idea that God is a mind, has desires, intentions, things like that. Um, and I'm still explaining the data set. So this explanation, mean... although I think it's not sufficient, is more likely to be true than the explanation that you've provided me. Okay, so what do you mean um, as... Can you explain that a little further? Yeah. So um, let's say that I have five assumptions with one explanation and three assumptions with the other one. If both of these assumptions explain, um, uh, or if both of these explanations um, fully explain the question of why we exist, which one is more likely to be true? Um, okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, okay. So on the, the whole topic of existence, what what would your explanation be of of how the universe was created? Are you kind of like more school of thought of Big Bang? I don't think there's a sufficient explanation. The Big Bang just explains how the universe functions, like something within the universe, not where the universe comes from. Got you. So would would you say that that the question would be for for everyone, whether you're like atheist, religious, etc., um, what came before? Or how um, did that? Yeah, yeah. I said a prior state of, of fundamental particles. You could explain it by using a prior state of fundamental particles, but I, again, I don't think that's a sufficient explanation. Um, so like, but what about like the origin of that? Like, because when you say prior, you kind of assume that it has always exist existed to a degree, right? Because um, if we're talking, say that one more time. In theory, but if you say like prior collection of particles when referring to the thing that happened before the big bang right like the, the fundamental question there is when and how did that get there had was it just always there or did it 
the the Big Bang. So the One Big Bang wasn't it. always the the Big Bang. There's a there's a beginning to that. The same way there's a beginning to my existence. But what we're saying is that there's not a beginning to this prior state of fundamental particles. The same way there's not a beginning to the God that you believe in. In this, but in that, in that, in what you just said, couldn't you say that whether it be God or something like the Big Bang, that those it's a similar belief because you have to believe within that, that something respect was so, there. So it's the same you assumption didn't know there. How, how it got there. Right. John. Yeah. It's same right. assumption there. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think we might have the same point, but be on slightly different sides of it. Um, I think, do you think, do you, so I, in your last, uh, with your last person, did you mention or talk about like, what do you think happens after you like die? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happens. Okay. Um, cause I, that, that was like, you, like, you think there's somewhat of a consciousness or just like black screen? I, I don't, I don't know what happens after. Um, okay. Uh, do you, okay. Next question. Um, I know, sorry. Uh, do you, have you heard of like Flatland ever? Flatland? What do you mean by that? Like flat earth? Uh, it's like, uh, no. So it's like a book that, um, it's, it's all a hypothetical situation on what would happen if you came across like a two dimensional universe. Haven't heard it. Um, no. and bi so it, to summarize it, it's, it's basically, um, like if you came across like a whiteboard of like creatures, right. Um, of, uh, and like a two dimensional plane that existed in, in all directions right you could you would be able to see how these creatures like moved for example and they wouldn't be able to understand where you are in relation to them because it's like a 2d versus like a 3d parallel right um, I know so this, you're just saying is, that you can't this... understand that so are you just saying that we can't comprehend like a god because if we can't comprehend that... a god then then you have no basis to believe in it <laughs> that's what i'm well... saying no, it's more along the lines of like how. Seems it like you should exist. refrain from judgment then. Um, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Um, but I, no, I was kind of in a similar position where, um, I I was kind of brought up a little bit religiously and kind of veered off toward um later in life, and that was one of the reasons was because I finally like heard an explanation actually from my math teacher of like how a fourth dimensional creature or like a god like presence could exist with like terms that made sense that didn't sound like you know they were coming from like a religious script or anything like that um and it it basically was saying that like the way that we would see like a two-dimensional world on on a on a tv screen is the same that like the way a four-dimensional creature would look at like a three-dimensional world and essentially it would give it those same characteristics of of quote unquote, like on om omnipotence or the ability to interfere in a way where we would never be able to detect its presence if it like didn't want us to. Essentially. Yeah. So if we can't detect it, then there's no reason to believe in it. But it you could see how you run back exist. into the agnostic point of you don't know. But Kurt, yeah, I'm not denying the idea that there's a logical possibility with this argument. What I'm denying with this argument is the is the fact that it's likely. Okay. So, okay, so you're, you're saying, uh, like, along the lines of, of you want, like, like what concrete proof for the belief, for, or for, for the belief rather than how could it be true? Yeah, yeah so, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not denying the possibility with this argument. I'm denying the probability. Okay, so uh, what, you think it's, like, below a 50% chance? I don't know what the probability is that there would be like a creature of of origin that that we wouldn't be able to that we couldn't perceive you yeah, could so never this, like this is, this is, on, a, this like is a on a qualitative basis not a quantitative quantitative would it would imply some sort of like number i could you know attribute to you um quantity right whereas when we're relating to qualitative right we're just going to be talking about more or less likely right like a like a like a quality thank you i appreciate the the, the superpower thank you so much Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, I see where you're coming from. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sure. Is, is there anything else you'd like to go over or talk about then? Um, you know, uh, no, I th- I think I think I got the point across. Um, and appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you for talking to me, man. Have a great day, bro. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. If you like the content, follow me if you're ready. Tap that screen. Let's try to get to 500,000 likes. If you like this type of content, again, I go live literally every single day. We've been on for about three hours, so we're going to go on for another three hours or so for today. Um, by the way, everyone, if you want to go to my recent video I just posted, you can help comment, watch it through, and like the video. It'll help get it out to some presidential candidates. We do have one person that has responded, and it's very likely that something is going to happen there. So make sure to look out for that in the future. If you have any questions you want to do, make sure to set that up because I'll let you all know the date in which we might do that. But yeah, let me go to the next person, everyone. Yeah, it is a W, honestly. It is a W. Not going to lie, not going to lie. Let's just say that this person has been on TikTok Live before, right? They have been on TikTok Live before and they've been on, I think, Asan's platform before, right? So if you know that... Someone who's a presidential candidate that's done that. Maybe, maybe, maybe that person is going to be on here pretty soon. Um, we got to set up a date or sometime. I don't know. Yo, what's up? How old are you? 25. For sure. Do you believe in a God? <coughs> Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the confetti. Thank you very much. That was fucking hilarious, dude. Honestly, that was, that was so cracked, dude. Honestly, I wish, I wish, I wish I was them. Let's get the next person. Everyone tap that screen. Everyone, let's try to get the 500,000 likes, y'all. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Hello? Hello? Okay, they just, they're just they not even here. All right, let's go to the next person. Everyone, only send a guest request if you disagree, everyone. We're just looking for some debates, y'all. Yo, what's up? How old are you? I was going on my arm um, 20, just turned 20. Thank you for that mustache. I appreciate it. Uh, do, do you think that God exists? I do, yeah. I do believe that God does exist. You know, there's too many things um, that, you know, doesn't, you know, if he doesn't exist, I don't believe it. You know, do you know what I mean? Huh? So, so for example, um, take a look at, you know, for example, space. There is just, there's too many, you know, detailed things for it not to exist. Now, I'm going to take it you're, you know, you're an atheist. So does that mean you believe in, you know, the two star, I mean, sorry, the, the two, um, I've forgotten the word, you know, the, um, the, the two things that, you know, collaborated and then, you know, the, the entire existence you know, came together. Is that is that what you believe in? Uh, I don't. I don't know what led to the universe coming to be. Right. I believe in the Big Bang as an explanation of how the universe functions yes. in terms of how it expands. But I don't think that that's necessarily the beginning of all existence. Okay. So, okay. so, so you um, believe? Yeah, go ahead. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Go ahead. I was gonna say, um, if you believe that you know the Big Bang existed. Um, the big bang is still it, happening. It, yeah, you believe it's still happening, then, yeah. Yeah. Right. Shush. So basically, if you believe that it happened, um, you know, what you know, how, how you know, because there's a you know, a, it's been created. There has to have been a creator. You know what I mean? So how how you know can you define to me how that's possible? Because you know, in order for something to be there, there has to be something. To create no. it? Exactly, yeah. Okay, okay. God exists. God is there, right? Yeah. So there has true. to be something that put God there. No, because God is something that nobody can nobody have, can have possibly created God before. God can was, you say the same thing about the universe? Yes, because the universe can be created, but, the, but God can't. Wait, okay, but you could say that the universe cannot be created, right? Because it's eternal. Listen, I guess you could say the universe can't be created if God doesn't, you know, if he didn't want it to be created, then he well, no, the, never we, we don't have to so. hold to a God because because God would be unnecessary in this point. If you're saying that, uh, right, everything that exists requires a cause, right, God's going to require a cause. So we rejected that. So now we're at a standpoint of whether or not we just accept a God, right? It seems like this accepting the God would be unnecessary because we could just say the same thing about the universe. 
without accepting okay. that God part. Yeah, no, yeah, I see I see the point you're trying to make. Yeah, you know, I do take that into consideration. Um, you know, because I actually have thought about this, you know, many times and it just it never it never really clicks. So what I'm you know, what I'm trying to say is for the universe to be created there there is absolutely nothing that can possibly create it without some sort of different form that has never been you know it, it it can't be possible do you know what i mean god is the only thing that can have possibly create you know the detail to, to the, the tiniest you know forget about even space we take a look at the you know look at the detail body. in god right didn't something have to create the detail within god God, well, okay, it it kind of depends on the religion, you know. Obviously, you know, it, it kind of all blends into the same thing, you know. I'm not really, your own you know, religious, please. So yeah, so you know, for, for for my religion, we don't we can't see God. We don't know how he looks. We don't know anything about him. Um, and I'm sure that's the same, obviously, for um, you know, different religions. Except you know, it can be a bit you know mixed up. But obviously. There, there, there is definitely something, you know, a, a bigger life form that has created even the tiniest of detail. It's, it comes down to the single atom, everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so God so, has lots of detail too. So something had to create God's detail. Well, that's what I said before. Nothing could have possibly Nothing created... could have possibly created God. So you could say the same thing about the universe, right? I, I guess you could say that. I guess... You could say that. However, the universe. Listen, it, it it's it's all. It always begins with what created the universe. Because without the universe, we wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? Different planets wouldn't be here. So, if, for example, um, the universe wasn't created, how how you know? Let's let, let let's just say you knew. Um, oh, sorry. Let me rephrase the question. Actually, if if the universe was created. However, there there was no such thing as religion. How would you go go about, you know, you know, explaining, you know, your point of view on how everything was created? You know, for example, you agree. You, know, you don't see... have to have one. I can just say I don't know. Okay, that's fine. So, so what? So you, so you personally believe in, um, just that? Do you believe that there's a, you know, a higher life form, or do you believe? I do not that... currently believe that now. Thank so, you, Rage okay. Beast. I appreciate the gold mine. Thank you very much. So you just, you know, purely believe in the Big Bang Theory and, you know, wh whatever that has become, you know, to now. Is that, is, that, is that what you believe in? So you don't even, so you, you don't even believe in, not even a religion, just a God in general. Thank you, I appreciate the confetti. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't believe in a God. Okay, so, okay, let me make this a bit easy for you. If, if you were to let's say possibly read into um a quran or a bible do you ha have you ever done something like that have you ever you know went into you know i grew up christian oh, and what made you leave and what what made you leave the, the i couldn't religion? make sense of the belief do you, have you ever thought thought about you know many people that are like you you know they grew up christian and maybe they even grew up atheist, not believing in a god or any even sort of high life form. Um, they eventually, you know, went to um, the Quran. Uh, seems to be a lot of the ways people have been converting recently, and uh, over a number of years actually. So, have you never thought about, you know, okay, I'm gonna take uh, some inf information about other religions such as the Quran, and um, yeah, you know, so I accept crucifixion. The Quran uh, denies Jesus crucified on the cross. Therefore, I reject the Quran because uh, that's a historical but, but, fact. I, I, I thought you said that he didn't exist. That Jesus? Oh, I mean, no, so, I, I, I made a claim that no, Jesus no, is no, not no, God, right? I don't no, believe no, no, I don't believe in resurrection, but I do believe in crucifixion. I do believe that Jesus was a real person. So you believe? Yeah, but you know, in Islam, they also believe that Jesus is a real, you know, he, he is a real person. Yeah, they, they, so they believe that he didn't get crucified on the cross, though. Yeah, well, you know, because that that cannot be, you know, fathomly possible. You know, we say Jesus comes down, you know, as a form of human, and then at the same time, he's God. You know, it comes down to the Trinity. Do you know what I mean? So Trinity, I don't think there's necessarily you know, a contradiction with, like, there being, like, 
three different parts to a whole, right? But I do, I do think that if it's fully God, fully human, you'd kind of run into like a an issue, right? In terms of saying that they're not different parts, that they're all fully God. That's not because then then so, you can't say that there's something that's fully God and then another thing that's fully God, and then say that they're not logically identical to each other. Sorry, so so let me just ask you this: if you don't, if you are not a Christian, then what makes you believe that Jesus? Because I haven't heard this before from anyone. To be fair, if um if you believe, sorry, if you don't believe in Christianity or or, or a religion, what makes you believe that Jesus is a, you know it was a real person? Because surely, if you believe historical Jesus, evidence. And what historical? I mean, I, I don't don't get me wrong. I believe Jesus was a real person as well. Do you know what I mean? But I just want you to know. I just want you to explain. You know, what makes you? You know, what evidence do you have that he he existed? Yeah, we have extra biblical evidence outside of the context of just say the Bible that indicates that he he exists. Thousands of manuscripts in which indicate that he he likely could exist. Uh, and a claim about someone's existence is is way greater in likelihood than a claim about say like a miracle or something like that. Um, uh, secondly, we have, uh, again, Josephus, Tacitus, we got people outside of the context of the Bible that indicate that Jesus yeah. existed as an individual. So like, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you believe he existed, but you just don't believe, obviously then you wouldn't believe what he, you know, what, what he preached or what he said. You just believe that he was a person. I, I, I don't believe that he was God or divine or something, Yeah, yeah. but so I do believe just, that he was yeah, a person. So I do believe that he was crucified. Thank you for the rose. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so would you ever then, you know, just out of, you know, pure, you know, just so you can, you know, believe, I, I know in your head right now, you, you are 100% certain that there is no such thing as a God, there's no such thing as... Um, well, if there's a contradiction, then yeah, but like, outside of the context of there so, being a contradiction, yeah, then no. I mean, then. Yeah, but that's what I mean then, so, so why not you know, move o over towards, you know, learning about uh, uh, Islam and the Quran. You know, many people have said that there's no... I do, I do, I do. But like, I mean, I just, I, we don't see good reason there because uh, Jesus crucifixion. But, uh, so it goes down Let to... Let alone the, the theological uh, issues. Okay, so if you were to read the Quran, I'm not going to say that you are, you know, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you what to believe. I can't tell you anything. But let's just say what, that you were to read the Quran and you saw that you know it made it made sense you know to the millions of people that have converted it made it, it's made sense so if it made sense to you if it you know um changed your mind would you then convert is there you know what i'm basically trying to ask is is there any chance of you converting if it's true would i convert yeah so why not go into it then try try and you know inform yourself about it i do and but you just don't so ha, have you read the 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 entirety of the quran from from uh start to finish no i haven't done that with the bible either so, okay well that's what i mean why what why not you know what what's the worst that could happen you know i'm not saying that you know you I'll, I'm obviously saying that I'm not saying gonna... I'm not willing to read these books. What I'm saying is that I have reasons yeah. outside of the context of just reading the book here that indicates that it likely is false. So, okay. So you just, okay. So I'm not going to say that you're okay. Obviously, you know, you might read it. You might not read it. I can't tell you what to do. And that's fair. However, I'm saying that, um, um, if, if, if you read it, not just to convert, if you just read it on, you know, good faith, do you know what I mean? Read it on good faith. See if it makes sense to you. You know, at the least it could do is maybe just, you know, answer all of the questions that you've had. Would you ever, you know, just decide just to pick up the Quran and... Read it, yeah. And uh, So that is th so that's a thing that, that, that could happen in the future, possibly. Mm-hmm. So I'm not a possible... bi I'm not a big reader, but yeah, I can I can pick it up uh, and read yeah, it. Yeah, don't get me wrong, mate. I I've I've had to read it, you know. Um, I prefer um, lectures. I prefer listening to scholars, yeah, same, right? Same, stuff like yeah, that. Exactly. I I'm not yeah. a big reader, but yeah. It's, it, it's the same with me. I don't like read. I, I if there was an audible, I, I, I'd listen to the how <laughs> an audible probably. book. There probably is. Yeah. However, okay. So you know, we'll just go back to the point. So it, so if if you you read it and there's a chance of you converting, um. Do you believe that there's a chance of you converting? If it's true? If it's true. Well, if, I believe there's a contradiction, that. so. Okay, 
you, yeah, of course, you know. However, you haven't said that you, re you that you've read the full Bible. You haven't said that you read the full Quran. I don't need to. So There's a contradiction. They give the head mustache. Appreciate it. Thank you. It, yeah, ex exactly. Um, then that's gonna lead to religious debates. You know, which which religion is the truth? Obviously, I'm gonna come in and say that you know the Quran is the truth for you know for many reasons. However, you know, um. Obviously, you haven't read the Bible fully, you know, and the Quran as well. So that that can't really be a conversation, you know, and I, and I accept that. that that's completely fine. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not greatly educated on it as well. However, there's just enough proof. It, it's there for me. Do you know what I mean? It's there for me. So, well, what proof? Uh, you know, uh, between the, you know, it always comes down between the Quran and and and, and the um sorry uh, Islam and the um and, and the Christians it's always going to come down to the 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 the, the trinity do you yeah, know where I mean? does sperm the come trinity, from it comes from you know males no no, no like what what, what organ produces it I, i'm not i'm not that smart i'm, I'm i i wouldn't have the oh, oh sorry you mean the testicle yeah, 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 the yeah. confetti thank sorry. you so much well the well the Quran disagrees with you they think the spurting fluid comes from between the backbone and the rib. No, that no. Then there must have been a definitely a, a different context to it because from what I've heard and from what I've obviously I must have read it obviously, but I don't memorize the whole book. I'm not on that stage yet. I've only uh, converted recently. Um, it it it, it disagree, you know. And then that comes to a whole different point of um, you know respecting women, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, I was going I I was going to say. Um, that it comes down to um the trinity for me you know when i was a christian and there was always the trinity that that it caught me do you know what i mean it caught me you know how can god be above you know and then uh sorry uh god i don't i don't believe the trinity so like i don't think that's relevant to me um yeah and i, I yeah i know i know i'm I, i'm just saying you know that's um there was a point that 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 had some some con context to this my memory isn't great uh, but I was, you know, I was saying that that's why I converted. That's why it made sense to me. That's why, you know, I went from a Christian to a Muslim. Do you know what I mean? So that's that, that's why I was that's what I was saying to you. If it was your th truth, if you believed it firmly when you read the Quran, then why, you know, w would you then convert? It could be in ten years' time, twenty years' time. It could be an hour before before you before you die but what do you confirm yeah I'm sorry, if, what do you if it's if it's proven to be true yeah but again i think there's a contradiction so i don't think that's gonna happen okay so if you believe that you might convert then surely that backs up the point that you just you know don't believe that about your point uh enough right because there's nothing on earth no if i'm wrong me... about there being a contradiction which i'm not then then yeah and, i would and believe in it contradiction yeah yeah, yeah. so contradiction? so do you believe god is perfect i believe god can't make mistakes i believe it just just, just can't yeah, do you think human beings are perfect no absolutely not are human no, beings created we... by god yes of course uh given a perfect creator do you expect there to be a perfect creation um yeah there there can be a perfect creation however god made us to not be perfect he put us on the you know on this earth you know f you know to 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 test our faith for him yeah you know i mean that's why you know that's why um i believe in um you know okay, so for, given for that we that... are not perfect or not in a perfect creation there is not a perfect creator because again a perfect creator entails a perfect creation there is no perfect creation therefore i would reject the notion that there is a perfect creator okay so do you believe that um let's just say um well let's just say that you are perfect in creating something if you purposely make a creation that isn't perfect does that not make you a perfect creator even though you've purposely done it yeah so you so god god prefers sin yeah so yeah so yeah no I, yeah I, i'm saying so out of all the creations that god has created so, so god prefers flaws N no he's no like, like i said before god like, prefers no flaws before. right so if god prefers no flaws um well then why why would there be a flaw why would no, that I'm be god's saying... intention
Yeah, I'm not saying that God prefers flaws or not. I'm telling you. No, no, no. If God that... did pick the flaw, then God would be preferring the flaw if that's God's intention is to create us with flaws. No, because no, no, no. So, so l let me let me rephrase it then. Um, so you know it can be, make a bit more sense maybe. Um, okay, let's just say that I'm perfect in creating, or well, let's just say um, paintings. We'll just say that if I make a painting not perfect if i if i make it bad then does that mean that um i i, I am a, not a good even though i've done it on purpose let's just say i've done it on purpose for a reason let's just say i've done it on purpose um f let's just say is the reason any... perfect yeah the reason could be perfect yes so, for so example, the reason was perfect re to, to create an imperfect painting how could the reason be perfect to create an imperfect painting let me uh, that's yeah th that's what i'm gonna explain right now so god has made us not perfect we are humans that's how he's made us not perfect at all we can't be perfect you know we, we're always gonna make mistakes we're always gonna sin but that's why we you know we, we repent and so on and so forth however the reasoning is perfect the reasoning is beautiful we 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 sin however we, we, we go back and we repent um you know we show we, we show that we are um uh merciful to god you know we show that um uh you know we, we are trying our best and that's all he wants from us he, he th this is the test that he set for us he that's the whole reason why we are here um even the prophets um um that's the message that that they've spread to the people in the beginning you know what i mean uh, it's just he has set that for for us. It, there, there's a test that needs to be set, and he set it for us, purposely knowing that we will, um, you know, we are gonna make mistakes. How we he wants to see how how many times we're gonna come back to him. How you know how truly we believe. You know, um, the best way to explain it is if you keep failing at something most of the time, most most people they 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 will stop straight away. They, they, they are not going to continue with it. That's why he wants to see how strong our belief is for him. Is God all knowing? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Okay. I, I believe, yeah. I'll ask you this question. Let's so let's let's say that um, I know that my partner cheated on me. Do I need to test them to see if they cheated on me? Is there any reason for me to do that? Sorry, do you mind repeating? Sorry, sorry. I, do you mind repeating the question, please? Yeah, Abdel, I appreciate the the gem gun. Thank you so much. If if I know that my partner cheated on me, is there any reason yeah. in which I would test them to see if they cheated on me? Um, well, that would well, then that would just be uh, a case of um, someone just not being loyal. Obviously, because you know you are a, a human, so is she. Why would she worship you? You, you know, you both, you are both human. What have you done to her for 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 her to? to worship you what what reasoning does she have to worship you what the fuck dude that, that doesn't even relate to my question yeah, okay I'm so, asking, so is there is there a reason from is there a reason for me to test them to see if they're cheating on me no there, there, there shouldn't be any any reasoning to oh there would be no reason okay so given that god knows how we're going to respond to the test what reason would there to be for for god to test us because he is not like us there there is a reason for him to test us and for us to accept his test you know what is the reason if, i asked i asked what the reason is thank you for the husky i appreciate it okay the reason okay well th the reasoning is this take a look around you take a take a look at life around you you're breathing every single day you wake up Every single day you wake up, there's a different chance for there's another chance for you to go uh, uh, to to go to God, uh, to convert. There there is always a reason. Um, for, you know, uh, the, sorry, the, the the test he said that's that's the reason why you accept the test. Look look at the reasons all around you. You all, all you have to do is look at yourself, and 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 that's a reason right there. You're breathing every single day you wake up. Um, just because I'm breathing doesn't imply that there's a God that can be explained through other types of mechanisms. I'm confused how I, that yeah. responds to me, right? The idea is that it doesn't seem like there's a reason for God to have tested us in this circumstance. Okay. Yeah. I see, yeah. Like I said, I, I, I say that. However, 
you know, you look at um, not even fine. Do you know what? Going into human will be a whole different thing. You take a look at different things. You take a look at the the science behind uh, space, air, fire, anything. There, 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 there is such detail and complicity. You have what? What else could have created that besides a god? What else, like I, I, I want. What to else know could be your... created the universe? You mean? Yeah. So again, so, it could it could have been a like a prior state of fundamental particles in which has the necessary properties to bring about this reality comparative to another one, in the same sort of way that God has the necessary desires to bring about this reality rather than another one. Okay, so then what? Yeah, but what creates the reality? What what creates all all of this? What what creates the all, all the detail? Okay, and where so where where are the particles from? The particles always existed. How? How are they? How are they always existed? In the then? same way that God always existed. Okay, but God, like I said, God isn't a particle. Thank you for that mustache. God. Appreciate. It. Thank you. I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not God's a particle. We're just talking about whether or not so, it can can always exist. Okay, listen. You know, for 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 God, God has always existed because God God is um all knowing you know whatever you know we we all know the definition of god same way that god always existed right these particles always existed yeah but then you can't really compare particles to god why not in this sense we're just saying that they have the same property of being eternal yeah but god is infinite god 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 cannot be compared to or god can create a particle but how it's compared to in this sense it's in the sense in which they are eternal the same way that I can compare me and you by the virtue of us being men, but that doesn't so, mean so, that doesn't so, mean that so. doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we're both the exact same. We have distinctions between us, but we're both the same in terms of us being men. So we can be compared within the respect that we are men. So it comes down to just what you can prove. Because obviously, if you can't prove that God exists, you can compare it to anything. You can compare it to particles, you can compare it to anything. You want to compare it with that within a particular respect. Yeah, or, you know, obviously, I know you're not going to compare. Yeah, okay, I, I understand that. So you are saying that um, because God uh, can't be proven, I, I I can then, you know, you're just um, going to have an unjustified belief then, right? Okay, yeah. So 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 your belief is all all of this. So do you believe? So l l let me ask you this then. So do you believe two particles, two two small particles, created? Um, all, all, all of this what what could have been in those particles to create all of this detail around we us just, we just assume that it has the necessary properties to create this reality comparative to another one in the same sort of way that god has the necessary desires to create this reality rather than another but does one. it not make yeah so does it not make more sense that a god could create all of this but two particles you know I, if i had to choose between okay if a god has created um uh all of this i you know i i'd rather pick a god knowing what he is than two particles that you know i'm just gonna you know just they, they, they've had whatever whatever was in them i'd rather obviously pick the god i think a lot of people would A lot of people would just pick the God. If you just prefer God, that doesn't mean anything. So, okay, if if, if there were two options... I prefer to... Ben 10. I prefer Pokemon. I prefer um, Super Mario. I prefer, um, I don't know, Spongebob. Okay, but then would you really pick them over... Yeah. So, so you... Yeah, I, I can, I'm going to go live with Spongebob and Patrick. But then, but then wouldn't that just mean that you are believing of a high life form then um no spongebob is an equal life form to me yeah but then you would have believed yeah but then you would have believed that all of this would have been existed for a reason then dude i'm i'm literally just saying that that belief is no distinct from yours i don't actually fucking believe in spongebob bro yeah i know but then you yeah but then surely then that would have been uh um enough reason for you to believe that something would have created all of us I don't think that there's good reason to believe that something created us. I'm saying that given your view, you also think that this is acceptable. 
yeah, but then it's just, it's just going to go back to the point where you believe that something created all of us, which means you believe in a higher life form. You don't believe that we just all spawned here. I, I don't believe a higher life form created us. I don't, I, I don't think there's a sufficient explanation. What I showed you is that there's an explanation that's more likely to be true than another one, given the theoretical virtue of simplicity, requiring less assumptions to explain the same data set, not just easier to understand, right? Um, and uh, that that just requires the fundamental particles in which it doesn't have a mind, doesn't have intentions, doesn't have desires, right? They just have properties to bring about reality, same way that God has properties within God's mind to create reality. So you, so, so it's just, so you, so then that just believe, so you just firmly believe that, um, the, the, the particles have just, um, Create, create everything around us. Create, create the entirety of space. Create, I've created everything. Then, yeah, you could, you could posit that. I, I don't think that's a sufficient explanation, though. So then, you don't even believe firmly that the two particles have d done enough for your own belief. I don't think it's sufficient. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Right? I don't know, but I think that this is more likely to be true than yours in terms of a theoretical comparison. And why, but why would that be? Particles compared to a god. I, I just, the theoretical virtue of simplicity, right? Requiring less assumptions to explain the exact same question or the exact same yeah, thing. Yeah, but then I would, yeah, but then would, wouldn't you assume a lot less if um, you believe that um, a god has created everything? Why, why, why would you believe? Okay, if, if you're going to ask me, I believe that if two particles have created something, there will be a lot more questions. You know, the, 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 okay, for example, how did the two particles get in the first place? I know right now you're going to say, okay, well, how, how, how Greedy, did God Greedy, we, how we just, we just talked about this. We, the same thing yeah, that you say we, with God. Uh, exactly. However, I could believe that God was always there, even if I'm not religious. I can yeah, just I know, say I know. That. That's the same, same assumption. Yeah, I know, but I would believe that a god was there for what he is. I can't just believe two particles were there. But particles. Why not? Wait, it, what's the it, distinction between them? Both being eternal. A Either god, of them being a eternal. God, okay, a god can be. Um, a, a, a god has character. He has. Um, uh, he he he's uh, knowledgeable. Everything uh, like that. Two particles. You can't really say anything about these two particles. You can't say these two particles were anything compared to a god. If you did, if you were to say that, what do you mean? I, I, I that said that they be... both have the necessary properties to bring about this reality comparative to another one. That's the same. Basis yeah, I assumption. know. But yeah, I know. I know you can say that they are both on the same comparison. You know, okay, yeah, we can say that the particles were the, the, the same way God was there. However, it, you, you, you were uh, saying about the uh, simplicity of it all. I I believe it's way more simple to believe that there was a god there because because of all the characteristics that he is compared to just two particles. To you can believe that God was there because of all the characteristics. You can't just say that two particles were there for you know for whatever they are. Just you they know they have two... characteristics the same way that God has characteristics. I don't know what you're talking about. And so what what are the uh, characteristics then? Dude, I just I've explained it to you multiple times. I don't know what part did you not hear. So, like, so they have the uh, necessary uh, properties to bring about this reality rather than another one in the same way that God has the necessary properties to bring about this reality comparative to another one. They're also eternal. They're also and that's what you believe. which means that they explain themselves and they explain everything else that is dependent. So, and that's what right? you believe. Same, then. same assumptions. I don't do gritty. Gritty. I like it's like I have to say the same thing over and over again because I, I literally just explained this to you three times now. I'm going to explain it to you again. OK, no, no, no I no, don't no, believe no. this. Right. But I'm saying that this is more likely to be true than what your belief is. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense. So you, so, but I'm trying to know what you believe in, though. Like, what do you believe in? I, dude, greedy. I literally have said I don't know a million times. So if you don't know, then why don't you uh, inform yourself on 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 different religions then if you don't if you don't know Bro, them, why don't oh you... my god right even given the religions i don't know right i think there are contradictions within many of those religions but even given that circumstance i don't know because i don't think there's sufficient ex or explanation 
But then, okay, but then that would just be like any other problem. I thought, so, so it would just be like any any other problem then, any any other, uh, any other human then. So you don't believe in in God, you don't believe in religion, then why don't you educate yourself on on religion then? Dude, what are you talking about, bro? I... If you don't know, <clears throat> if you don't know, and you don't believe in any religion, then why don't you educate yourself on? If you said that, you, if you said that you haven't educated yourself on it, then. Dude, right? I think there are contradictions, and I will. I said literally said earlier that I will keep continue to look into them. Yeah, exactly. But you can't say that there are contradictions when you've told me that you haven't read the Bible or the Quran. Yeah, completely. I've read parts of it. Ex ex exactly. Yeah, so then, and you can see the contradictions, right? Well, you ha you can't say that there's been contradictions if you haven't read the entirety of. I don't have to of, read the entirety of it to know that there's a contradiction. Obviously, you need to. You can't. No, you don't. No, you, you don't. If 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 I say that if I say that like this rock has a hundred properties, and one of those properties would be that they they can or they 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 exist and don't exist at the same time, right? Um, do you need to know the rest of the properties to know that this is that this is contradictory? How would you have known that there was a hundred properties in there? I appreciate the husky. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, they're unknown right now, but we know that there's a hundred different properties. Yes, but how Can would you, you answer have the known damn that? question, bro? Like, I don't know. Why, I don't know yeah. why you're not answering the question. But that's what it, 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 the, the, why I'm answering the question. You you've just asked me, okay. Uh, okay, 100 unknown properties, whatever, whatever. Okay, that that that's fine. I'm telling you, you obviously need to um, read the 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 whole of the context, everything. You need to know the Think whole. Think of the entire hand thing. Do do I need to know more context other than just the fact that they exist and don't exist at the same time? Do I need to know more than that? Well, obviously you do. How, Clearly you how, fucking how, don't, dude. Clearly you don't. You know there's a contradiction because they say that they exist and don't exist simultaneously. Yes, but then that's, that's a contradiction blatantly. You don't need to know. You don't need to know anything else Exa about it. So exactly. All you need it's to know a, is that a, you have that contradiction. It's a contradiction between two religions, not between. Yeah, exactly. No, not that's between. Exactly. No, between the same belief. Under the same, okay. it's an internal oh, contradiction. Oh, oh. That means the same belief. Okay. That, okay. So, so let me ask you this then. Uh, do you believe that uh, Muslims they are um, uh, they 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 believe exactly what 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 Christians believe in terms of you know no. God and okay so um, if both religions are different but both religions have have different um, takes on 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 their beliefs for for God. Um, what 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 makes you um what makes you think that um without reading the entirety not even just just one religion both if if you if you can't if you don't know the the whole book surely then if you read the entirety of the book you'd have a better understand uh, uh, understanding for for the the confusion that you're in right now if yeah you maybe know, for so other if, things not for this contradiction but yeah, exactly. But what makes you say that? What, because there's what, a contradiction right in front of us. It's blatant. Exactly. Okay, it can be blatant right now. However, if you read the Even book, the box and gloves. I appreciate it. However, if you read the book, what makes you think that? Oh my it, god, it, dude! It, it, you know, you you change your mind. I'm not gonna change my mind because the contradictions are in front of me. Okay, okay, listen. Do you mind explaining to me what the contradictions are from from yes. start to finish? Yes. Okay. I didn't, didn't we already talk about this? We already had the conversation about the perfect thing. Yeah, right? no, yeah, 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 we did. But however, so you already I'm heard the wondering. contradiction? No, yeah, we did have the contradiction, yes. Okay, however, so then you already agree that the, we, are, we already went over that, dude. Why do you need to hear it again? No, because, okay, I'm going to need you to explain it again. So of course you like, need to, because you want me to explain it a million times. Like, I, I think I've already explained it three times in this conversation. Okay, well, okay. I well, can do it again, want... but like, bro, like, are you actually engaging with what I'm saying? Are you actually listening? No, 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 I, I am. I am. Okay. Um, given a perfect creator, we expect there to be a perfect creation. Give us a, yeah, okay. I mean, I, 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 yeah, okay. Given, okay, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to let you speak. I'm not going to 
say whether or not I agree with it. I'm just going to let you speak. Then, then we can't go through the conversation. No, 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 no. I, I'm, as in, I'm waiting for you to finish your, you know. Yeah, I, I, if I ask you a question and you don't respond, it, we can't go through the argument. Okay. So, okay. So, um, uh, given a creation, okay. I mean, I believe, like, like I said before, I believe that in order for, you know, God, so yeah, obviously God, God is a perfect creator, but he, because he, you know, just because we aren't perfect does not mean that whatever he created, what, because he did it on purpose. I asked you a specific question. What was the specific question? Rotating it on zone. He left himself, dude. I can't do it, dude. Oh my gosh. We're going to go into the next person. If you like the content, follow me if you haven't already. Tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to 500,000 likes. Let me go into the next person, though, everyone. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, how old are you? Hey, I'm 25. How old are you? For sure. Do you uh, believe in God? Uh, I want to say yes. I do know I'm a little bit more on the agnostic side, but I have like a hope that there's a creator and there's a God, you know? Do you believe in a God that is a, is a personal being, has intentions, desires? Well, like has a yeah, mind? I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What particular uh, religion do you believe in? Uh, non-denominational. Christian? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so do you believe that God is all knowing, all powerful and all good? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Does God have free will? Ooh, I would hope so. Yeah. Can God do evil? Yeah, I suppose. God never does evil though, right? Um, I don't believe so. I would not say he does now. No, because no, God's all good. Yeah. So yeah, so, so so you can freely never do evil. Is that possible? Wait, wait, me or God? Just any entity. Is it is it possible for them to freely always do the good thing? Um, no, not freely. I suppose that would be like them forced into a way so, of living. So God cannot freely always do the good thing. Well, God could, can he? Like so he so you can. Yeah. Uh, so, so it is possible. Can God actualize any possible world? Well, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure. God is all powerful, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God can actualize any possible world. Actualize? So like create any world he wants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Like he's probably yeah. created more than just our world, right? Yeah. God's all knowing too, right? So God can, God knows how to create any logically possible world. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I would say so. I agree with that. Okay, so so God can create a world in which there are human beings that freely do the good thing in all scenarios, the same way that God freely does the good thing in all scenarios. Oh yeah, I bet he could. Like there'd okay. just be a bunch of AI people that all. They're not AI anyway. because this, in the same way that God is an AI. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So they could all still have a conscience just like that. Yeah, and they, they all still have free will. They just always do the good thing in the same way that God's free will also allows for him to always do the good thing. So mm -hmm. like the idea yeah. is that um, God had a choice between a reality in which there are humans that have free will and there is sin and a reality in which there are humans that have free will and there's no sin, right? So given that we exist in a world in which there is sin, that would be telling us that since God is all good and God would pick the most preferred world, that God would prefer a reality where there is sin over a reality in which there is not sin, which entails a contradiction because sin is something that God has a preference against. So it would be saying this statement that God prefers the reality in which God has a preference against, which mm -hmm. is a contradiction. Yeah. But what if this is just one step to it though? Like he prefers us to be perfected and not sin, but we need to go into a world where we can sin to learn why we wouldn't want to sin. So this is just one step in the cycle. So spiritual maturation, right? But my, the reason why I don't think that spiritual maturation is convincing is because God has knowledge without going through experience. So okay. it's possible for there to be knowledge of these particular things without going through any type of experience. So again, the, clearly speaking, we can have all of this knowledge without the experience. Oh, so like we could just be sense. given the knowledge without yeah. having to go through it. The same way it was written in our hearts, right? But it was only written into our hearts to a particular degree. I'm saying that God could have written everything in our hearts. 
Uh, but but wouldn't it make more sense for and we'd understand it better if we actually go through it rather than just being told what the answer is? No, not necessarily, right? Because I mean, God understands it better than us, right? Yeah, but that's kind of like saying if your parents told you not to like have sex out of marriage, but you you wouldn't fully understand why unless you were to go through. An Wait, but God fully understands. Things. Yeah, yeah, just like so. Your, God your knows how to make us fully that. understand without there being an experience. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so he could just give us the knowledge and in the same way he has the knowledge. Away. Yep. Well, what if though he only has the knowledge because he lived a life and went through it? So, so he had experiential knowledge. What produced the, ex mm -hmm. the experience for him? Because you would have, would have had to have knowledge to create a reality with that experience. Oh, true. But but then what if though someone were like like if he went through this earth life before. He was a god, in essence. Then he would have gained that experience through his life. What, right? what created the earth life? Maybe there's a god above our god. Okay, well then right. what created that god, right? It's going to go on well, infinitely. Oh, you're right. Yeah, there's no beginning and there's no end, I suppose. So it would never... There's not an answer, I guess, for that, I would say. But, yeah, well. you see, so you see how it doesn't necessarily um, answer that, and then it does entail the contradiction. That's mm -hmm. yeah. This is this is why I I can't rationalize the belief, even though I would want to believe in it. This there's also contradictions with like the perfection one I brought up. There are issues that we can bring up in like moral arguments and stuff like that that could mm -hmm. entail contradictions with our commitments and our values. Like, yeah. For example, right? Like if we see a if we see a P three D O graping a child on the street, if I have the ability to stop it and I don't stop it, right? It would be wrong, right, for me to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I should stop that and I should take away the free will of that P three D O. Mm -hmm. Right, but God sees all these things happening. God can stop it, and God doesn't stop it. So the the moral yeah. fact is for me in the exact same circumstance for God is to do something differently than what God would do. So it's rules oh. for thee, but not for me. Okay, so then would it mean though that in God's eyes it's not as bad as it might seem to us? If he's I, I, it? I mean, I mean, I don't know, right? But um, like the idea is that the idea is that under what God considers to be bad or considers to be flaws, mm -hmm. right? We would still result in a contradiction, right? Because this is God's own internal sense of what's wrong. It's not my preference here when it relates to like the argument that I gave earlier with like God prefers the reality with sin over the reality without mm -hmm. sin because sin isn't something I care about, right? Yeah. If someone lies about there being a cookie jar in a room, I don't care. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so, right, but like God would. So here's my question then. Do you feel like um, whether God exists or not, do you think believing in eternal consequences or believing that there is a God, you would live a f more fulfilling life? Or would your life be more fulfilled not believing in it? Probably be more fulfilled not believing in it because I acknowledge now that I would be um, not living genuinely. Okay, so you could case. be more like your true self if you don't believe in it then, right? I can be less ignorant, yeah. Okay, so then what about if we take God out of the picture? Would you prefer to believe in a world where there's an afterlife or not an afterlife? I would prefer there to be a good afterlife, not just any afterlife. There could be an afterlife where I'm suffering all the time. I mm -hmm. wouldn't want that afterlife. Oh, but yeah. I wouldn't want an afterlife in which, you know, all my family exists forever. We're all happy all the time. That'd be great. Okay, so just like uh, an afterlife where there's a I heaven. I would prefer a heaven. No yeah, I would prefer a heaven, yeah. Okay. Right? I would prefer for there to be a heaven rather than there being no heaven, right? But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it corresponds with reality. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you were God, then you would have the afterlife just be paradise, then. No, oh, like the no, the entire reality would just be paradise. So this earth life would be paradise too. Yeah. But don't you think you wouldn't appreciate heaven if you didn't go through an earth life that was kind of painful? Well, it makes us appreciate the... things. Uh, it's a biological, experience? biochemical yeah. response, right? Oh, so you just have like make you can always produce that, that biochemical response. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and you think you'd still appreciate it as much if you didn't go through it, though? Yeah, because the only thing that okay. creates tolerance is biochemical response. There aren't tolerance, like for example, CBD. There's not a tolerance that you you accrue with that, but with THC, there is a tolerance that you accrue with that. So tolerance <laughs> isn't necessary. Okay, but what about the fact that it's like there's happiness that you can get from drugs? versus from life experiences. Wouldn't you much rather the life experiences happiness rather than uh, like a drug type of happiness? Yeah, because the, the drug happiness can fry my brain's ability to c continually have that type of experience, mm -hmm. right? Whereas if 
uh, if we're relating to a god, right, a god can set my brain up so that I can always have that particular biochemical response without it frying anything with my brain. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I guess if we were just like perfected beings or something like that. Yeah, like, like God can set all the parameters of our bodies. We don't determine, right, whether or not we're necessarily happy in circumstances or we're necessarily sad, mm -hmm. right? Like if someone breaks up with me or something and I loved them, clearly speaking, I'm going to have an emotional response to that that's bad and leads to pain, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not okay. my choice. I would prefer for me not to feel that, right? But I do feel that. Okay. So then would you agree that you would the biggest and most important aspects to this life is the relationships you make with people? Uh, generally, yeah. That's okay. one of the most important aspects, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think I would get behind that as well. I feel like that makes the most sense. Wow. Yeah. Sweet, cool. Yeah, man. Is there anything else you want to talk about or add? Uh, well, I follow you, so I'm sure I'll try to hop on again. But this was fun. Thanks for the discussion. For sure, man. I appreciate you coming on. Have a good day, bro. Sweet. You too. Okay. All right, everyone, let's go to the next person. If you like my content, follow me. If you haven't already, tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to 500K likes, y'all. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Uh, I talked to you last night, dude. 34. Oh, did we talk about this topic or a different one? No, a different one. Uh, economics and shit. But okay. um, <clears throat> Do you believe in God? I do. Or, I mean, I don't have to call him God. I believe there's a creator. I mean, if you create something, there has to be a creator. Yeah, yeah. Like, so what do you mean by a creator? I mean, like, there's a creator. Like, I, you don't have to call him God. I mean, like, there's a bunch of religions. They might have different names, but it's the same person. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what do you think are the properties of this creator? Um, here, give me. Actually, give me one second. I need to. I need to grab some real quick. Give me like 15 seconds. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, so what are the properties of this creator? I have no idea. I don't have the answers, but – and then uh, did you see the studies at the Hop Hopkins College? Are you driving? Have you done uh, – no, I'm actually barbecuing. Okay. Have you done DMT? Nope. Do it. You'll believe in God, dude. And there's a um, study – So it's that a most psychedelic eight... drug, right? So just because I have an yeah. experience with a psychedelic drug doesn't mean it's accurate. Right. Um, there are people that have um, hallucinations when they go on many other types of psychedelic drugs, and we wouldn't see that those would be accurate or correspond with reality. And scientists literally cannot prove that God does not exist. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate the meteor shower. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, well, using logic, we can disprove particular notions of God. But they, they can't and you can't create life without life. Is God is God alive? Is God alive? I don't know. I just know there's a creator, dude. Well, well you, can't, you can't create life without life, so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mean, he... God has to be alive. So yeah, and then God having... has biology? I guess. So what created God's biology? Dude, we don't know the answers. I'm just saying, if something gets created, there's a creator. It's okay, that wait, simple. so if, if God is alive, right, and life requires life to create it, well, then what life created God's life? I don't, we don't know the answers, dude. I don't know. Well, okay. Well, it seems like it's unnecessary to say that there's a God then because you could just say, I don't there, know when it relates to the natural world. No, there has to be a creator. And then like with all well, these physics. Have to be, not in the way that you're referencing it. So, so how do you think – so how do you think we're on earth? I don't know. I don't think there's a sufficient explanation, but I can provide to you a better explanation than what you provided. I can also show you contradictions with a belief that would say that there's an all knowing, all powerful, all good God, or that's perfect. Tell me why. Tell me why you don't believe in God. Uh, what God? The all knowing, all powerful, all good God. Sure. Um, contradiction. What do you mean? Like bad shit happening in the world and shit? Uh, no, there's contradiction. So, like, I mean, you could re it could relate to bad things. We can provide a contradiction through that, but. But yeah, so like, uh, like for example, right? Uh, wait, are you Christian? I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, so do you believe God is perfect? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, given a perfect creator, would you expect there to be perfect things created? You would think. You would expect, right? Um, yeah. Are we perfect beings? Absolutely not. Therefore, we expect that we don't have a perfect creator. 
I mean, we don't know the answers, dude. Like, I mean, well, I've you just said that we did. Up. You accepted the. You already accepted the premise. No, I mean, like, there's bad. Sh like, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it could be a test. Like, if you get to heaven or hell, or it could, or it could be. We don't know, but you have to know that someone created it. Like, like we get water to grow plants. We get sun. With there's all these physics, and you think that just ha happened out of just a fucking click, just some molecules. Yeah, I think it just happened to be the case, yeah. Uh, the same way that God happened to have the, these particular desires to bring about this reality rather than a reality with Nickelodeon slime only, or a, a reality with just marbles, or a reality with just shoes, or a reality where there's Pokemon. Mm. To Easter, old man, but... set of things that could have happened. Easter, old man, but thanks for letting me in, dude. Appreciate it. Have a good day, bro. All right, let's go to the next person, everyone. Tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to a million likes. Y'all, it should have sent it out to more people. I appreciate everyone doing so. We've been on for almost four hours, so we got another two hours and 15 minutes left on the live. Again, if you like the content, follow me if you haven't already. Tomorrow, y'all, I should be live around 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, that's when I should be live, maybe a little bit after that. I do have class tomorrow, so I got to finish that. But yeah, um, I let me go on to the next person, everyone. We still got a while, everyone. Let me go on to the next one. Only send a guest request if you disagree, all if you just want to debate. Yo, what's up? How old are you? I'm 29. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Why so? Uh, well, I'm a Christian, uh, non-denominational, um, and I've actually experienced it myself. Okay, so other types of yeah. spiritual experiences, say from the angel Gabriel with Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad. Oh, did I miss a gift? What gift did I miss, chat? Um, sorry, hold up. Oh, Crystal, thank you for the your hey, sweet. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Way, by the way, I do want to say that don't be surprised if something happens where it'll just automatically drop off or something gets – because I'm going to answer all your questions. I'm going to prove you wrong. I can't quite hear you. What would you say? Oh, I said don't be surprised if we, if we drop off or something like that. It's nothing wrong with my internet or anything like that, but the weird things tend to happen when truth gets spoken, real truth gets spoken. I'm going to prove you wrong. But, yeah, go ahead. Okay, prove me wrong. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, um, a perfect creator does not warrant a perfect creation because you're missing one point, free will. Okay? Free will is, um, um, if, if you know the Bible, free will is a um, gift from God. It's divinity itself. Okay? There's the reason why he said that we are divine over the earth. We are gods over the earth. So therefore, matter of fact, it's, it's, it's not that creation is not perfect because nature itself is perfect. If you look out and see all the animals, everything has its own ecosystem. Everything is going according to its plan. You know what's wrong with it? Us. The, the, only, the only beings that has free will. Okay. Um, and so the fact is, if if only thing we can do is go according to what it was created by but if we choose not to do it right don't kill don't steal don't sleep around don't you know all these things it says be perfect but what 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 do people do people are not perfect you're supposed to be perfect but you don't shoot you are not we people choose not to be perfect and that's the reason why we're not perfect so once again it's not that a perfect creator warrants a perfect creation so you can't, that's a logical fallacy. You can't do that. What logical fallacy? That a perfect creator can create a perfect creation. No, I'm asking you what logical fallacy? You're saying, you're saying that it's a, a perfect creator can perfect, create a perfect creation. Yeah, and I'm asking you what fallacy that is. I'm not. I, I'm not going to tell you the names of the fallacy. I'm telling you that is a fallacy. That's a logical fallacy. Yeah. What logical fallacy? Is it a straw man? Is it? Is it? Is it like a? Particular that's what I'm saying. Is I, it I, a I'm not going, fallacy. Like which one is it? That's, that's what I'm telling you. This is this is what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you that. I'm not going to tell you the names of the fallacies. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. It's so a you fallacy. don't even. Yeah, because you don't know what a fallacy is, right? A fallacy is going to be historically bad reasoning, right? In which we see absurd conclusions resulting. From I said it. it's. A, I said it's a logical fallacy. 
That's yeah. a logical fallacy. You can't say that a Clearly perfect speaking, creation can create a perfect creation. That's creator. not a logical fallacy. Okay, so your misunderstanding is a logical it? fallacy. Secondly, yes, it's what we would expect given that, say, a perfect free throw shooter, you would expect to see a perfect amount of free throws made. A perfect test taker, you would expect to see perfect test scores. Right? These, this is literally something okay. that we apply in every other sense of the word perfect, but for some reason we don't apply it in this sense. Somehow you're saying are you that saying, a perfect creator does not entail a perfect creation, right? Are you secondly, saying, okay. are you, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to, are you saying that a perfect, a person who is perfect, a perfect free throw shooter, are you saying that they've never missed? Yeah. Okay. So therefore, if it's a, if it's a perfect creative, well, first and foremost, first and foremost, the only thing that is perfect is God. Okay, so that's that's first and foremost. So, secondly, the fact you can't say that a perfect creator can create a perfect create. He can create a perfect creation, but his whole point was to create free will. The the what messed it up was free will. Yeah, so if it's messed up, then it wouldn't come from a perfect creator because a perfect creator does entail a perfect creation because what does it mean to be a perfect creator? It means that you create perfect things. Like, tell me yes. what it means to be a perfect creator. Can you tell me? Yes, what it, what it means to be a perfect creator is to create perfection. What the, dude! Okay. You just, you, wait, so, so it, okay. Is, it is logically entailed that given a perfect creator, there is a perfect creation. Yes, yes, you're right. But what I'm saying is that a, a perfect creation does not warrant, like you can't say because a, a creator can create anything that he wants. He can create a non-perfect creation, he can create a per perfect creation. So you can't say perfect creator equals perfect creation. It's, it's all under wait, the same tree. You, it's a tree. You just did. You just did. You just said. No, I did. Per, wait, no, you just said the definition of a perfect creator is that they create perfect things, right? You just yes. said that. You already conceded to that. The, yes, I said that they create perfect things. Yes, I do. That's yeah, yes, the do. Yeah. So perfect. But creator. that's not the only thing that they create. There is. It's a creator. <laughs> he could do what he wants. Yeah, a perfect creator. So they're going to create perfect things. Here's a, here's a, here's the issue, Parker. Here's the issue. <laughs> the issue here is that you're trying to apply your human logic, or I'm not matter of fact, I'm not gonna say it like that. I'm sorry. You're trying to apply this logic. It's it's a very flawed logic because you're saying like like one equals one when in fact one can equal 0. 0.5 plus 0. 0.5. That is saying one equals one. Bro, what are you saying, dude? Okay, what I'm saying is it's all a parts of the same whole. You don't have all the variables. What? How is that even responding to what I'm saying? I'm saying, I just said that a perfect creator can create a perfect creation, but then they can also create a an imperfect creation, right? So God prefers the imperfect imperfect creation over it's the perfect creation. It's not about preference. What he, it's, it's a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna say it like this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna say it like this. Okay. First and foremost, in order for you to say and and make an argument about a perfect creation, like you would have to say that God, the whole point of God creating things was for Him to create. A perfect creation when in fact that's not that that wasn't his intent it wasn't it wasn't it, it wasn't to create perfect creation it was it was create cre a creation for him simple fact it's just it's that simple if you if and you were a christian before right yeah yeah so so let me respond to this so um okay go ahead. so there are uh, there's a set of all the things that god can do and what determines what God does is God's preference or God's desire. That is how d God determines what God does. So you can't say it's not relevant what God's preference is, because ultimately speaking, what selects the reality that God picks out of the set of all logically possible realities is God's preference. Two, God intends as a perfect creator to create imperfect things. Okay. No, he, he never intended to create um, imperfect things. As a matter of fact, the only imperfect thing that he created was us. That's the only imperfect so, thing so, that he, so, that so he, he created. Failed, so he failed with respect to his intention, i.e. is not perfect. 
No, he didn't fail with with his intention. His intention was to create people with choice. Choice is, is chaotic. His intention was to create them imperfect. Okay, but like the, the hold up the point. Is okay, also you're is that you're taking what I'm saying out of context, is which is probably the, what you did with the Bible, which is I can tell you that like, I can I tell did, the humble, reason I why I clearly didn't. I didn't take it out of context. There, I said exactly you did, what though. you said. I <laughs> you did. No, I, I didn't did. say. What did I say? I didn't say he. Because you you said you're saying that I'm saying he created th- he meant to create things um, imperfectly. That's what you're trying to. That's what you're trying to put into me. But I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he meant to create something that was imperfect. That wasn't his. That wasn't his. 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 His goal. His goal was to create something for him. So, so it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It. And, and then, as a matter of fact, I'm at, in order to tell you the full story. And by the way, you guys, I'm. I'm telling you the Bible. I'm not. I, this is. This is can not. I, can I respond to like, that point, please? So, so God go failed ahead. with respect to His intention there, because if God did not intend for us to be imperfect, if we are imperfect, then God failed, right? Not so true. You're, you're then saying that God is because you're only getting. You're only uh, and and not even get to finish what I was saying. Uh, uh, like, I, um, let me let me what just, I just said there first. Yes, I'm going to respond. Do what you just said. First and foremost. <laughs> God's intention was to, was to create perfection, but it was for the thing to be made perfect through itself. That's what choice was about. We were supposed to choose perfection, but um, oftentimes we don't choose perfection. There's a way that's perfect for us. And that's the whole point of choice. You're not that's that, and, and that's the issue. You you're not understanding choice. You're not understanding where choice comes from. Hi. Okay, so the point is that if we are perfect, we will always do the perfect thing. So God you, freely does the perfect thing, as God has free will, and again, always does the good thing. So in the same sense that God freely always does the perfect thing, right? God can create human beings that have free will that always do the perfect thing. Freely do the perfect thing. So there's no co- contradiction, there's no issue with that, and if God can create that world, clearly speaking, it would have happened given the fact that God is perfect. Okay, so this is why I reject the notion that this particular God exists is because given that this God exists, this perfect God exists, we would expect there to be a perfect creation. There isn't a perfect creation. Therefore, we would say that there's not a perfect creator. That's not true because in the beginning, he did create us to be perfect, but we are the one who chose to be imperfect. You didn't hear my response to that. I said that that can't happen if we were perfect, as if we are perfect, then we can never divulge or go away from that perfect perfection. That means so, there will be no the choice. Same way that no, no, it doesn't mean that. We that have the is choice. what that means. We, no, no. So God has free will, right? Jesus has free will. Yes, He does. Okay, and He was tempted by the devil, but never succumbed to that temptation, and He never would. Because He's God. And He never would. Okay, because He's because perfect. He's God. Because He's perfect. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So if it's because he's perfect, well then human beings, if they are perfect, will have never then succumbed to the temptation of the devil. They would have never sinned. But, but Jesus was God, though. That's 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 what you're. That, no, no, no. Listen, like, no, 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 listen. God is that way because God is listen. perfect. Parker, you you you're 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 making a lot of straw man arguments like i'm not straw man shit here, don't gaslight me you are man you are you're, you're, you're gaslighting right i didn't straw man shit you I'm are taking man. things out of context what did i take out of context? okay <laughs> what you're taking out of context is the fact that you're trying to compare jesus to humans as as if like he he succeeded because he was God or he was he was just some perfect being he even said himself that he is not good in his form What that's not true, right? You believe that, that is, God is true. All, no you believe that God is all-knowing all-powerful and all-good, right? God is all-powerful all-good and all-knowing. Yes, okay, so you do believe that God is good then you just contradicted yourself How because you said God is all good, but God's not good Please say I didn't that, say, say God is not again. good. I said Jesus Jesus is God Wasn't under your good. view. Oh my gosh. He is God. Yeah, but so he God was, is not good? His flesh wasn't good. <laughs> okay, but Jesus... This is what I'm saying. What, that, that, you're not making any sense, bro, at all. Okay, let me let me put it to you like this. Let me put it to you like this. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Uh, where does consciousness come from? Can you quantify that? Uh, it's derivative of our brains. 
It's a derivative of our brains. Explain that. What do you mean by that? Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be many different parts of the brain working in tandem together through the processes of the thermical cortical connections, the development okay. of the prefrontal cortex and cerebral cortex that allows for the brain to communicate with each other to produce some type of subjective experience. So it's the communication of our brain. That's the consciousness. Okay. Uh, do, can you prove that? Yeah, yeah, we, we see that within beings in which exhibit these particular characteristics, we see that they exhibit characteristics that we would associate with having these particular sets of experiences. And we see when these, when these particular conditions don't exist, we see that people do not exhibit these particular um, characteristics. Thank you for the box. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Therefore, okay. obviously, we'd entail that, like, likely speaking, they have this particular characteristic. Do you know what brain plasticity is? Neuroplasticity, yeah. Yeah, neuroplasticity. Uh, I, I'm just going to re-explain it. Neuroplasticity is basically how, like, it, it explains how uh, basically half of your brain can be cut off. And then basically the brain itself would kind of reroute re re itself into basically being able to um, operate in a at least, you know, functional way. Like, that basically know. explains no, 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 brain no, no. plasticity. So, so neuroplasticity... Um, relates to like the the, the change in the gro uh, like the growth and reorganization of neural networks within the brain. Well, that's what I, that's what I explained. It uh, does not sound like what you just said. That's exactly what I said. If if it is rearranging itself, um, it basically is a rearranging and reorganizing itself so they can operate in a in a more functional way. You no, know, in a way that's different than what it originally was. Sure. So, so they can operate in the more functional way. It's not. It's, it's in a different way. Um, also, is there a way that you can go to a quieter, quieter room? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I, can, I can go downstairs. I'll go with my kids. Okay, so, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so, um, um, so it, it, uh, yes, it, it operates in a different way, but the whole the whole goal is is more so the same than anything. I'm, that's that's neither here nor there. The bottom line of what I'm trying to say is that. Um, Neuroplasticity, the fact that if you're saying that that the uh, the uh, precortex or um, I don't know that I'm not a biologist, so I don't, I don't know um, these things or anything like that. But if you're trying to tell me that if you're trying to tell me that um, um, if you can cut off half your brain or, or parts of your brain, it can you can kind of still you can still function in a way that's normal. Right. If you choose to, um, there's many different studies uh, on this or in, in all these things. OK, you cannot tell me that it is a communication. Uh, consciousness comes from a communication between the brain. Yeah, it, does. Brain it literally, it literally does. Right. You can't take apart the parts of the brain in which there are thermical cortical connections and expect in most circumstances for people to have any type of subjective experience. There have been literally four cases that I've seen in which an individual has had a subjective experience without having thermical cortical connections. And that's likely due to like the cerebral cortex and the other types of parts of the brain picking up right on uh, where, where essentially where they left off on like the other circumstances in terms of like uh, there not being the, the connections, the thermical cortical connections. So um, you're not, okay. you're not even acknowledging the fact that this is absolutely relevant. You can't give me a circumstance in which someone has, none of these characteristics working in tandem in part of the brain and still has a subjective experience. You can't do that. Well, my, my question to you is where does consciousness come from? Because your, your, your of the answer to that, okay, your answer to that is communication with the brain. But what if I was to tell you that consciousness comes from a spiritual realm and what in your brain is just simply making those connections to basically show that side of itself? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's your own perspective and belief that's irrespective of the evidence that we have. But do you understand how your connections, right? Because there's actually no scientific proof. There's actually no scientific proof of what you're saying. That's um, false, completely false. And that is not false. No, no. That is not false. It is clearly that there false. Is, it is clear, I that is literally multiple, just an humble, observation. Humble, humble. Okay, and ahead. that's that's a part of science. That's the scientific method. That's observation is a part of the scientific method, right? I can okay. show you multiple different academic papers in which relate to these particular concepts within neuroscience, right? This isn't something I'm just pulling out of my ass, right? This is something that there's actually a good amount of research on. Okay, are you trying to tell me that you could sever a connection in the brain and the person? You can basically control the person. 
Uh, we don't have the capacities to currently control a person okay. right now, given those characteristics. But yes, we do know that these different parts of the brain work in tandem to produce a particular type of experience. Parker, one plus one equals two, okay? Can, if you sever the connection, right? Are you trying to tell me that that part of the, because that part of the brain is not being communicated to, a person would not be able to access that, that side of themselves? What? Okay. Yeah, if a particular part of the brain isn't working, people won't be able to access that particular ability attributed by that particular brain, as a part of their brain. Thank you for the cap. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Like, are, you're just disputing people have neurological issues then. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, what I'm, <laughs> oh, man, this is, the point that I'm trying to make to you is because, because the, the whole point is that, like, you can't answer me. You cannot answer me where consciousness comes from. The only thing you're telling me is that um, it comes from the connections in the brain. But you're, you, like, basically, if a person was different academic papers on it. You can have your feelings, but... I where mean, conscious I, comes from? Facts preside over your feelings, my guy. Thank you, appreciate about, Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, facts I'll preside over your feelings. Not feelings. I promise you it's not about feelings. I, I'm telling you, I'm literally telling you, no one has ever proven where consciousness comes from as a Ooh, fact. What are you talking about? No, it's not. We, we have absolutely most likely evidence to indicate that it comes from the, these particular processes within our brain. Like again, I can send you on multiple different academic papers in which indicate this to be true. Okay. In that case, then we can create technology to transfer our consciousness to another, like a computer per we se. We currently don't have so. the capacities to do that right now. Why not? I don't know. Okay, do you know how long people have been waiting on this? There's actually a movie. Um, um, there's actually a movie based off of these things, and movies usually come from yeah, there's a, TV a show long too, research and long, long, exactly. This is, there's been long research and long wants to do this. Um, yeah, there, there's, uh, there's, lot, there's Star Wars. Yeah, people want to do Star Wars. Like, what's your point? Okay. We don't, we don't have the ability to make, to make a make lightsaber. Is, okay. The point that I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is that. Okay, even Star Trek. Okay, the reason why uh, um, the uh, warp is possible is because they're able to shape the uh, space around them and then basically move that space within, you know, and basically kind of just move faster than light. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, the issue here in reality is that in order for us to even move space or anything like that, we would have to be able to control gravity in some way. We can't do that. Okay, but there's been papers and there's been long research on people wanting to do this. But the reason why we can't do that is because um, we can't control gravity. It's that simple. So in the same light, okay, it's the same way that we can we can we can literally see the connections going on in the brain, right? And you're telling me that that is what consciousness is, right? But I'm telling you that it ha it would have to take some sort of faith in order for you to believe that it is um, these connections. Like, as a matter of fact, you can explain a lot of things away. What do you but mean the bottom faith? line is faith is basically you having to go off of a risk or going off of a belief system with no proof. No, with we nothing. have proof. The we only have proof. proof. What are you talking about? I believe there's proof. You only have an observation. You don't have proof that says that that is consciousness. Wait, observation is a part of the scientific method. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, obs you first observe, then you form a How hypothesis, you know then you exists? form a theory, and then you test it, and then it no, becomes fact. No, the theory fact. is after it's proven. Oh, God. And when it's proven, it becomes a fact. So you can, something can be a fact and a theory simultaneously. Well, that's what I just said. I just, I, no, it actually can't. There yeah, can't be a fact can. and a theory at the same time. Yes, Sir, it can. By the scientific that's what it is. The scientific method goes like this. You first observe, then you form a hypothesis. Once you form your hypothesis, you, you form a theory so that you can test it. No. And no, then, no, oh no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> hypothesis, is, okay. hypothesis is a logically possible explanation. When it relates to like a like a theory. Right, it's going to be a logically possible explanation that is proven to be the case, proven to be true. Can 
can do a quick Google search. It's like the first thing you find on the internet. It's like wild that I even have to debate this in the modern era, dude. Unbelievable. In the meantime, everyone, tap that screen. Let's try to get to a million likes. If you disagree, send a guest request right now. Again, uh, tap that screen. Let's try to get to a million likes, y'all. Um, again, if you like my content, follow me if you haven't already. I go live literally every single day. We've been on for over four hours so far. We got like an hour and 50 minutes left, everyone. Yeah, so um, are you there, bro? Did he just leave chat? I don't know what happened to him. Happened to him. I, I don't know if he tried to leave or something. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I just looked up the scientific method, um, and I'm, I can tell you that I was 100% right. You can literally just Google it yourself. You're not right, no. <laughs> literally look up what a scientific I theory is. Look, read, literally read me the definition of a scientific theory right now, humbly. Okay, I'm, no, 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 I'm going to you know explain you, you know the steps. I'm going to explain you the steps. Pause and <laughs> If you, if you are right. wrong, you're off the live, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. So read to me the All definition right. of a scientific theory. Okay. It's five steps to scientific method. No, tell me what a scientific theory is. And by the way, when you go off the app, I can't. I'm not you. going. Off, I didn't say the scientific theory. I said scientific method, sir. Yeah. And I, I'm asking you to tell me what a scientific theory is because you said that you cannot have a scientific theory that is a fact. Oh, God. I'm not doing this. <laughs> oh, you can't justify I, I, your position. I'm, I'm trying to. No, because that's not my position. You put me there. That You keep trying to take things out of context of what I say. Which is, like I said, which is probably what you did with the Bible. I understand. Like, I'm fact, not taking as a anything fact, out of context, Humble. You're you gaslighting me. You're literally gaslighting me because I didn't take anything explain, out of context. Explain to me how I'm gaslighting you. Because I didn't take anything out of context. You're lying about saying that I'm taking something out of context to manipulate people into believing that the reality in which we so we just experienced was not real. That's what gaslighting is by definition. You actually took what I said out of context. I, I didn't say anything. So? Of, I'm, that wasn't my point. My point how, is how did what, I take what you what out of context? Method was based how did I take you out of context? Because this whole time I was talking about the scientific me method, Parker, not the scientific theory. You made the point of a no, scientific theory. No, no, no. You, you made you the point that it can be no. a theory and a fact. No, yes. I was you refuting responded. what you were saying. Yeah, and you responded. You said, no, it cannot be. Right? That was the whole point of that claim. I then, I then said, look up a scientific theory. You then took a minute. You didn't look it up. You never told me the definition of a scientific theory. You came back. Right. And then you still have not accepted this. Right. You were talking about a scientific theory. Right. You literally, I'm pretty sure he's literally the one who brought it up. Chat, wasn't he literally the one who brought it up? Talking about when a theory came about? I was talking about a scientific method. And you brought up a theory within the scientific method, right? Yes. You, yeah. So I asked you, you to define what a theory is. Okay. And you didn't define to me what a theory is. Let me define to you what a theory is. All right. All right. Everyone tap that screen. Let's try to get to a million likes. Everyone at Shilp, send it out to more people. Everyone follow me if you haven't already. Again, I go live literally every single day off for like six hours. So again, follow me if you do like the content, y'all. Um, yeah, we'll give it a second, everyone. Make sure it's scientific theory. Yes, very clear. Scientific theory. Actually, wait, no. Should I just read it right now? I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to wait. Should I just read it, chat? Actually, I have, I have one right here. Um, a, th a theory never becomes fact. A scientific theory. Look up science. I'm just going to read it, dude. This guy's so annoying. Okay, a scientific theory. If you literally just look it up on the internet, first thing that comes up, okay? Um, a, a well substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on bodies, a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment, i.e., proven, right? So, this is unfucking believable. Bro. Sir, like, literally, it the says, first, first thing sir, that comes up. Sir, I can, you literally read that and got uh, the wrong thing out of it because you're not understanding it says it's a well su su substantiated. 
well substantiated is referencing proven. That's what it means. That's literally what well substantiated means. Sir, it's an explanation about facts. It's not a fact. Well substantiated implies that it's about proven. facts. Humble. It's humble. an explanation, sir. <laughs> Can you define fact? Things that's been proven to be true. Yeah, so it's going to relate to proof. So if a well, if it's relating to something that's well substantiated, that means a fact because it's proven. It's explaining it's the truth. It's explaining the reason for the truth. It's explaining what's going on with the truth, but it's not the fact. The theory itself is not the fact. It's explaining. Wait, about I, have, the fact. I have a question. Is gravity a fact? Gravity is a fact. Well, it's also a fucking theory, buddy. No, there is a theory about gravity. But the gravity itself is a fact, sir. Yeah, it's a theory and a fact. You just you just answered it yourself. Thank you very much, Humble. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. W's in the chat for Humble, everyone. Parker, <laughs> listen. <laughs> let's get to the real deal here. Okay, let's get to the real deal here. Okay? You used to be Christian. What happened? I couldn't make sense of the belief. Okay. Um, if you if you used to be a Christian and you couldn't make sense of the belief, okay, I can tell you that most likely it's because you didn't go deep enough. Sure, sure. But here's the thing. Even if I was to prove you wrong or do anything like that, would you change if if uh, if if it was so, if it was it was if it was not the truth. I don't believe so. Because you seem fixed on this theory to explain things because you need to quantify everything. And and it, just like consciousness, not everything can be logically explained. Okay, so you you agree that your belief cannot be logically explained? My my belief is the basis of logic. No, can your belief be logically explained? Logic cannot explain the creator. No, it can't. Oh, well, because the creator is the creation. It, the creator Humble. created logic. Humble, I agree with you, bro. I agree. Right. Logic cannot explain your view. I agree. Uh, God. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the... Dude, that's a concession to me. Here's the issue. Here's the issue, sir. You can prove to yourself that God exists because that's what you're saying. Prove to me that God exists. Okay. I'm saying I can prove to you that God exists if we pray and he will show you himself. I have prayed before and God has never shown itself to me. I've asked. And, and what context have you asked? And what context have you asked? Praying. That's the question. Praying. No, it's not about praying, sir. It, there's, there is a the way context. of doing things. Okay, Parker, the, and I promised I wasn't going to mention the Bible, but you used to be a Christian, and now I'm going to be, now I'm going to get on your faith. Okay. The issue here is that there's a way unto man that seems right, but the end thereof is death. Okay. Now, the, the, what that means is that you literally are, you're literally. You went a certain way, and I can guarantee you that he's been trying to reach you in certain ways, but you you wouldn't change. So so that's the reason why he probably led you into this form that you're in right now, this mental mindset that you're in right now. Like as a matter of fact, I can even tell you that um, I like <laughs> Luke nine twenty three to twenty six literally says. That if you do not follow him, it's not it's not enough to just proclaim him or just say, oh, Jesus loves you or just, oh, this. You have to follow him. If you don't follow him, then therefore you are not going to be experiencing what the Christian faith is all about. Wait, so let me that's, clarify. That's God what is the Bible says. Is... God, is, God is deceiving me because God is pushing me to do these types of lives and which apparently are false. So God is deceiving me? Who's deceiving you? God. How you, said God God was, you? you said God was pushing me into doing this. You agree that this is wrong under your view. Therefore, God is deceiving me because God pushed me into deception. No, he didn't push you into deception. He let you go. Okay, so God didn't push me to do anything there. 
Yes, no, he didn't push you to do anything. He let yeah, you go. Th th this is what never makes sense to me, given Christian's views, because they'll always attribute everything that happens in their life that's good to be with about God. Oh, God helped me with this. God pushed me to do this. But then whenever it relates to all the bad things, God never pushed that. God never is attributed with that. God is never around with that. Think of the campfire pressure. Because, that's all it's, you. because he didn't. Right? So, it's, he didn't. so it's all you whenever it's the bad, but it's not all you when it's the good. No, it's not about it being all me when it, God can't be bad. <laughs> that's that's the that's the issue. Like as a matter of fact, yeah. if if he promised you something, okay, there's there's a lot of promises in the Bible. There's a lot of promises that you can have in the Bible. You can have an easy life. You can have all these things, but there's a sacrifice. There's always a sacrifice that that needs to be made. You can either sacrifice or you can obey. If you don't obey, then hey, good luck sacrificing. But it is always better to be it's always better to be obedient than to sacrifice. Oh, okay. See, that's okay. what you see. This so, is what you're so saying. Someone, like, yeah. So if someone, yeah, yeah, if someone kidnaps me and like fifteen other people, right, mm -hmm. and then wants us to obey them, right, is yes. would, would it make sense for me to sacrifice my life to save everyone else there? If that's what you chose to do, this is all about choice. No, but would would it be justified for me to do that? We got there kidnapped. is nothing that's justified. It's not about being justified. There's you will never be justified? justified. There is nothing that is justified. Oh, okay. You will well, never question. be justified. Hold, hold on. Yeah. Let, me ask you, let me ask you this question. Go ahead. Stop, yes. Stop, Let's stopping, do this. Yeah, stopping a P3 video from graping a child. Is that justified? Yeah. No. What? <laughs> it's not. Okay. Next question. Stopping a genocide from occurring. Is that justified? No. Okay, right. This is wild. This is wild. Right. It's not. Putting a serial on a liver in prison. Uh -huh. Is that justified? No. There is nothing that's justified, Parker. Not killing yourself, talking someone off a building. That doesn't make you justified. Doesn't make you a good person. That's it's not wild. about being a good person. That's wild. Yeah. That's actually wild, dude. Uh-huh. What do you what do you, what do you yeah. think what do you think justification means? Justification means that it, it gives you a mix merit points or it gives you some type of like the best way I can explain it is basically it makes you a good person. Like it it, it, it puts you So in, it doesn't in, in, make you a good side. person to stop a P3 video from graping a child? That doesn't make no, you a good person? No, it doesn't. Dude, what? It's no. a good deed. Listen, 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 listen. It's a, it's a good. And this is what I'm saying. This, this is what I'm saying. You, you so didn't wait, get wait. If that. it's a good deed, it's justified. That, no, it's a good deed, it's the really deed justified. is justified, but you are not. Do you get? You, it? Wait, you are justified for engaging in the deed. Oh my. God. No, you're not. <laughs> Dude, no, you're what? the one misunderstanding dude, this. I dude, listen to me, listen to me. What if... Yeah, yo, 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 your, your mic is so loud, bro. My bad. Show the... Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, because it's, it's like extraordinarily... No, I'm, just getting, I'm just getting, I'm getting excited because I... I love this conversation. But yeah, I, I know, but like, bro, okay. dude. No, it is it is wild, bro. I promise let me you... Ask you... No, 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 let, let me ask you a question. I'm not, let me ask you just a quick question, okay? A rapist for... You have to say R word or essay. R word or essay. TikTok to us. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. 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 So a R word, an R word guy. Okay. Um, been on the run for 30 years. Okay. Um, and decided to change his life around. Um, and then basically there is um, he he goes on for three years to. To um, save save people from being the R word and, and stuff like that, is he justified? He's justified for stopping the other people doing it, but he's not justified for the actions that he engaged in. That's a contradictory statement. That's an oxymoron. That's not. No, no, no. I'm talking about the it actions is. that. He, no, it's not because you're talking about two separate actions. You're talking about one an action stopping a P3D right. from graping a child, and then the other one is perpetrating that action. Right? So, so you're stopping saying that action, wait, stop, stop talking. I'm sorry, stopping, I'm sorry, sorry. Stopping that action from happening is absolutely justified. Perpetrating that action is not justified. Okay, so you're saying justification is, is a spectrum. What? Are you saying justification is a spectrum? Like you can be justified one day and then not be justified another day? In order no, to not for the other. exact same act. These are completely different actions. One action okay. 
is completely different from the other. Therefore, it's not an oxymoron because you're not referencing in the same sense of the terms. So therefore, you're saying the same thing I'm saying. I said the deed is justified. You are not. Yes, you engaging in the deed is justified, right? You yourself are not justified for other types of actions just because you're justified with that action. Okay. If you were to be a pope for all your life and then one day you make a decision to uh, R word a little boy, is that pope justified? No, they're not justified for engaging in that action. What? Okay, here's, here's what I'm trying to, here's the, here's the thing I'm trying to tell you, sir. People are not justified because we are inherently bad. Like okay, people you're, you're, are you're just, literally. You're, you're using the you're using the term justification differently than I am. Let me just I'm ask not. the question differently, right? Do you think it is good to stop a P3DO from getting graped by a child? Yes, it or is. Oh no, good. not wait, no, not getting graped. Graping, sorry. No, no, I do not think it's good. Oh, you do not think it's good to stop that? Uh, no, I think it's good to stop that. I do think it is good to stop that. The deed is good. Yes. Oh, okay. Clearly, right. That's what I was asking. Okay, but what I'm saying is, you are you justified? It's not about the deed. The deed is. I don't is even simple. know what you mean by that. Okay, here's what I mean, okay? Let's say that you stopped it for 30 years, but you're only one person. It could happen all over the world. There's millions and millions of hungry babies dying every day just from hunger and suffering and all these things. And you go over to Africa and you yeah, say, your God permits one child. That. No, my God doesn't permit that. Yeah, your God let it, lets it happen. We let it happen. No, your God lets it happen. No, we let it happen. I don't have if the you ability. Read, wait, wait, humble. Parker, I don't have the ability to stop that. God can. You do. God can, yourself. Speak, God can speak it out of existence. I can't do that. If I could speak you, it out of existence, I would hold myself accountable for not stopping that. Okay, Parker, you're missing the point. I think you're not understanding the scale of what God is talking about. God is talking to 7 billion people on the earth. He's talking to every. This is this message. Okay, whatever. This metric that I'm telling you right now is for every 8 billion per person on, on this planet. He's asking this same question. Will you stop? Will you not do the things? Will you just honor what I'm telling you to do in the first place? Be perfect. Why can't you be perfect? If you were Give to be good perfect, reason. Please. Humble. I will do the, the right thing in every single circumstance if I was given good reason. Every single time. Every Give single me time. good reason. <laughs> you... It's for the things you're trying to blame God for. That's why. <laughs> Dude, what are you talking about, right? I, I'm, okay, I'm talking about, hold up. I, what I'm talking okay. about is the fact that there literally is children that are dying of cancer. There's children yes. that are dying of natural disaster. There are children yes. that are dying of many types of illnesses in which are genetic, mm -hmm. not determined by human beings interacting with each other, right? That is independent of free will. Okay. There's actually a new study. There's actually a new study that's being. Um, um, there's actually a new study about cancer not being genetic. What have you, you ever have you seen that? Some, have some you seen cancer, that? Some cancer is not genetic. Other cancers are genetic. Okay. So therefore, who is to say that cancer is not in their genes or not genetic because of um, all of the bad that's in the world? All of the bad choices that I'm sorry, not not the bad in the world. I'm sorry. All the bad choices that people make. I'm confused. What you're asking, right? Okay. I'm, I, what I'm saying is that who is to say that the bad things that are in the world are not happening because of the bad choices that people make? Many things that happen bad in the world are because of choices that people make. I'm saying this happening, right, is not because of a choice that someone made. This is because okay. of genetics, okay? Genetics are true independent of what we, we, we want to happen or independent of our wills. How far do you, um, can you see genetics? Do you know everything about genetics? I don't know every single little thing about genetics. Okay. So therefore, you cannot talk to me in authority telling me that genetics is the reason why you're using faith. Because you don't know everything about genetics. You don't know why no, it's there or we have if there's another evidence. variable that's causing that to happen. Okay, you have evidence that it's there in the genetics, but you don't know why it's there. This is, this is fucking wild. 
right? This is like saying because I, someone doesn't know how to do fucking differential equations within fucking mathematics that for some reason they're not going to be able to do one plus one. Right? No, I'm ridiculous. saying I'm saying you're not going to know why one plus one equals two. That's what I'm saying. You don't know well, why. What do you mean? I do. One know. plus one equals. I do. You don't. I literally do. No, yes, you I literally do. just observe it and you just can say that means one that plus I know. Dude, that means that I know, dude. What are you talking yeah. about? I, okay, okay. I said, I said, okay. Listen, I didn't say you don't know that one plus one equals two. I said you don't know why. One yeah, plus one I do know two. why. I do know why, why does one plus one equal two? What in what reality says that one plus one has to equal two? The reality we live in, we observe to be the case. Okay, exactly. Case. We observed it, it. Yes, and that is reality. We observe reality, objective reality. Okay, it is the case that there are two independent chopsticks here. This and this equals this. That's all it's saying. That is, it's a, logic. That is it's an a, observable it's a, it's a phenomenon, logic. sir. It's observable and it's a logical proof. Okay, that doesn't tell me why that's true. It does. What are you talking about? Us what do you mean? Like, when, okay, do you know why? Do you know why? Hold up, stop, stop. When I I'm show sorry. you this chopstick, right, mm -hmm. do you now know that this exists? Yes, I do. You know, okay. What do you fucking mean? You just observed it. You So you know based upon observation. I know that it exists, but I don't know why it exists. The same, same, same thing wait, of how the mean, Big wait, Bang. Wait, wait, wait. Well, Go ahead. Let me ask, what do you mean by you don't know why it exists? Okay, th this is what I'm saying. I can see that it exists, but I don't know why it exists. What do you mean by that? Why does it exist? Why does it exist? For what reason are those particles in that way that you were able to hold your hand up? As a matter of fact, why are your hands not slipping through? According to, uh, you know, we are like what? The, the atoms are like what 99 percent empty space why are we able to just not how, how are we not able to just slip through and, because we, and, we know, observe that physical things cannot go through each other within this capacity that is what we exactly observe. We, we observed it we observed yes, it but yes, you, you don't yes, but you don't know. know you know that it's there but you don't know why it's there that's the that's Wait, what so i'm we, telling no, you no 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 if we do know why we, we know why because we have the explanation as to why this does not go through this What's the explanation? Physical things cannot go through other physical things. <laughs> why? That is that is what we observe. Okay. Why can't physical things go that. through physical things? Why? We observe that. So the reason why physical things cannot go through physical things is because we as people observed it? Yes. Yes. We observe that in every circumstance. Okay. Yeah, like I said, your 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 logic is going in circles. It's your logic enough. your logic goes in circles. You actually don't know why, and I, and I'm gonna get you out of the hot seat right now. I'm gonna get get you out of the humble. You know, you don't have, so you, so you don't have to defend yourself. Humble. I just explained it to you. I literally just you did it. To you. That doesn't make I sense. Did. You're telling me that one plus one equals two because two plus one <laughs> because because one plus one equals two. Like that's that doesn't make sense. If you're no, saying I'm not saying because one plus one equals two, I'm saying it's because we observe this phenomenon to be true. Right, and then the one and the two, the numbers that we apply to that are a reference, uh, are concepts that we apply on top of what we observe in reality. So you're trying to tell me to explain what we observe. So, so are you trying to tell me that because we observed it as humans, right? Like, let's say if there was a dog or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Would one plus one equal two for that dog as well? No, one plus one equaling two is going to be true independent of our stances. We observed okay. that, we discovered that, but we did not determine it to be true. Okay. So a dog cannot pass through a wall and a dog knows that. That's why a dog is not going to try to go through a wall uh, uh, instinctively. Some do. Thank you for the dinosaur. I appreciate it. Thank you so some much. Some do because of, some do because of the uh, confusion. There's, there's, there's confusion of, th of them thinking that they can go through the through the wall, but once they learn through pain, they they now know that it's, they're not able to go through a wall. The question is, why can't they? Why? Is it because we observed it, or is it just simply because? Yeah, like we, what? We, like we, tell we, me. We know why one doesn't go through the other because of observation, because we observe that within reality. That is why. 
I'm not talking, by the way, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about walls, people. I'm talking about a phenomenon here that, that this Humble, guy tell cannot, me what I just um, said. Qu- tell, me, tell me what I just said, Humble. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was, I wasn't, I was uh, reading the comments. I'm so sorry. You weren't listening. Uh, can you, you repeat, can you repeat what you're saying? I was listening this whole time. Stop. Just repeat what you're saying. I was listening this whole time and I was responding. Go ahead. Okay. So we know that that is why it is the way it is because we observe that to be the case. The same way that we know that vaccines work because we observe it to be the case. Do you know why quantum mechanics exist? Do I, what do you mean why? Do you know why quantum mechanics, why it was invented, why that science was invented? Do you know why? To explain the world. Exactly, do you know what it was trying to explain? Um, the world. The, okay, it's them. not. It's not. It is explaining the questions that I'm asking you right now. Okay, why can't we just teleport over here? If if there if we observe that within like an electron can can basically just um 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 quantum tunnel into like another area, right? Why can't we just simultaneously or just not simultaneously? Why can't we just 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 teleport? Why 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 is that not possible? Why is it that we cannot? go through a wall like like and and not and not um you know and like kind of just phase why don't we have superpowers and why don't we have all these things so 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 how we justify one explanation over the other is by saying this explanation would predict this to happen in reality do we see that to happen in reality and if we do see it to be happen in reality it can be credence towards the idea that this particular explanation is correct that's what i'm telling you Okay, that's, that's what knowledge but, is relating to. But do you do you realize? Okay, but do you realize that science? Okay, if you ever do a history on science, the reason why science was created was just to basically explain the things that are already here that that we are observing. So the bottom line is, if we are trying to do science so we can figure out why these things exist, like gravity, why can we just fall to the ground because of Gravity. We now have a theory of gravity. Okay, explaining what exactly it is, how it works, all these things. Okay, and and it goes into why one plus one equals two. Some people are trying to say one plus one equals five, but that's obviously not true. But the bottom. Here's the thing. Here's here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. The same questions that I'm asking you about consciousness, why we can't phase through a. a Wait, you a, said a, you said theory of gravity, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, and you also said earlier in the conversation that gravity is a fact, right? So gravity is both gravity a theory a and fact. a fact. No, gravity is not a theory and a fact. There's a theory <laughs> about gravity. You're not listening, Parker. You're not listening, Parker. There is a theory about gravity, but gravity itself is a fact. It's an observable phenomenon. It's a fact. It's, it's happening right now. We're trying to explain why that is happening. That's the theory of gravity. <laughs> so gravity. See, this is what I'm saying. On, you don't. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Stop. Gravity. Stop it. Gravity is both a theory and a fact. That's what you just it's, fucking told oh, me. That's literally what oh you just God. told me. Okay? No, I did it. I did it. Yes, I said there's an ex- the explanation itself is the theory. <laughs> But, but the understand. phenomenon, and gr- but the phenomenon that we are trying to explain is the fact. That, no, do it, you not it understand? Is a, it, it is a fact that the explanation is true. Do you agree? Uh, no. Well, okay. So, so you 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 think that it's not a fact that the theory that of gravity the theory is, true. is true? Yes. No, I don't. I think that gravity is a, is real. But, but the theory of, of gravity and how it works and all of these, that's what, what the theory is. What the fuck do you mean then? Because the, that's literally, if you, about, Google, no, if you go to no, Google, if you go to Google, no, 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 no. There is nothing about gravity outside of the context of the explanation. Gravity is inherently an explanation. Okay, you can apply gravity to reality, but in itself, it's it's inherently an explanation. Okay, so you can't shoot. This is just I can't do it, bro. And also, dude, like the, the background noise on this guy's mic is unbelievable, chat. It sounds so quiet right now. <laughs> I've been muted. Anyway, <laughs> all right, cool. I'm sorry. Let me control myself. What did I just say, humble? You said that the theory of gravity is both fact and theory. That's what you said. 
And what did I? What? No, that's not what I said. I said, I said, gravity in of itself is inherently an explanation. Bro, it's like it's like this guy never like listens. Parker, you're actually wrong though. Like, if you ever talk to a scientist, uh, a sci any scientist about gravity or anything like that, they are going yeah, to let's, tell let's, you that let's gravity ask a physicist. is a. Let's ask a physicist. Blitz. I'm telling you. I'm let's telling you right Blitz. now. Blitz would, you know what I'm, Blitz would say? Blitz would say, uh, evolution is both a fact and a theory. Right? That's what actual physicists are going to say. Right? Okay, I'm not talking that's, about that's evolution. Actual I'm, talking about, I'm talking about gravity. Yeah, gravity is an observable, an observable yeah, he would say phenomenon. It's a fact and a theory. Yeah, he would say that gravity is a fact and a theory. I'm not talking about what he would say. I'm talking about. I'm he's talking a physicist. About literally. You, said, you said if we look at physicists, right? And I'm giving you a physicist. Okay, you're like I said. You're taking what I'm saying out of context. There's a reason why I said that. The reason why I'm saying ask a physicist is because they will tell you that gravity is an observable phenomenon. And it's a fact, and it's a theory. By the way, evolution is not. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, it, uh, evolution moving is moving on. Moving on. So evolution gravity is. It's not. But gr it literally gravity, is. You're literally lying. Evolution is not an observable phenomenon. You can't observe evolution. Is. You we can. Have. <laughs> we, literally we literally this have. We literally have. We we've observed yeah. speciation Show amongst me. finches, amongst fruit flies. We we've observed adaptations. We've observed mutations. We I is have a, a mutation. A fly. What is a fruit fly? A fruit fly. Yes. Okay, uh, it don't matter what different species of fruit flies there are. The bottom line is, if a fruit fly goes and mates with another fruit fly, they will pro they will produce other variations of fruit flies. Yeah, it's different still a fruit species. Fly. That's speciation. That is evolution. Okay, um, if you're talking about if you're talking about evolution in that way, that's called adaptation. That's not called evolution. Adaptation is a part of evolution. Uh, no, they made it a part of evolution, but adaptation is adaptation. Thank you, Emily. I appreciate the script. That's the only so that's the it. only sort of evolution that exists. But any other type Mutations. of evolution Mutations. where we turn where we go from microbes into fish and then go into like that Dude, there is no such thing as that. We've mutations. never observed that. Mutations. We yeah, mutations though. That's just over a long period of time. If you agree with microevolution, you agree with macroevolution. If humans mate with fish, with can you create a variation of can you, can you, that, that is, and by the way, um, evolution, evolution is, um, like, I, I get that there are different, um, trees of, 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 of different species and stuff like that. Um, what I don't agree with is that there is a microbe of human where it basically evolved over a long time and basically changed into like a swimming creature. And then basically got out and turned into like a, a monkey type animal, and then changed into like a human being that we are today. I don't bro, believe bro, bro that. thinks evolution that's not what is, evolution is, dude. Dude, yeah, it, that is clearly not what evolution is. Sorry, I have to do that because I literally can't think. Right? You think evolution is like fucking Pokemon, bro? You think Chimchar is gonna fucking evolve into Monferno when he hits level fifteen, and when he hits level thirty six, bro turns into Infernape? Right, that's what you think is going to happen in reality. That's not how evolution works, bro. You just have a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. Like, bro, we don't live in Pokemon. You're, you're not Ash Ketchum, bro. I, Einstein, Einstein once said that if you can't explain things that a, um, so that a kid can explain it or can get uh, the explanation, then you do not understand the subject enough. So you explain to me evolution in the most simplest way that you can. Because clearly I don't get it. Like, tell me. You tell me. Evolution is going to refer to adaptations, mutations, right, and natural selection, right? Natural selection, right, is guided by the adaptations and the mutations. So different changes over time through adaptations and mutations then cause speciation, changes in species, in which we see so many different changes in which we have different produced species over time. That's the whole idea of evolution. If you don't understand okay. that, I don't know what to tell you. We observe that to be the case. It's clear within the okay. fossil record. There's very clear evidence that evolution is a fact of reality, okay. okay? This is not just something someone whipped out of their ass that just decided to whole fucking think about one day. This is something that we have evidence that is proven to be the case. Okay, Parker. Um, do you know what I'm debating right now? 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Because if you're yeah. talking about adaptation and mutations and all of these things, then you're not understanding what I'm trying to debate. Because I'm not disagreeing with you about adaptation. Okay, you call it evolution. I call it adaptation. Because because that's what it's been called. And then some schmuck uh, came along and called it evolution. But the bottom line is, um, if you're trying to tell me that that is what evolution is, then I totally agree with you. But that's not what I'm arguing right now. Let's go, W's. All right, you agree. You, you believe in evolution, W's. W, W's in the chat, everyone. Yeah, but that's the, but that's not that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is how can we go from microbes to where we are right now? Macro evolution. That's what I'm talking about. Just the micro with time, right? So okay, there we go. Adaptations are mutations in response to the there environment. Okay, so again, those particular changes over time add up, and that's what causes this. It's just time. Okay. It's we've really never micro evolution we've, plus time. That's it. We've never. We have never ever observed macro evolution ever Ma macro evolution is simply micro plus time okay what i'm so saying you believe is... in micro evolution and you believe in time you believe in macro evolution no that's not true no, you literally that's not true it is it is that's literally... not true stop, i stop, just stop. believe in i just believe in micro evolution because it's just yeah do you believe adaptation. in time do you believe in time Yes, I do. Then you believe in macro because macro no, is simply a makeup of microevolution plus uh, plus time. That's, that's do you realize that's is. a theory? Do you realize that's a theory? Do you here's, realize here's that you believe? You. Do you realize here, that here's you the kicker for you? Here's you the kick. Here's believe the believe kicker. I don't. I don't. I I believe in the observable phenomenon. You believe I, in the theory, Parker. I don't. I believe in mac microevolution. I, I mean, yeah, I'm just hearing coping because that's macroevolution because micro is just macro. Or, I mean, macro is just micro plus time, bro. Like that's that's what it no, is. That's, right? that's what that's what reality. that's what your teacher has told you. But what I'm saying is that no, that's what the facts are, bro. That's not what the facts are, my guy. They, you've they, never they, witnessed they how are. you've never witnessed time converting micro evolutions into a macro evolution as you're seeing today. You you've never witnessed that. We have we as a human species has as a humankind has never witnessed that. What do you consider ever. macro? What do you do? You consider speciation macroevolution? A monkey turning into a, a human being. That's what I consider. Ma Mon monkeys, monkeys didn't turn into human beings. Monkeys are like essentially our common ancestors. I mean, like uh, like they have the same common ancestor as we do, right? They're essentially our cousins. Okay, so you're like, okay. oh, why 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 do my cousins exist if I exist? Can I ask you this? What's the point of adaptation? Uh, the res the responses to environment to increase the likelihood of survival. There we go. Okay, so therefore there would have to be a um, outside stimulation that would cause or activate that side of uh, adaptation. Environment. Okay. So it's right, mutations. Cool. It's mutations in response to environment, right? And it's selected okay. that way, right? Based upon can what's likely to survive. Okay. Can you tell me? Can you tell me a macro evolution today? Uh, an example of a macro evolution today, and and how they are related. Yeah, so speciation. I've already given you example, given you examples of speciation, whether it be fruit flies, we can relate to finches, we can relate to many that's different not, types that's of. That's micro, sir. That's micro. That is that's, that is that's macro. Not macro. Speciation no, that's is macro. macro. No. Well, then what do, you, what do you 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 consider macro then? A a monkey turning into or a microbe turning into a human being. That yeah. A that's, fish. Yeah, we have a, that. A, a a swimming being. Okay, a whale. Matter of fact, I'll say it like this: a whale type creature turning into a land animal or a land animal turning into a whale type creature oh wait we actually have fossil records of that so we have fossil we record yeah we do we do no we do. I, it's I been proven wrong no humble, it's humble. Been wrong. it has not it has not if you look yes. at the, can i can i please explain okay okay so we literally do i can send you a source that we literally have every single uh every single one from from the land animal all the way to a whale because a whale was originally a land animal that's why it has legs Okay, where? So, those are mean? not legs, sir. Those are That's a pelvic. But those are pelvic bones to they're help with. To, those are pe don't, no. They're not legs. They are pelvic bones to help with uh pregnancy. To help wait, to wait, help. Dude, I'll, uh, I'll with, really show you, dude. I'll show you. No, I, I already seen it. I've already seen it, sir. 
Those are bones so that the muscles can attach to something so that it can open itself up more easily and allow for the baby to come out. That's what that is. It's not, those are not legs. It's been proven wrong. What are you talking about, bro? Like literally, that has been there. proven wrong. Those are not legs. That's those are not leg bones. What are you talking about? How do you determine that? Because again, from what I've seen in terms of like, I can send you the particular source. All right, this is you can do the this isn't humble. This isn't me classifying it as that. These are veg vegetational or, or, or I, veg. I don't know how to say the word. They're limbs, mm -hmm. right? They absolutely are I, limbs. Sir, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now that it's been proven wrong. You can you can literally look yeah, this so, up. So, this is this is yeah, this is being, oh, this is research that has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Okay. So can you send me that research? Because I have research I can send okay. you, particularly right now, that shows you that these are particular limbs, right? Yeah, like, bro. Vest. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Is it <laughs> vestigial? <laughs> like, I don't. I I'm like so bad at pronouncing things sometimes. Matt, Matt, do you have that one link of the whale thing again? I'm pretty sure Matt's in here and Matt is in here. Uh, in the meantime, everyone tap that screen. Let's try to get to a million likes. If you like this type of content, follow me if you haven't already. I go live literally every single day for six plus hours, everyone. We've been on for almost five hours. I'm going to stay on for a while today, everyone. I kind of like, I'm having a good day today, of course. Um, Matt's sending it to me right now. Um, this, yeah, that's just too much work, you know, in the brain. It's too much work. Matt, if you want to come up and you want to explain this, you can do that as well, man. If you want to come up, Matt, you can. Uh, but yeah, tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to a million likes. You already know the deal. I appreciate everyone so much. Uh, let me see if Matt sent the request. He did. We'll let Matt explain, explain. What's up, Matt? Hey, how you doing? Doing good, bro. Good. Good to hear. Uh, well, if he can hear me, I, okay, he's looking for it. I already found it. I mean, it, it's so predictable. I already found it about the uh, leg bone. Okay, humble, humble. Mute yes, yourself, bro. You have so much background noise, I cannot hear myself. So you, you, you have to mute yourself. Thank you. Okay, I will tell you when I'm done talking, and then, and then I will mute myself. But, like, I literally can't help myself. Oh, I can't think. So you are referring to research done at the um, Natural History Museum in LA, which examined how the vestigial hind legs of whales impacted whether or not they, uh, it helps improve the muscle function relating to pregnancy. Vestigial does not mean useless, okay? Vestigial means that it had a prior function that has now become mostly useless, but not completely useless. For example, our appendix is a vestigial organ, but it still has a function to it. It's just that the, the, uh, the function with which it evolved has now no, uh, now no longer does what it was supposed to do, so now it has a lesser function. That's what a vestigial organ or a, a vestigial um, limb is, right? Okay? Whales have vestigial hind legs. Why do they have this? Because they are ancestors of land-dwelling creatures. We have fossil records that trace the lineage. Combine that with the fact that we now know that with as with most vestigial uh, uh, type of organs and limbs, they are not completely useless. They are repurposed into helping the organism survive. In this case, the hind legs have been repurposed into helping with pregnancy, but that's not what they were originally functioned to do. Their, the, the actual function was legs, but they have been repurposed. Now I'm done talking. Okay. Um, so, let me see. What should Okay, rocking. So, uh, or librarian. That's what I'm calling you. So, librarian. Uh, do you realize that that is a faith statement? No, you, you, no, it is not a faith to, statement. You, I thought you said you're going to put yourself in mute, sir. Okay. I'm trying to. T I'm trying to talk, and you said you were going to, you know. Okay, thank you. So, um, here's the thing. You told me that. Um, that this is a, um, it, it was a, a vestigial, um, I don't know what word you, what word you use, 
but basically it evolved into a new purpose okay it, um, and that's that's the theory behind uh, behind these uh, bones in the hind section of the whale but <laughs> what if I was to tell you that um, basically the whole point of those pelvic uh, bones area it, it was was just was just for um, um, pregnancy. You cannot say that it was for uh, to help with pregnancy because there will be no other way for it to um, have a baby without those bones. How can a leg bone tr uh, transfer or um, 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 evolve into a pelvic bone? See, this is this is the thing that I'm talking about. Is it's just it's like you guys literally are putting your faith into something that just like Christians do, just like every other religions do, except you're just putting it into the idea or the theories that you guys come up with, this logic, right? But the bottom line is, like, you're telling me that it's, it's, um, it's, it's evolved into legs, but you cannot prove it. You have never witnessed it. You've never seen it happen. Okay, I'm going to respond now. Hold on, I'm going to respond now because you made about... Okay, I'm going to keep... I'm going to mute myself. Okay, I'm going to respond now. So you clearly have not heard the term comparative anatomy. That's what's being done here, comparative anatomy. They are comparing the genetic fossil record, meaning fossils, they, 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 uh, they uh, genetically uh, sequence them, they determine the uh, relationship between the fossils, and then they compare the anatomy and the changes that happen with that anatomy over time. That's how we can determine why certain animals, for example, gray apes and humans, have similar anatomy because we compare the anatomy. So what I'm doing here, or, or not me, this is what biologists and evolutionary biologists do, they compare the anatomy between the fossils with that of modern whales, they see what changes there were across a uh, geologic time based on the fossils, add in the uh, genetic evidence showing a clear progression in the uh, genetic chain, and then that's your evidence of the progression from the first um, land animal, that's the uh, common ancestor of the whale, which is called um, Indohinus, that's its name, that progressed into another fossil based on genetic and comparative anatomy evidence into a, a pachycetus, which, which then went on to another type of animal called a um, ambulocetus. And it, it, you get the point, right? Can I, can I, yeah, can I, can I respond? I just want to respond. Sure. Okay, uh, sir, I, I, I understand what you're saying about uh, the comparative anatomy. I get it. I understand. But... Do you understand that that all that takes is just simple comparison? Are you literally literally you can compare anything to anything. You can compare a worm to to human beings, right? And like we do, and we do. Saying, okay, and we do, so and we find out that worms are genetically related to human beings because we all share a common ancestor. That's one of the main evidence of macroevolution. It's that all living creatures, every single one, from the tiniest microbe to modern humans to elephants, share the same genetic line. Every single thing that exists on this earth, whether plant, animal, fungi, shares the exact same genetic line. We we share it most commonly with the great ape. 99.5% of our DNA is exactly the same with bonobos and chimps. As you go down the evolutionary line, that genetic similarity decreases. I understand. Uh, here's, okay, library, I'm going to explain this to you, and um, I want you to mute yourself. I can guarantee you're probably going to go off on this. Uh, but I'm going to uh, make this statement. So, um, here's the thing about that I love about God, right? God is a very smart, he's very wise in his creations and stuff like that, right? So the whole point of creation is just so that we can multiply and inhabit the earth, right? So what I'm saying is if you look at every other species, if you look at every species, right? Um, every species is able to uh, co-create with each other and then create another another type of uh, uh, baby and is able to create the same thing. That's how uh, panthers, a black panther was created, right? So what I'm saying is that can you tell me that since we are related with worms, you can put one of our sperms in inside of a worm and they will create a baby or something like that? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, that's a straw man. I never said that. I never okay, said so, that. 
Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You are. I'm not you arguing against it. No, no. You are literally claiming something that I never said. I never said anything about sexual. I, I'm asking you a question. I didn't claim anything. I asked you a question. You just, you just made a claim that I said that I'm saying that a worm could sexually reproduce with a human, and I'm. I didn't say that. I asked you a question. No, that is that is biologically impossible. Mainly okay, thank you. Because worms have different reproduction than humans do. Okay, cool. So what I'm saying is that if you're trying to tell me, it, like you can, the whole point that I'm trying to make here is that you can literally compare anything to anything. But the bottom line is, it still is going to take a, a a little bit of faith in there in order for you to even believe that. You have to make that jump to say, "Oh, is this quite possible?" And then you, in order to say this is possible, you would literally have to make a jump, a leap of faith in order to even say that. No, you no. Can't, you what don't have. Faith? What is faith? Okay. Faith is literally the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things don't, not seen. Don't, it is, don't give me the quote from Hebrews. I, sir, you I'm going to explain this to you. Can you that, be quiet? That, no, I'm not. I'm going to explain quiet. this to no, you. Can I'm you be quiet? be quiet? No, I'm not going to be quiet because you gave me a biblical quote. That is a Christian interpretation of faith. I uh, want the common English language definition of faith. Don't give me. I'm going to explain it to you, sir. Can you be quiet? The re there's a reason why I brought up the scripture. I'm not. I'm not bringing it up just because, sir. I'm going to. I'm. I'm simultaneously proving the Bible to be right, and then also I'm going to prove you wrong. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing, sir. You're doing so, no such thing. Just to let you know, this is the reason why. This is the reason why, because I already knew you were going to get all routed up. So that's why I told you to go on mute. I'm routed I already up knew because this. you cite. Oh, no, <laughs> we're not even talking about the Bible right now. I asked you a very, a very simple question: What is faith? And what is I'm faith? And I'm telling, and I'm trying to answer your question. I'm trying to answer your question, but you keep getting routed up, sir. If you let me answer your question, I'll be able to answer it. Don't give me a paragraph. Just tell me in a sentence what faith is. I'm telling you what it is. No, <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Quote. Don't give me a Bible quote. Give me the. I'm giving you. A, I'm giving you a Bible quote, and I'm going to explain what that Bible quote want, means. I don't want explanation of Hebrews. Give then that me means that you don't want. Did, did you ask me what it means? Can no, I give you my answer? Yes or no? Is, I ask you, what is Can I give you my answer? Yes or no, library? No, you're giving me a theological explanation. I want library. the common English definition. Library. I, I, I'm trying to give you an explanation of what that means because I know you don't know what that means. So, so what, it's what, like what that's that's that that's my definition. Okay, thank you. Okay, the the uh, thing. But you don't know that. But 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 I'm trying to explain to you what it is. Like, I, the, it, it, it's so perfect. It's, it it explains. Of Hebrews. You're giving me your interpretation of it. No, I'm going to explain to you from that, from that, instead of, instead of arguing with me about, oh, I don't want to hear the Bible. Why, why can't you just listen to what I'm saying and just see what I'm saying? Because you're you don't know what I'm saying. Multiple paragraphs when all you have to tell me what faith is. Is it trust? Is it belief? I'm trying faith, to tell is it, you. Is it belief without evidence? Instead, you're going to give me a theological paragraph based on your interpretation of Hebrews. No, I was going to give you a simple definition off of that. Fine. But I, Thank you. I swear, if you go down a uh, rabbit hole of like a freaking long paragraph of a uh, uh, of the book of Hebrews, I'm going to interrupt you. So simply state your case, and then we can. Uh, okay, but can you let me now? Thank you. All right. So, faith is the set. Uh, uh, is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. What that means is that it is trust with the work of trust. Meaning you can't say I trust something or I love like it's basically kind of like um, love if, if I was to use this. You can't say that you love someone without first putting in the work of love. Just to see, just like faith it's, 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 it's not trust. It is the work of trust itself. You can't you, like it, it like it's, it's, it's the thing that you do to, to prove that you trust uh, someone. That's what faith is. Okay, I have not put any of that kind of faith into science. Zero what you said is my, so 
exactly what I knew you were but going you to did. say. No, that, that's a theologically based idea of faith. Faith in no, the common that... English language is belief in something without evidence. You gave me a theological evidence. That's theological not what faith language. is. Yes, you it's gave me. I is. am not trusting in. Hold on, I am not putting trust in something because I want to believe in it. I am not having faith in love or anything of any of the words that you mentioned. I have nothing within the a theory of evolution. Nothing. Well, well, sir, if 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 you are not going to put in the work, like basically, like you know, uh, proving it to be right. Um, you know, um, 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 doing the thing that, that, that is uh, calling you to do. Like, let's say you believe in a dragon, right? You would go on a search for that dragon. That's what faith is. So what I'm saying is what you did was in order to prove that evolution was true in your mind or in their minds, right? They literally said, huh, there has to be another explanation outside of God, right? Because the Christianity faith back then, they, you know, they were too mean to us. They were too this, this, and that. So there has to be, because Christianity and religion is evil. So therefore, in order to preserve goodness in the world, science has to save the world, right? So therefore, what I'm saying is that what scientists did was in order to prove religion to be false because religion at that time was evil. So they went and they tried to prove it and they did the work of faith to prove what um, what evolution was about. So what I'm saying is they had a whole, they, they invented things like comparative anatomy and uh, evolution for adaption and, and, micro, and, and uh, macro evolution and all these things. But the bottom line is, it's like you, there is no proof of these things. You have fossils of these things, but you don't know what these fossils really are. You can hold tell on, yes, me we what do. they are. No, no, okay, you don't, though. That's the last thing I'm going to say. That's the last thing I'm going to say. So I, I want you to mute yourself. So I'm, and then I'm going to exit. I'm going to let Parker take back his life from me. Right, so cool. here's what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. We do know these things. You are claiming that we do not know anything about these fossils. We have I'll hold me Okay. We have hundreds of years of thousands of scientists that have spent their life examining this stuff most of these scientists who discovered evolution most of the scientists who uh, who uh, crafted gravity and everything they were themselves christians they were themselves believers in god newton believed in in god einstein had a pantheistic idea of god darwin started out as a christian they did not go in with a faith to try to disprove anything they let the evidence guide them and that's when, how they crafted their theories these scientists that that I am mentioning that have uh, spent their lives examining the evolution of whales, for example, have let the evidence guide them. If there was any evidence that that whales were not descended from a land animal, they would put it in because they have no uh, they they have no commitment to it. There's nothing committing them to the belief, right? If evolution was disproved tomorrow, I would cease to believe it. Why? Because I do not have a commitment to evolution. I accept it because all of the evidence points in one direction, and therefore I. I am compelled by reason, my reason to accept it. But like with most things in my life, I am willing to change my opinion if the ever if the evidence changes along with it. And so far, over 200 years or so, we have not seen any change, which is why my opinion has not changed. And so you give me definitive proof that evolution is false, publish it in a peer-reviewed journal, become the next Charles Darwin, then yes, I will cease to accept evolution. Uh, thank you, Parker. I'm going to leave. Uh, uh, bye, everybody. Appreciate it, Matt. W, Matt. Appreciate it, man. All right, humble. Thank you for the hand. Okay, so, it. yeah, so um, you said you're going to end? Oh, no, I got time. I'm, I'm going to be oh, on okay, okay, for a okay. while. All right, cool, cool. All right, so um, um, just to refute what he was saying, um, just about the simple fact of like how if evolution was to be disproven, the fact is evolution can't be disproven because it is a theory or in other words, a faith. It's a belief system. OK, you would literally Wait, have to prove No, it's a, just like I said, the definition of a theory is an explanation of the fact. You, it's an interpretation. Let me say it like this. It's an interpretation of the fact. That's what a theory is. So what I'm saying is it's 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 there no, no, are no, no, facts. No, there no, are no, actual no, humble. Okay. Let me explain. So there, there are facts that happen within reality. There are descriptive things like like a ball drops. OK, and then there are yes. explanations as to why these things drop. 
Okay. That's a theory. So if yeah. you believe that gravity applies to the thing that drops, you're saying the theory applies to it. Okay, the theory is a fact because it is proven to be true, right? Along with the idea that that happening in reality is also proven to be true. That does happen in reality. Okay, so, and um, by the way, you guys, uh, I'm going to go, every time he speaks, I'm going to go on mute. So, because uh, I know it's, it's kind of loud where I'm at. So, um, <clears throat> um, the bottom line of what I'm saying is that um, gravity itself, the phenomenon, is is not a, it's not a, um, is, is a fact, right? It's not, a, it is not a theory. The explanation of the, th of the theory or of the phenomenon is a theory. So what I'm saying is, I'm, here's the thing about gravity, right? I'm willing to update my knowledge on what gravity really is because we, I don't believe we have all the variables on what gravity really is. I don't even believe we have the variable of what quantifies actual gravity, right? Because it's like, like what's the, what's the, just like we know the Bokes, Bokes, Hicks, um, the um, Hicks, Hicks boson, the, um, you know, all of these quarks and uh, all of these things, right? Where does gravity actually come from? Like, where is it? So I, as of right now, I'm willing to believe in this theory of gravity, but nonetheless, it is still a theory. I don't know if it's a this, fact. This is like, this I is like do saying, know that this phenomenon is a fact. I know that if I was to jump off the building, right, I would crack my head open and I would be no more, like, or I'll be really badly hurt. I know that for a fact. So it's so uh, the bottom line is like because the theory are, is a fact. No, a th no. You so, know that that particular explanation is going to uh, undergo because you know that that's the not theory a theory a though. <laughs> that's not a theory. That's a fact. That is a theory. No, the reason why that would happen is a theory. But the fact that they would happen is a fact. No, the reason why it would I'm happen. I'm sorry, you don't understand this. This is both like, of them are facts, right? No, both facts. no, no. The 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 interpretation of the phenomenon is a theory. That's what the explanation the, is a theory and a fact, right? You know and why people say in reality, show me the facts, and what also happens in reality is also a fact. Okay. You want to know why people say, show me the facts, right? When, because it's like after a while, people get sick and tired, just like with Christianity, right? People get people are getting sick and tired of these pastors telling them what Christianity is and all this stuff. All these things are theories, right? But the Bible, if you actually go to the Bible, that's an actual fact, right? So the bottom, no, evolution is, a, evolution is actually a theory. You can literally look this up. But... Um, I'm not disputing you, the idea that evolution is a theory. What I'm saying is it's a theory and a fact. You're just you're talking past me. I don't care to talk about this anymore. It's just sir, you're literally not uh, engaging with the A theory can't. No, a theory can't. I'm telling you, Parker, it can't be a fact. It can't be. It's not possible for a theory to be a fact because it's an explanation of the facts. It's about the facts, but it's not a fact in itself. Thank you for the jellyfish. I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. Just you're because something is about the just, claim. humble, you're restating the claim. I don't care to hear you restate the claim again. Oh, okay. So you're just basically just saying you just believe that a, a theory is a fact in the theory. Yes. That's what you just you just yes, believe. By okay, cool. Definition. By definition. All right, my bad. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was a, a belief. I thought you were. I thought you were arguing. My bad. I thought you were having an argument or a point. I am arguing it, right? But you're not. You're, you're not. You're not. You point. just believe it. You just believe it. I believe it, and I'm arguing it. What? How are you arguing it if if you're telling me not to restate the restate what I'm saying? Like it's like no, I'm making my argument. You're not making an argument. All you're doing is restating the original claim. Are you saying that when I'm are you saying that what I'm saying is wrong? Yes. So, okay. I've already given you given you a response. You're not responding to me, right? You're just saying the same thing. Okay, I don't, I don't know, to, I don't know what to say, but um, yeah, tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to a million likes. I don't know why he just paused, but if you disagree, send a guest request right now. Please only send a guest request My if bad. you disagree, y'all. My bad. Uh, so um, a theory. Uh, if you literally look this up, it says a well substantiated explanation, right? We already went over this. Well substantiated relates to proven. That's what proven means. It's like that's oh my god bro we already went over that literal definition too like already within this conversation
I don't know what bro's talking about. It's like it's like going over the same thing like a million times. But yeah, everyone, tap that screen. We're going to accept someone here after this. Yo, Jace, I appreciate the hand hearts. Thank you so much. We still got a while left on the live. I'm going to... I mean, it's. I've been on for five hours and twenty minutes, but I'm probably gonna go okay. on for until seven hours. I'm back. Okay, so um, I just looked at the definition of substantiated, and that just simply means that the facts are um, is it, usually supported by facts. That's what it means. Doesn't mean that it's a fact. Well substantiated says a good enough or hits a threshold of of evidence, which is saying that it's proven that's what that's no, what proven it, it means mean, proven means it's gonna to be it's gonna substantiated fill, it's gonna fit your threshold of evidence that's what proven to is be substantiated to. means to be supported by facts that's what it means to be substantiated yeah to be supported by evidence or facts yeah okay so if something's supported by evidence or fact doesn't mean that it makes it a fact a fact has to be observed um well um not necessarily Right, like I don't have to observe a a a bachelor to know that they're going to be unmarried. It's just by definition. But we but we know these things by observation. That's why, as a matter of fact, it's 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 in the definition itself. That's why we call it we call it a bachelor because we observed this is what a bachelor is. Like that's 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 yeah. What, but I, what I'm arguing is that it I, was already a fact. Yeah, I agree that it's a fact, right? Because it relates to the definition of the term. I'm just saying I'm that saying, I don't have to go through the experience to be able to have that knowledge. Refute what I'm saying, Parker. A fact has to be observed. In that scenario, I didn't have to observe it. But it was already observed. That's why it's a definition. So you're just saying that all facts relate to experience. You're just making an empiricist argument. No, I'm I'm making that's, an that's argument. What empiricism I'm. Means, yeah. I don't. Well, I don't, you can call it whatever you want. All I'm saying is just a simple facts. It, a fact has to be observed. This is a definite matter of fact. We can even look. Yeah, because you're just relating to experience or sense sense experience. So, yeah, um, yeah, you're just saying that knowledge only comes from experiential knowledge. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I I, I don't know. Do you do you want to okay. definition point that's relevant though? Definition of fact. Yes, yes, in a minute. Um, definition of fact is um, a thing to be a thing that is known or proven to be true. Yeah. Meaning it has to be observed. No and proved doesn't mean it has to be observed because when we're talking about knowledge, there's going to be a distinction within a like that's going to relate to like an empiricist and a rationalist. Right. Cool. So you're just going to relate to that distinction, right? Because cool. So like okay. A, so we like a whole debate. No, it's it's cool. We can move on. Um. Um. So here's the thing. Um. The fact is that you don't know where consciousness comes from, even though you have this faith of where consciousness comes from. You explain things. You like if God was to provide a um, miracle for you right now, right? I can tell you right now that there's a matter of fact, I, <laughs> you know what? Humble, I'm I've just already gone to that I'm, point. I don't have faith in that, right? Like you're just lying when you say that. Like I've already gone over that point. That is faith though, sir. That it's is literally a, not faith. faith. It's, it's not faith because it's not belief without it's, evidence. I clearly have evidence to believe in this. Well, faith is based off of evidence. Who says faith is not based off of evidence? Uh, that's literally the definition of the term. That's not faith the definition. Is belief of faith, without sir. evidence. That's what faith. That's is. not the definition of faith, sir. Yeah, the 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 evidence of of what's not seen. I don't even know what that means. The substance of things hoped for. That would entail that I am saved because I have I hope for there to be a heaven or for there to be a god. That doesn't mean I believe it. Okay. The substance of things hoped for is the thing that you do in order for you to um, prove that you believe this thing. That's what faith is. No, substance of things hoped for is just going to relate to. Thank you. I appreciate the hand art. Thank you so much. Things in which you would hope to be the case. Thank you for the hand art. I, I get it, but it's the substance itself. It's not the thing hoped for. We already know the things that are hoped for, but it's the substance of the thing that's hoped for. What's the substance of the things that's hoped for? There is no other substance other than the work that you do. 
I don't I don't I don't know how that could only be a substance. What do you what do you mean? Cuz couldn't the substance be the just like the belief? No. Because but the belief is the thing that's hoped for. The the belief that you have like okay, okay, well, sure, right? So, uh I I I don't understand what that definition would mean then. Right? You're just okay. saying that you 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 have works in accordance with a belief or something or okay. in between a hope and let me you say like things because you have hope or something like that, that that's an extremely vague definition well that's what faith is the faith uh, let me say like this if you believe that if you kill yourself you will go to heaven right the faith you is you actually you have to, you have to, you have to oh, say I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you I'm have sorry. to say self I'm alive okay okay so you said you said um, it's TikTok you said, TOS. Uh, what word can I use you have what, to say self and alive because of TikTok TOS okay so self and alive Unalive, yeah. Oh, self unalive, okay. So if you were to produce self unalive um, because of a belief in that you being unalive would mean that you go to heaven, the faith isn't in the fact that you would do it. That's the faith. The faith is, is you actually doing it. That's that's what faith is. Me, me actually that's, like doing actions that would lead towards me going to heaven or something? Yes. That's okay. the, you, and, your and, actions but like, but like, off of that. I, that then begs the question, right? Because that would be yes. in of itself what you were doing. I think I appreciate the hand heart. So that actually you doesn't say, really it, provide anything because if you if said do it, go ahead. Yeah, because you could, because yeah, because if you could be doing something and you have hope that this is the particular case, couldn't that then be something that is leading you towards doing that, going towards heaven? That that's substance. If but if you are doing the thing based off of that hope that's the only time it will become faith okay so that by that definition i'm saved i think i appreciate the hand art thank you how well because i do things in accordance with uh, with hopes that i have but here's the thing though and here's and here's the thing that most christians miss okay because it's not just about faith it's also in, in truth as well See, in Psalms, it also says that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb, right, and the word of our testimony. The word of your testimony is the faith. That's the, the testimony But the faith is just is relating faith. to the hope, so I'm saved. No, because if you don't, even believe, I don't need to believe. Sir, if you don't believe in the blood of Jesus, then you are not saved. That's what I'm trying to say. So the it's, definition it's, it's is something different than substance truth. of things hoped for. No, faith is faith, sir, but you can have faith in anything substance of things yeah you can hope for anything yeah you can hope for anything but what i'm saying is if if you are not believing in the right thing then how can you be saved because the only time you can be saved wait where is, does it say you, i have to believe you just said it, it's just relating to the substance of things hoped for so it's not necessarily relating to the belief it's relating to the hope, i'm sorry okay? i'm sorry and, and there's a common misconception about the bible whenever the bible uses certain words like belief Okay, it's talking about in the full purity. It's not talking about going haphazardly into it or anything like that. If the Bible says believe it, he's talking about having faith, actually doing it. Stop, don't be a punk. Okay, if you're going to say faith you just relates in to it, having the right? hope. It's the works of the hope. That's what faith is. It's not about having hope. You can have hope all day, yeah, but no, you don't I, have I works do things of the hope. in accordance with having this hope. That's the works, right? Based but off clearly, of what, though? Because I have hope. No, it's about spirit and truth. Faith is the spirit, sir. What about the truth? What's the no, truth? Faith relates to the hope. So I, I, if I have hope, I'm saved, bro. I don't have to believe. I'm saved. Parker, right? what are you, what are you saying? Like, are humble. you listening to what I'm humble. saying? Humble. We're going to be in heaven together, bro. How do you feel? I feel good. I, the, the only reason why I'm talking to you is because I'm, I, I, I want you to go to heaven with me. But well, I don't want you I'm going to going. heaven. I don't want you going to heaven thinking... And, and I don't want you going to to the judgment seat, right? Thinking you're going to be going to heaven, Dude, thinking well, you're going to be doing the right okay, things. Well, thinking then, you're then doing why do you everything. hold this view? Huh? Then why do you hold this view? Because there's a way, Parker. There's a way to do things. You're not doing it right. You used to be a Christian, sir, but you didn't. Be, you didn't Christian right. If you if you read. If you read Luke 9, 23 to 26, okay, it says if you want to follow me, you have to, if you want to believe on me, or if you want to, um, and this is Jesus talking, okay, and, and, and I'm going to get on Jesus in a minute. <laughs> it, it, this, it goes, it, I'm telling you, it goes really deep. But 
the point that I'm trying to make is that Jesus even said, because he's literally the only way that you'll be able to even get into heaven in the first place. Because the whole thing about this is that because Adam ate the uh, ate the tree, he like we literally are not worthy anymore unless we go the way that we're supposed to be going. And it used to be hard until Jesus came. Yeah, so like I, I'm, I'm really confused, right? I just, again, it sounds like I'd be Christian under this view because I hope. Because in order to hope, in order for to hope, I don't need to believe. I hope Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected for my sins to save me and send me to heaven. Th then you would do certain things based off of that hope. Yeah, like, like believe on him. Yeah, I have <laughs> conversations, things like that, right? Like, the, like, the, the, like. This is like this is, like. This is it. How about this? How about this? Endure. endure how about what? that? Endure all of the shortcomings. What all all of the all of the pain and suffering that caused you to even believe it. All of the confusion. All of the things. Just have faith anyway. Well, Stop thinking so much. This relates to the hope I already do. How? Because I have hope. How do you have hope if you're saying if you're saying that God doesn't exist? Well, how? Right, because, because, how is because, that the work? Explain. Because, because I want there to be good life after I die, in which it would entail right me and my family get to live together, and uh, I'm happy. Like I would love. Based that. off of what though? What you, you see, that, everything. What do you mean? What I mean? I'm telling you the a Bible argument. This this argument is literally in the Bible, Parker. It's. I'm telling you something that is in the Bible. The Bible. I'm telling you this. The Bible says, based off of what are you having faith on? Or, or like, are you just having faith and hope that you go to heaven just, just off of a whim? Is that what it is? What do you mean off of whim? Off of a whim. You're literally saying, I have hope. You think that's enough? That's not faith. Wait, you said faith that relates to substance. Substance. Tells for. The evidence. Yeah. Evidence It's the what? substance and the evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence itself. What, is it, what does it mean to be evidence of things not seen? Thank you for the hint. I appreciate it. You know the evidence of the things that are not seen is? No. Can you clarify that? Okay. Um, <laughs> how do you know that there are... Do you believe that there are demons? No. Okay. Do you know the evidence of the fact that there are demons? Well, I'm asking how you're using the terms like evidence of things not seen. Like, how are you using the term? Because if it's if you don't if you're not able to observe just because you're not able to observe the evidence, right? Because evidence is just simply observed. We find evidence. We discover evidence. So we don't obs make observe up evidence. the things that you cannot see. No, it's it, it's <laughs> you're observing the 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 faith and you <laughs> it's about you believing on something and then showing evidence towards that that's what the, that's what faith is but it's just showing evidence for i'm I, what say that one more time okay i'm saying and and i don't know I, I don't know why you're not getting this because this is very simply put okay all that faith is is the proof of your trust that's what faith is Prove that you trust it. That's the faith. Don't just say you trust this thing. Prove it. So we have to prove that we trust God, but God doesn't have to prove that he exists? He already has. How? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got excited. Where? I'm Literally sorry. where? 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 Where's this proof? Jesus. Being That's God. Proof. That's that is proof. proof. It clearly that is proof. proof. You know it what, is you proof. Know, you know what? You know what would have been proof if, again, he literally wrote down on a on a little book, right? That literally uh -huh. floated off the ground. It glows, uh -huh. right? It never it never degrades. Always stays the same. Can't be erased, right? I would know perfectly that that's God, right? <laughs> how I about know, I would be proven that God exists? I okay. Would how, okay. How about this? What if he did write a book and it was the most reputed book ever in the human history, yet at the same time it is the number one selling book by far? Then how come it's gone in multiple history? different translations? How come it how come it literally we don't have the original text or the manuscripts? How come all of these different factors apply that you literally should have been able to take into account if God just wrote it down himself? 
Well, first and foremost, first and foremost, okay, if you're going to be talking about Christians, okay, rather than Christianity itself, this is this is a conversation that is not um, is not um, 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 edifying. The fact is that Christians do a lot of bad things and then they end up suffering for it. Okay, look at the Roman Catholic Church. They did all the bad things in the world and all this stuff. Right. And now they're just on the back seat and they've been overthrown. And, and, and there's a whole bunch of things that happen in, into the Roman Catholic Church that is not even it's crazy. OK, look at um, what uh, the slavery, um, how slavery happened. Right. Uh, the uh, the um, 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 white people were using the Bible to convince the black people to try to serve them and all that stuff. Right. But then the Civil War happened. Right. Like and that's what I'm, it's like. And, and, and we just call these things a, a, a coincidence. Oh, Abraham Lincoln. It's like, why did these things happen? Do, what what thing do you have faith on? Do you have faith on your logic that is limited? You don't have all the variables. Or do you have faith on the fact that your very proof is the consciousness? It's like, how are you able to even comment, um, conversate with me and, 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 and even have your um, arguments if you were just atoms? Like, what's the what is the whole purpose of even feeling this way? Like, why are we... Like, 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 there's no point. Like, if, 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 it's, if it's just jello, you know, like, as if it's just a bunch of things, it's weird, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, so like, purpose is applied by a mind. If there isn't a mind, then you can't apply necessarily that there being a purpose. So, okay, all what you're mind saying with from? that statement is that there's not intrinsic purpose or purpose that is determined independent of our stances, which is also true under your belief, right? You don't think that if God didn't exist, that there would be truth about morality. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So you think that God determines the truth of morality? Yes. It's stance dependent. Right? That's subjective. How? It's not. That it's is subjective. Faith. What? No. Subjective, Based off of evidence. Subje no. Subjective is relating to a stance dependent truth about morality. That's 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 moral subjectivism, right? Thank you. I appreciate the 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 hand hearts in most senses. Thank you for the hand hearts. I appreciate it. Okay. So that's what subjective morality is relating to. You believe that morality is stance dependent, right? Therefore, clearly speaking, you believe in subjective morality. I think I appreciate no, that. it's it's simply faith because the bottom line is just like how you're able to take a leap of faith into how a uh, well pelvic bone um, and uh, uh, the vestigial um, organ, um, it was also a leg as well. I can also take the jump into saying the only reason why a asteroid no, hasn't no, 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 destroyed the earth. You're saying, you're saying that it's faith? That doesn't tell me whether or not you believe in subjective morality, right? So do you believe in subjective morality, stance-dependent truth about morality? You mean objective morality? Is that what you're talking about? What do you no, mean I, don't, I don't believe in subjective or morality. I believe in objective morality. Yeah, what do you mean by objective? What I mean is it is literally stance independent it, 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 it okay. doesn't it okay. doesn't it doesn't as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact I'll, I'll even say it like this it doesn't require god being real doesn't require us to believe in him no 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 okay no so no you're talking about morality okay so if if morality is stance independently true whether or not god exists that has no effect on whether or not morality is true because god's stances would be there or are, are being there or not being there doesn't affect the stance independent truth about morality. Thank you for the hand, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you to all of them, I appreciate it. Okay. So you, believe, you believe it's stance dependent? It is. Stance oh. independent. No, it's, no, it's no. stance independent. So, so it's so literally if, stance if, independent. If God, if, God, if God doesn't yeah. exist, if God doesn't exist, there's still a fact about morality. Yes. Okay. Matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I, that is an oxymoron. You can't say that because the bottom line is morality only exists because there's a mind. Okay, what mind is it based off of? Dude, dude, you said you're saying it's mind dependent and mind independent simultaneously. Bro just contradicted himself so hard. Come on, bro. You literally can't do that. You can't say it's mind dependent and then mind independent in the next sentence. Okay. Come on, bro. What I'm saying is that the mind is independent and the stance is independent. They're one and the same. They're yeah, both so the why same do you say thing. why do you say mind dependent and mind independent in two following sentences like a series I didn't, of sentences I didn't, I didn't say mind dependent you didn't i didn't use those words once you again really keep trying to take what i'm saying out of context i didn't you say said, those you words. said how would there be truth about morality without a mind exactly be mind dependent no i'm saying that's an oxymoron statement <laughs> oh so you're saying it's an, 
What? That doesn't even make any they sense. They are one in the same. There can't be morality without mind, and there can't be mind without morality. What? No, no. Wait, what do you... I, I don't know if that goes both ways, right? I don't think that just because... No, that doesn't make any sense, right? Okay. Uh, if Think of the sunglasses. Okay. If, if there is a mind, right? No, if there is a okay. mind, right? Mm -hmm. They have statements about morality, right? They think things are wrong or right. All right, mm -hmm. that's... And that determines the truth of that stance. Okay. I mean, and the that, mind is automatically morality. going to do that. That is subjective. Okay. It's. <laughs> it, it can't. It can't be subjective because if it was subjective, then that means that it would be subjective to all. Yes. Yeah. So the. But a it's truth not for one position. There's a truth for another position. There's a truth for another that, position. I, that, but that's not true. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying there's only one. There's only one type of way to be. That like, it's, and it's not, and it's not subjective. It just is, and it's always been. Oh, and it's and it's independent of of God's stance or God's desire, right? God's yes. Mind. Okay. Yes. So, so, what determines the truth of it if it's independent of God? God. Cause this is what I'm saying. You're not understanding what I'm saying. The word I'm not of what he's saying. I said what you're determines. Not understanding no, what I'm saying. no, stop. I said what determines it if it's independent of God, okay? And you said God. What? That's a yes. contradiction in basic terms, dude. It's not. What though. do you mean? It's not. You're just not understanding what I'm saying. Just like, just like how people don't they don't believe how Jesus can be a human being and God at the same time. This what what I'm saying is that you're like. Morality cannot be separate from mind. It, it's one and the same. A mind is going to have a certain type of morality. That's how it is. This is this is what it is. This is one of the attributes of a morale, of a morale, or of a mind. So what I'm saying is that <clears throat> God set these things in on, on the course. Matter of fact, if you even just look at uh, the Bible, God's already set these things on the course, and it is independent of what of, of Him. But the but the bottom line is is he is that like he is that and that is him. It's the same. It's one and the same. You can't separate the two. You can't look at them differently because it's it's just one thing. It's it's all in the same thing. Just like mora mor a mor a morality and mental or mind are one and the same. A person is going to have a certain mental or a certain morality rather. Sorry. We're not just talking about an individual having morality right now. We're talking about where the morality, or where the truth of morality is from, okay? And how it's It comes from God. And you're saying it comes from God, okay? Yes. So if it comes from God, it's not stance independently true. It's from God. In, in comparison to us, it is. That doesn't make any sense. It is, it's because... Still, only... No, it's still stance dependent. It's just dependent upon God. Well, I even prove this to you, even just off based off of the um, the um, 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 what I, I forgot I forgot what it was called, but basically it describes how the strongest survive, and uh, you know the weak basically perish. Natural selection. And basically natural, uh, yeah. I'll use natural selection. All right, cool. Natural selection. Um, uh, so with natural selection, even if it was subjective right the weaker ones the weaker ones morality or what they would be thinking wouldn't matter because the strongest one would be the one the one that sets the boundaries for those things in the first place that's just so, your preference to take god's preference though so like you, you can say that god has the biggest stick i don't care right but it's still subjective by definition okay you, you can't say it's uh i don't know cuz cuz yeah, because all, all you're saying is that god the has bottom a bigger line thing. is okay. the, no because the bottom line is if something has always been since it, and there's no beginning no end no nothing this is just this is just how it was how can that be subjective how cuz it and it's not changing 
Because it's dependent upon God for its truth. As a ma- okay. As God a matter of fact, if, if you're trying to tell me, if, if you telling me that God's God's way of doing things or God's morality of doing things is subjective, it's like saying one plus one equals two is subjective. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. Not at all. Because because one plus one equaling two, right, is going to be something that is independent of the stance, right? Something that we observe within reality. We don't have something in which we could state that when it relates to our stances about morality, right? I don't. I don't think that we would have some type of perceptual quality for that, right? That that would be assuming that like the fact of that is true independent of our stance, which we can't observe. Okay, but but the bottom line is that the only reason why it exists is because of a mind, right? Like, like if we're going according to the Bible, or if we're going into, because you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, okay? Like, I'm trying to prove to you I'm that God Christian. exists. My, okay, well, you were a Christian. My, the issue was, is yeah. that, okay, you was a Christian. So the issue here is that I'm trying to prove to you that it's not about it, God existing or anything. It's about the Christian God being here and being alive, okay? That's what I'm trying to prove. So... The bottom line here is that you saying that God's morality is subjective, okay? He created, he, it, this literally came out of nothing. The only reason, we, only reason why one plus one equals two is because God said. It, or, 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 using your, um, there, there was no one plus one equals two until the Big Bang happened. There was nothing. There was no existence. The existence didn't even happen. So what I'm saying is the think, only reason I, why one thank you for was, chasing the dream. Okay. I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. I don't think that the Big Bang was the beginning of all existence. So you're saying existence has always existed? I'm saying that there could have been something that have always existed. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the hand art. Thank you so much. Okay. So there could have been something that have always existed. Then you're not saying that is God. That's a choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so therefore, that so therefore, so therefore, I I rest my case. This is this is and this is what this is the point I was trying to get you to, is you're choosing whether or not. That's why I'm saying even if I was to prove you wrong, like like everything I'm saying, you you here's, let's let's just go over it. Let's just go over. Uh, no, uh, no, humble. Let me explain. What so happened? You're, we're comparing. Okay, we're ahead. comparing different models here. Yeah, like yeah. You we said, can, ex- we can, you said existence. You said existence hey, is hey, always existing. Hey. Can That's I finish? Go Can ahead. I finish? You didn't. You didn't let me finish, but go ahead. Well, I can let myself finish. The fuck? Yeah. So, um, yes, I do, I do think that there can be something that that could have always existed. I've never have disputed that the, the that there could have been something that has always existed, right? That's the same assumption under both models in terms of the comparison. So, if we're comparing one model to the other, and they both have the same assumption, neither one necessarily would be better than the other there. Right, so we have the same base operating assumptions, and then I'm just shaving off some of them and saying that this is more likely to be true than yours. Right, I can also relate to the perfect arguments. I can relate to the the problem of evil. I can give you many different arguments as to why you don't accept your particular belief. Okay, but the bottom line of what I'm saying is that you're making a choice on like you're saying there could have been something that existed but i'm not going to say that it was god is too different i understand what you're saying you're literally just repeating what you're saying like but you're not understanding you what i'm saying no you did. i, didn't I literally did i responded to it i did get it there are, we we have two different models of how existence work i get it i understand right is that what you're saying um yeah and we're doing a comparison between the two so okay, they, they there we the go. That's 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 assumptions, and then I'm shaving right, cool. off some of the assumptions that are unnecessary under your view, and still explaining the question, which means it's Perfect. more likely to be true. <laughs> this is this is your line, brother. You you don't have to prove nothing to me. But only thing I'm saying is this, okay? the The point that I'm trying to make is that you have one model of way of the way you want to believe. You choose to believe about the world. I have another model that I choose to believe about how the world works, okay? Now, that is what faith is. No, why do you choose, right? 
Because I can look up the, the I can definition stop, of stop, stop. faith. I can Jesus choose, Christ. I can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's belief without evidence. I can choose to believe in things in which there's lots of evidence for. It. I don't know what you're laughing at, bro. I do because you want me to do this, he, you humble. Do you want me to do the same thing to you? I could do. I can do it ten times worse. I promise. I bet you could, and you want to. Yeah, you have been. Clearly, no, I haven't. I clearly want yes, to. Yes, you have. Because you're being a you've fucking You've been cutting me off this annoying. whole time. You, well, I, you were being only, annoying, but you don't have me to, saying nothing. Only, to be, <laughs> only, only <laughs> literally because you have not answered the question, and we have to go over the same thing like 40 times, right? I am being I've extraordinarily, answered all the questions. Hold up. I'm being extraordinarily patient with you, right? You have not answered my questions. I have given you literally the same thing over and over and over and over again, right? Clearly, like, bro, I'm, that, that's the reason why I'm going to stop stop you because i just explained it six times right okay parker the whole point that you are trying to make to me is that we have two models of existence that we want to and choose to believe in okay right no no Right, you, there's so much more to that that you just didn't even listen to. You didn't listen to a single point extra than that. Are you that's that's all you took from everything I've said? Because I refuted everything that you said. I no, you just didn't. disproved everything you said. You don't know where consciousness comes from. Evolution is a theory. I gave you okay? a, it's I a gave you knowledge system. for that. I and, said it's and, and you fact. literally, it's not a fact. You can't say that. Fact. Okay, this is what you're choosing to believe. But but the definition in itself actually incriminates you. So I'm not going to argue that point. No, but the, the bottom definition line literally is, justifies my position. Where all right, cool. Over that? You got it. Okay, cool. But what I'm saying is... That's literally is, what the facts say. That's literally what happened. All right, that's cool. Literally, Great. Literally what the all right, cool. Says. But you still can't tell me where consciousness comes from. You choose I did, to I did. I told you. I told you. My I gave you evidence. I'm I can okay. send you multiple academic papers. You're lying. Parker. Humble, you're literally The point that lying. I'm trying to make... You're literally okay. lying. I'm not, though. Yeah, you just did. I'm not. I just, yeah, you just did. You I can send me a bunch of theories, times. but you don't observe. You have never observed where consciousness comes from. Yes, we, dude, what are you talking about? We have evidence oh, that indicates that these particular processes within the mind is what produces a conscious experience. So, and I just asked you, if you cut off these parts of the brain, are you trying to tell me that a person's not going to be able to um, um, operate? Yes. If you stop That's this not part of the true. brain. It is true. We see this with <sighs> brain dead individuals. Thank you for the hand, I appreciate it. They don't have these particular parts of the brain operating in tandem to produce this particular subjective experience. That's There's why we think it's okay to unplug brain dead people because they are dead they have no consciousness they're physiologically speaking still alive right but they are dead right in terms of their consciousness okay if there's no activity in the brain most likely it's because they are dead they do have but, activity in the like, brain they have neurons that are firing in the brain eeg readings they just don't indicate that they have multiple different parts of the brain working in tandem to produce this type of experience okay and that's then that is uh that is a proof of consciousness i get it i understand oh that, and that's so now what you you're fucking, saying the same now thing. You, you just contradicted yourself you just said that you, you failed to prove consciousness i gave the exact same argument i gave earlier right and now you said it's proven oh my gosh wild i just i i'm saying that's not where you can't prove me where consciousness comes from i just what it proves mean? consciousness exists no but so you, you don't know where it comes you, from no, you're just talking about where existence comes from. It's not about consciousness. It's where existence comes from. That's what yeah. I'm talking. That is, no, thank you. That's, that's thank different. you. It's a different question. Thank you. Humble. Thank humble. you. That is. A, that thank is. Thank you. No. No. Listen. That's the thank only you. thing I was trying to get at. Yes, this whole time. I, I don't. Know. You've been missing I, it this whole time, sir. Humble. That's not what you were saying, right? That's, that's literally. Stop talking. Okay. That's a fundamentally okay. different claim. All right. You I'm saying I don't know where consciousness comes from is a fundamentally different claim from saying I don't know where existence comes from. Right? Because if it was consciousness, it would be derivative of the brain's properties. So I don't know why you're even arguing that if you knew that you were referencing existence. You could have easily specified that. Here's the issue. Because if I was to argue with you about consciousness, okay, or, or existence rather, okay, you would come, you would come and try to argue with me about all of the science and irrefutable things that you think is irrefutable in theory. I don't feel like doing that. Okay? Because the, all of these things are not edifying. I don't want to argue with you about uh, the origins of the Bible and where it comes from or the, the science and all this. Stuff. I'm literally just going to ask you straight questions that you have no idea what it is. Okay, like you don't. I'm. I just proved to you that you don't know where existence comes from. You believe in certain about existence, but that's a choice. You know, oh, I don't. I don't. Humble. I don't. I don't have a belief about where we came from. Right, because I don't know. 
That's my claim. Okay. If you if you don't know, then how are you saying that God doesn't exist? There's a contradiction. Where? Uh, given a perfect creator, we expect there to be a perfect creation. We don't exist already in a perfect did, creation, that. therefore there's not a perfect creator. You didn't disprove it, we went through it, and again, there was no reason to accept what you're saying. You literally completely deflected away from that topic after, again, we established it very, very clear within the conversation. Can a perfect creator create an imperfect creation? Can no. a per imperfect? That means that it's not all powerful. No, that means it can't do good. Okay, so thank you for the uh, crown, I appreciate it. Uh, because it's not powerful. It's, it's, stop talking. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the little crown. All powerful means you can do the set of all things in which are logically possible. That wouldn't be logically possible as they are a perfect creator. A perfect creator entails a perfect creation, therefore, could not do something that is different from that. No. All power is able, it, 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 it's, it's being able to do things. That's what power is. You don't so think if you're God saying you are all power, if you're saying you are all power, that means you are all able. All powers in which are possible. You can't have powers in which are impossible. Sir, perfection, imperfection can come out of perfection. Um, this no. is, this is, this is, yes, it is true. Flaws can come out of something that's flawless. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it can. What? As a matter of fact, it's not about it coming out. It, 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 flawless can create, or flawless can create flaws if it wanted to. Well, no, because then it would be flawed. It wouldn't be flawless. Not true. What? It's not true. You're just what you create reality. doesn't. No, I'm not. What you create does not define who you are. What are you talking or about? what you if, are. If, if you're a flawless creator and you create something in which is flawed, that's a contradiction because a flawless creator would be creating things in which are flawless. No, the simple fact that I, an idea can take off with, with, with or without you, right? What? Like, like you, if you have an idea, okay? If you have an idea and it, it, it was, it, you, you were perfect and all these things um, the idea can take off or do things outside of you it can it can it can have different effects outside of you um, so no if I create it perfect then it can never deviate from being perfect because it would be flawless okay it can never gain a flaw if it is flawless what property would allow it to gain a flaw if it's flawless He didn't create. He didn't create perfect. He, it, 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 that's what I'm saying. the so only flawless being. Or the only flawed being that we created was us. He can do that because he's all powerful. He can do that because it's so a perfect and here's being. The thing. Intentfully created a wait a flawless being and uh, a flawless creator intentfully created a flawless entity. That's a contradiction. It, hit no hit because here's the thing also because you're you're. You're just boxing him into this one thing. He is, he is, he just is. He is all powerful. He's everything. He is the standard for existence. He is. He's not just a flawless creator. It's not about him being, he's not just perfect. He's also perfectly powerful. He's also perfectly wit wise. He's also, per he's all these things. He's, he's, he's outside of time, outside of material, outside of creation, outside of everything. He just is. Okay, that's the first and foremost. Second, uh, him being able, like, and, and this, is what, this is what I'm saying, it's like, you can't apply your, like, you don't have all the variables, sir. <laughs> like, like, he can create a flawless being because he, he just can. He's God. Like, he just, he is. He's the creator. He's not the perfect creator. He's the creator, and he's perfect. Yeah, so uh, I'm 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 saying that it's a flaw to create something that's flawed, right? If you're a flawless creator, like that's just very clear, right? The fact that you're disputing that is actually so ridiculous, and I can't even believe I'm having this conversation. And realistically speaking, it's such a waste of time for me to go through this because that I understand is that. so obvious.
right in front of you, and it's like going it's over the same good. thing over and over again when it's so blatantly obvious right in front of you, is not productive not only for the audience, but for us in general. Because it's not going to move anywhere. It really isn't. Okay. Um, you're welcome to uh, drop me off anytime you want. But bottom line, what I'm saying is... Um, it's not about him being a perfect creator. You keep trying to box him in into this thing. He's God, okay? Mm-hmm. That's that like the like I can't I can't express that enough. Like you can't relate to him on the perfect le- like you can't do that because he's better. Like he's just he he's more he's more smarter. He knows these things more than you. Like the bottom line is first and foremost because choice exists. The only reason why flaws exist is because of choice, okay? He created choice, but choice itself is not flawed. We are. That's like, like it was a divine, matter of fact, I'll even say it like this. Choice was a, something that he's given us to make change to his plans. So we talk about. Being all knowing, you know, and and, and uh, omnipresent and all this stuff. I think we look at this very differently. Like when choice comes into the matter, there are infinite amount of choices that you can make within the, uh, within a circumstance. Okay, um, and they will all produce different results. What he's saying when he says he's all knowing, he's saying he's he knows every single um, every single point that you would make if you were to make any choice any choice in the in the spectrum that you can make. He knows all of it. He knows everything. That's that is what God any possible is. Like choice. that's what you I'm know, saying. God knows any possible choice the same way that yeah, he re- knows any possible any choice. Possi- so God wouldn't know an impossible choice the same way that when God is all powerful, He can't do an impossible thing. God can do the set of exactly. all things in which is possible. Okay. So now that you understand, exactly. you, when you relate to what's possible, you now understand what I was referencing. Oh my God, that that was literally what, what I was going over the entire time. And you were like disputing that, like, dude, I swear, like, you just don't recognize what you say at all. And then you like go back on it because you concede to things like right after, bro. And then you go back on it and then we have a conversation about the same thing over and over again. No, you're, you are refuting with me because I'm saying, I'm saying what I'm saying. And I've been saying this from the beginning, sir. I've been saying that God, God himself can create imperfect. He can. That's incoherent, right? But um, I I don't think we can go over the same thing for another two hours or something. But because you have been on for like multiple hours, bro. That's cool. Yeah, no, that's cool. Bottom line is, um, I just want to go over conclusion. Just say, uh, just say one last thing, and you can. You're just gonna restate the same claim we've already heard fifty times, dude. I don't want to hear it again, honestly. All right, cool. It, it, like I said, it's your choice on whether you want to believe, but only thing I wanted to do was... Again, I've I already established that people. I do want to, right? But again, it, we don't have good reason. And we're going to... Okay. Like, you literally... I gave Are you, you going to let me say my last point or are you going to drop me? Like, what? What? You tell me. Um, You give me... Like, I, I can drop you. Thank you for the hint. Like, I appreciate it. Thank you. Like, do you want that? I want to say... I want to say something else. I want to uh, continue this conversation, but it looks like you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, we've gone, dude, you're not, you're, I don't think you're understanding what we're doing, right? For the past literally almost two, three hours, bro, I've gone over the exact same point over and over and over and over again, right? And you've just simply given me the exact same response without actually engaging with what I'm saying. All it is is a, it's, it's a circle. But no, what are you, it's you're saying not true. That's literally what happened, dude. This is literally recorded, bro. I know, um, and you can even look at it yourself. In the yeah, I will. Is, I'm going to think going the to, exact same thing I think now. I, I know, because you're going to take what I say out of context, and you're not going to really hear what I'm saying. What do you mean out but of context? The entire is, thing is literally clipped. I have a five and a half hour uh, live stream recorded right now. You have a five and hour uh, live stream, and I hope you look over it again, and I hope you're able to get what I'm saying, but the bottom line is it's not going to stop your choice whether or not you take me out of context because you've been doing it this whole call, this whole time. I have not been taking you out of context, man. I don't. Yes, I literally i am not have, on sir. here disingenuously. I've not taken you out of context. If I, was, if I wanted to take you out of context and I wanted to be disingenuous, ingenuous i wouldn't have let you be on for the past literally like two three hours bro and go over the exact same point over and over again 
I've been, I'm I've not given talking you an, about your... I've given you an extraordinarily level of patience, an extraordinary, extraordinary level of genuineness. Like when it relates to this conversation, for you to literally prescribe that it's disingenuous after this long of me going over the same thing over and over and over again, just See, because just I want to make sure again. that you understand the point. You just did it again. I've never said that you were disingenuous. I said you, you took me did. out of context. That's what that, I said. That is being disingenuous. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. I'm saying you took me out of context. I, I'm not talking about your intentions. I, as a matter of fact, I'll even say it like this. Being disingenuous, it, it, an intent would have to be behind it, right? Would you agree? So, so you're saying I'm, I'm misintentfully trying taking you out of context? Yes. That's, I'm no, saying no, that what you am are I misunderstanding? I've heard you. I've heard you say the same thing a million times. I am not misunderstanding anything. What am I saying, I'm really Parker? Not. What am I saying, Parker? You're literally saying the same. You're saying that a perfect creator does not entail a perfect creation when it is literally entailed, given the definition of a perfect creator, that they create perfect things. You're disputing that. That's the main dispute. That's not what I'm saying. That is literally what you've been fucking saying this entire time. That's not what I've been saying. You, like I said, you missed it. You want to know? Can I tell you what I'm saying? This is the reason why I keep on having to repeat what I say. Because I already knew you're not going to get it. I know you're going to take me out of context, I'm not meaning to, just because you're so used to, um, you know, questioning things and, and you're not realizing that logic is just simply a tool, but it can't get you everywhere because you don't have all the variables. You don't know where consciousness comes from. You don't know why people believe in no, no, you don't know why evil gaslight. exists. You don't, don't know why God, God you don't know why you're good gaslighting. exists. You you're say that a lot, but that's not true, sir. You're literally gaslighting. It's not true, sir. You're literally that's gaslighting. I have this on video. Everyone in the call literally literally <laughs> just saw, saw you do that. I can you want me to poll right now, pull <laughs> the chat, crazy. see if you said that? Thank you for the galaxy. I appreciate you just said that. You literally did just say it, now you're gaslighting. How am I gaslighting, sir? Because you're literally lying about what you said to manipulate people to act like what you said didn't happen. No, I'm, I've been saying the same thing this whole time and trying to prove what I was trying no, to dude. say this whole time. Here, do you want me to poll right and now? You literally didn't get what I'm saying. Do I don't want to pull. I don't want to pull because I already know this in the chat. This, they're going to say they've been saying the same thing. There's been only a few people, and that's. I mean, this, this is how it is. When 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 people don't talk about the same things because you want me to go into like the science you want me to go into like me logically proving to you that god exists and what i'm trying to logically prove to you is that you don't have all the variables to even ask this question like it, to even say prove to me god exists matter of fact he gave you a way to prove to your own self and you want someone else to prove to you like, it, I, there is no way for me to prove to you other than to say, go do the thing that I'm telling you to do, and I bet you something would happen. <laughs> you, you, and then you, you say you prayed and you did all these things, and it's like, I don't know how you ended up here. Only way that I can see it is, I mean, and, and I mean, it's evident. Even today, you didn't go deep. You didn't even know what faith was, sir. You don't even know, like, about the, uh, Dude, you I know, did. what you I have do. to do. I do. Like I do. You what don't I just, know, what, no, what I just don't understand. You're saying it's belief without evidence. That's what you just said. Yeah, that is that is literally what it is, right? That is what That's most people what will it say. That's not what it is, sir. Because right? you used what, to be a what, Christian. Is, hold up, let me finish. Let me finish. That is what most people will say. It is the definition that you gave is extraordinarily vague and extraordinarily unclear. That's why I question that definition of faith, right? Sir, so it's not that I, I don't said, understand. I've known about the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. I've heard that a million times, right? It's but you don't know what it means. What it means. Right, you're doing an O true Scotsman fallacy, and you're gaslighting me. The entire chat, like not, well, not the entire chat, but what was it? What is it? 80, 80, 82 percent of the chat literally agrees that you literally fucking said that, right? Okay. And the video will, is going to prove it too. The chat is are, are the same minds as you. That's and literally they, they not come true. Here, they come on here to see you. Do you, do you want me to ask? Do you want me to ask the chat what percent of them believe in God? Thank you. I appreciate the hat mustache. Thank you so much. I said most of them. Anyway, but bottom line is. Do you um, <laughs> In God. Okay. In God. Yes and no. So, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Uh, the you're not understanding that faith is literally the doing of trust. It's not just trust. It's not just hope, and it has to be based off of truth. Okay. You are putting your trust in evolution. You're putting your trust in science. That's wait, wait, wait. I asked, I asked, do you believe in God? 43% of the chat believes in God. And 83% of the chat said that, that, that you said it. Okay, so a huge percentage okay. of the people that agree with you agreed that you literally said it. 
Okay, cool. But what I'm saying is, I'm not refuting about me. What I'm refuting about is, is God. Okay. Well, I, yeah, because you want to deflect and, and away from like the fact that you gaslit everything. You gaslit me. You gaslit the audience. You want to deflect. I asked me. you how did I gaslight you? You you keep asking the chat about what it is, but I'm tell I you tell me how did I gaslight you? Yeah, you literally said that you didn't say that, and you did say it. Literally, literally. What, lying what did it, I bro. say? What did I say? Because I did not say, I did not say that theory wasn't a, um, um, that theory was, um, 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 what, what, I don't even know what you said. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know what, what, what you're saying that I gaslighted you about. Like, what, what, did, what, what did I say that I didn't say? Yeah. You want to know why you don't know? Because you go on this whole elaborate scheme of literally denying the fact that you said that insofar as that people literally forget what the original claim is about in the first place. That is literally what your whole point is of doing this, is to literally take, get people You take what I say out of context and try to get me to focus I did not on take something you out else of when I'm saying one thing. Yes, you did, sir. I Parker, really didn't, you took, you took me out of context a lot, and it's like, I'm trying to have an honest conversation with you, but it doesn't look like you want to. It looks like you kind of just want to prove your point. Th that's another gaslight. I clearly have come on here many... That You just said I'm disingenuous again. Right? You literally just said I'm disingenuous again. Okay, I, I didn't say you were disingenuous. You, just you said see that. what I'm saying? I you didn't say. Did it. I say? Did I say you were disingenuous? I yes. said yes. it looks. Yes, I'm done. I'm done. Right, bro. I'm done. It looks like I'm not trying to come here to exp to express the truth, and I just want to prove what I am saying. Right, that is literally saying that I'm disingenuous. Do you like chat? Come on. If you you disagree, you literally clearly say you clearly see that he's gaslighting. Like that's so obvious, bro. Like I don't know how he can sit there and he can act like he's not gaslighting. Like that is unfucking believable. Uh, I'm gonna go into the next person. If you disagree, send a guest request right now. Tap that screen, everyone. Let's try to get to a million likes. I'm gonna go into the next person though, everyone. We're about to turn on sub only chat. Let me go on to uh, sub only chat. It's about the last hour of the live. We've been on for six hours and it's been open. So I got to do the last hour of the live for sub only everyone. Thank you for the jellyfish. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolute W's. Absolute W's. Thank you so much, Steel. All right, let's go to the let's go to the next person, y'all. Yeah, what's up? How old are you? Hey, man, twenty six. For sure. Do you believe in God? I do. Yeah, I do. I uh, from the journey of I'd say about nineteen to twenty three, um, I did a whole research on what religions I found to be most accurate. Um, and I found Christianity to be that. Uh, and since then, I've been trying to continue my education and uh, finding backings towards why I believe God exists. Yeah, so why, why do you think that the evidence of Christianity is better than other types of religions or other types of claims about why we exist? Um, well, I, I believe that if you look at it um, historically with the proof that exists today, um, it makes most sense to believe in Christianity just based on the evidence that there is in, in written documentation um, and the time periods that those documentations were written. Uh, and as far as the religion itself, um, I believe that it can entirely be deconstructed through the uh, disprovision of uh, Jesus himself, whether or not his claim that he is God and he died and rose again um, was, was found to be accurate. Uh, and through my research um, and other researchers as well, uh, like two books that I do suggest anybody read um, if they want to go dive further into it because they know a lot more than I do, um, would to be more more than a carpenter is one of them that I would highly suggest reading. Um, and then uh, another one by Lee Strobel is called Case for Christ, which um, if those of people don't know, um, they were atheists. Um, Lee Strobel specifically was a, a, a reporter who um, his whole purpose was to claim that everything that Jesus did and everything um, that the Bible claims it was untrue, um, but he he did uh, find it to be more accurate and more plausible that 
uh, Jesus Christ did actually exist and that um, through other documentation, not just the 66 books in the Bible, um, that uh, it was found that it was, it was harder to not believe that Jesus did what he said and that God does exist than to disbelieve it. Um, and through that, that that's kind of why I got to where I'm at. Sure, right. So like, um, have, have you uh, seen that, um, uh, like in relation to like the tomb and stuff like that, um, that actually m most individuals that were crucified during that time period, they, they were actually left on the crosses to decompose. Yeah, yeah, I did. I have seen that. Yeah. So, so wouldn't it be most likely that Jesus was never put in a tomb in the first place? Most likely. I mean, as far as st statistically, yes. Um, but through, um, I mean, I just believe accurate documentation, um, and through the people that followed him throughout those days, uh, they did have the ability during that time to put them in a tomb if it was something that they desired. Um, and typically it took multiple families in order to do that. Uh, but due to his following, um, he, he was most likely one of those few people that actually were placed in the tomb. Um, I, I don't, I don't see the, the most likely there, but secondly, like historic, many historians are either agnostic on or don't believe that, um, that Joseph Arimathea Right, the, the person who supposedly bought the tomb exists, right? And again, the only claims for him being in the tomb are come from coming from the Bible. They're not coming from extra biblical sources. Okay, um, so so uh, yeah, again, I, I'm not an expert at this, but and I'm still on my journey to figure out as much proof as I can. Um, but where I'm at now. And if there is other proof out there, who knows, there, there might be, um, then, you know, I'm, I'm going on that journey. Now, why do you not believe or where are you at? And we can start there. Yeah, sure. So, like, um, I think that we can find contradictions with the belief. I can give multiple arguments in which could entail that, like whether it be for the problem of evil, whether it be arguments about perfection, things like that. Um, I, can be, I can give probability-based arguments in terms of, uh, like, theoretical virtues like simplicity to say that it would be more likely for a naturalistic explanation to be true comparative to a theistic explanation, um, uh, things like that. And then also like I would have like a, a dispute when it relates to the claims about like resurrection and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so do you think that as far as uh, the disciples, like the, the 12 disciples and you know, 10 of those like died pretty horrific deaths. Um, I feel like at that time, there was no reason for them to do what they would have, you know, had to do in, in order to, to get to where they had, you know, just a horrible death. There was no, there was nothing that draw them, that drew them to dying in those type of ways because there was no real reward gained from doing, you know, the purpose of spreading God's word other than wait, with wait, Connor, wasn't it only Peter, Paul, and James that died? Her no, 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 10 of the 12. Um, so Judas hung himself, and John was the only one that was not killed. Um, yeah, can I can I add someone up that would know way more about the Bible than me to like dispute that? I mean, yeah, well, by all means, yeah, again, sure. I'm not I'm not like a philosopher by any means, but. Yeah, one second. Just just for that claim, nothing much. Oh, is it going to add Matt? Oh, hey. Haunter, hey, I appreciate the subscription. Thank you so much. Go for it, Matt. Hey, I'll make it quick. Um, hey, Connor, how you doing? Um, hey, man. Hey, uh, so the claim that 10 of the 12 died by martyrdom, that is tradition. So and what I mean by that is this. There is no documented evidence, aside from the early church fathers who are writing about the uh, disciples, that the uh, original 12, uh, minus Judas and minus John, died by martyrdom. The only ones that historians are somewhat confident of are Peter, John, uh, Peter Paul, and James. P 
Peter died in Rome, uh, Paul died in Rome, and then uh, James uh, uh, was also martyred. James and Paul we have very good evidence for because we have extra biblical sources telling us that, uh, that uh, they were martyred. John, uh, Peter is a little bit more iffy, but I would lean towards the fact that he probably was martyred. Um, and, and in fact, we, and so that I'm, I'm more comfortable with. The, all the other ones, we are not confident of. In fact, there's a great book by a Christian apologist called The Martyrdom of the Apostles, where he goes over the history of it and tries to assign probability of it. And even he uh, says that you can only historically assign a, uh, a uh, uh, reliable probability to three out of the 12, meaning, or, or three out of the 10, those that were actual apostles, because we, we only have good evidence for three of them. So when I hear this claim, and I hear it all the time, that, the, uh, that, that the, uh, all the apostles minus John did not die or died by martyrdom, that is a tradition claim made by the church not a claim of history or a fact it's a it's a claim of of history or oh, sorry it's a claim of tradition only and you'll find only apologists making this claim but no scholar who actually studies martyrdom or a, or a studies uh, persecution believes it okay okay so uh, like as far as outside sources outside of the bible is what yes. you're referring well, to. No, even within the Bible, the only evidence we have of martyrdom in the Bible is James. James is exp oh no, yeah, James is mentioned uh, in the book of Acts, and so is Stephen. Stephen, Stephen was the first martyr. He's mentioned uh, within the book of Acts. James has extra biblical sources. Um, uh, 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 Josephus talks about James in uh, book twenty of his. Antiquities, and so we have actual biblical sources for, for uh, James. Peter, we also have some sources for, but but uh, and then Paul, we definitely know was also martyred because of the stop it because we can trace his letters and and what happened after them. So, but we have no sources like like literally none to suggest what happened with the other um, uh, apostles other than tradition which comes from later church fathers writing about well what happened to these um uh, uh specific disciples and they just assign them roles saying that matthew went to ethiopia saying that uh saying that you know uh, barnabas went to uh went over to india you know all these other types of things right but they don't have proof of that they just said that hmm okay okay well, yeah, there's but, definitely more things yeah, that, that yeah, I can, but, but, yeah, but the claim of martyrdom doesn't rely on your faith or anything, which I think is – people bring it up, though, as if the martyrdom of uh, the followers means anything, and it doesn't. Many, many religions have had martyrs, have had people who follow the faith die for them, and, it, and that does not imply the uh, truthful claims of the – of the faith itself, right? And so, and so, simply saying that, well, they believed it and they died for it. Yes, that is true, probably. But so is the case for many, many religions, even up to the modern day, right? Uh, Mormons, the uh, uh, Joseph Smith was killed for uh, for his belief, right? The uh, the founder of Mormon. Oh, Matt, Matt, your mic muted. You probably got a call or something. Well, yeah, he brought it. He, I mean, this brings up some good points. Yeah, I got a call. I, I'm gonna go. Okay, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. Well, I, mean, I, can, always, I can finish more, his claim. You know? So it's just like, uh, in terms of Joseph Smith. Also, plus, if we were to bring up claims like, do you think other people of other religions would die for their faiths? Yes, um, okay, I, I well. do. And, but now the difference between what I view as um, a reason to die for, say. Um, uh, let, let's say like if I was Muslim, um, I know that there is a benefit to die for your religion in, in that religion. Um, to become a martyr is, is almost like being put on the highest pedestal for, for Allah, um, which is the God that they serve. Um, but for Christianity, that's not really anything that you get a benefit from other than the fact that you so strongly believe that everybody should know this love and this forgiveness that is offered to you. Um, 
that no matter what, how they come at you, you think that they deserve to hear it, regardless of what it gives you. And if you view it in that way, it's a little bit different. Um, and and there's, there's a lot of other things too, but, uh, you know, as far as we could talk to this for hours upon just this alone, but, um, you know, that's just kind of what I believe. Um, sure. Are you familiar not only with the problem of evil? Problem of evil. Can you, uh, let me know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Right. We can just go through it. Um, so do you, do you believe that God is free will? I believe God is love, and in order for love to exist, it has to have the freedom of will. So God has free will? No, God does not have free will. So what and here's why. God action? God um, has, it, God can only do things that are good. Um, now, before we go into this, this whole, there, there's a whole backstory behind this. Like the book of Job, as you probably know, is, is, is actually the first written book of the Bible, not, not Genesis, like what most people think. Historically, it is, a lot of people think that Job was actually written first. And the good thing about reading Job first before anything else, it gives you a whole backstory of why evil is in the world um, and, and why God allows bad things to happen. Um, and for instance, in the book of Job, it starts out with, Satan coming to God in heaven saying, look at these human beings that have been created. Um, why do you love them so much? Like, and keep in mind, all that's already happened, if you read Genesis first, the, like, Satan gets cast out of heaven for trying to take a third of the angels to rebel against God because he believed that he could become God. Um, but with all that being said, after time has gone by, the book of Job talks about how Satan brings his angels back to heaven and confronts God. Why do you love these humans so much? Uh, they would all turn on you no matter what. Pick your best one and I will make him turn on you. And uh, so what God then does, and it kind of shows and foreshadow for everyone's individual life of why he allows bad things to happen. Um, he actually tells Satan to go after Job. And he actually says, my servant Job will not turn on you or turn on me. Um, so do as you will to him, his family, his loved ones, just do not kill him. That's the only thing you can't do. Um, so immediately Satan goes and sends a tornado to his house because Sa Satan also has the power to do evil things and, and control nature and stuff like that. Um, so he sends a tornado to his house, kills his, all of his sons. Um, he sends an evil army or, or who, I don't know the exact militia that came by and, and killed all of his servants and, and flock, um, but wiped them out, um, sent diseases to him and his wife, who were the only people still alive of all of his servants and all of his sons. And I don't know if he had daughters, but I believe maybe he did. Um, but basically turns the whole town on him because they think that, that he's going bad and, and Satan's just allowed to, to do everything bad that he wants to do in order to turn Job from God. Um, and throughout the whole book of the book of Job, it's basically just him, you know, not turning from God. But by the way, I the have read why... the book of Job, just letting you know, I'm kind of letting you do that because I think you want to do that for the audience, but I know the book of Job. I read it. Um, Good. I know the story. Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, yeah, I was just, you know, in case you haven't. Um, but that being said, that's why I, I say that God does not have free will. However, he allows free will for the things that he's created. Um, and, and the reason why God does not have free will is because God cannot sin because he's perfect, which is why he sent Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, Eden as soon as they did sin, because he cannot be in the presence of imperfection in order to be perfect. Um, and with that being said, he does allow evil to happen through the things that he's created, but he himself cannot do evil. Okay. okay. So like, um, you said that God does not have free will, right? But you also said that free will is necessary for love. 
So if free will is necessary for love and God doesn't have free will, then God doesn't love us. I would say God loves us. I would say he also loves himself. And, and he loves himself so much that... But he has he to have free will loves, in order to love, right? Uh, in a different form because he lives in... It's almost like a different uh, dimension of love, if that makes sense, because it's he's the creator versus what's created and what his purpose is is to be loved by his creation, not for his creation, you know, and him to be equal. Um so what he does is he creates something and he puts evil in the world or he allows evil to be there through the choices of right and wrong, um, no matter what he's created. And what happens within that happens within that creation. Um, but those who choose to love him are the ones that he truly wants. And, the, and by love, he's defined it as multiple things, but um, basically turning from evil and loving those around. Uh, and through that, in the end, he gets rid of what does not choose him and, and keeps in his presence, in, in his perfect heaven, what has chosen him in the end. Okay, but I'm, I would I'm, say I'm confused. So, so is free will necessary for love? Freedom of choice, yes. Okay, so in order God has to... free will then. I, I think his creation has free will, but I don't think God himself has free will. So then God can't love. Again, you say that God, that free will is necessary for love. It, God doesn't have free will, therefore God doesn't love. Well, it's love in a different regard. It's, it's not love as we define love. As we define love is two people choosing to do, you know, right and wrong, or right, choosing to do the right thing even though the wrong thing is available. Whereas God is only the right thing. And there, the wrong thing is not even available. Like it's not the freedom of choice to be there. He just cannot be in the presence of wrong. Does that so make sense? who determines God's action? Um, I think God's action, honestly, is as far as what he's allowed to do in order to be perfect. Is, is that what you're asking? No. How does he determine what he does? Um, how, no, how is he, it determined what he does? How is it determined? Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. That's one that I possibly can't determine because I don't know the future. Um, nor do I know why yet, why everything has happened that has happened it's kind of just as soon as you get to the end destination then you can look back and say oh that's why this has happened um but as far as what the bible says um in the book of revelation it, it i mean it kind of tells you why exactly things happen the way that they do in order for the people that choose to be with him and love him to be finally back in heaven with him forever because at the end that's what he wants to like he wants to be loved just as much as we need to be loved um but in order for him to be loved he has to allow creation to either choose him or to not and each one of us have our own individual journey to, to do that and and it's your choice yeah so um um Hold up one second. Um, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm not getting who's just determining God's action. Maybe I'm not tracking or something, but like, I just, I don't know when you answered that. Well, I don't think, I mean, I don't think anybody determines God's action. I think that God had a purpose to create everything, which was his action and his meaning for his action which so, is so, so god what determines god's action is unexplained well maybe it is explained i just don't know how to explain that i mean i i'm not god i'm sure god knows but i don't, I don't. want to say that it's determined by god i would like to believe that god determines his own actions yes that yeah, God can determine his own actions. He just can't do things that are logically impossible. And doing something that's evil is logically impossible. Therefore, God couldn't do it, even though God has free will. 
Right. I guess that's kind of what I was saying was God does Like, I have free will, free... but I can't, like, grow wings out of my back and fly. Because that's logically impossible, given my, uh, my oh, nature. Right. That would make sense. And I, I, would, I would argue that God, for, for God to be God, it is logically impossible for, for him to do evil. Yeah, 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 sure. So, like, again, he can still have free will, though. So God, if God determines his action, he has free will, right? Um, but is so, that free will if he doesn't have the choice to do evil? Is that free will? Well, I, I mean, would argue no. If you argue that that's not free will, then I don't think you have the ability to say that God determines his own action. Well, then maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe that's Do you think right. I have free will? I can't grow wings out of my back and fly. I think to a physical limitation, yes. Like, you can choose to lie to me right now. You can choose to kick me off of your life. That's the freedom of, of, of you, your choice. Yeah, yeah, and God is, uh, God is all good. Therefore, like, given him being all good, right, he couldn't contradict to that. Right. So I think the way that, you know, evil does exist in the world is because he, what he creates, which are angelic beings, angels, Satan being one of them, um, have the freedom of choice and the freedom of to do good or evil. Uh, and the angels that stayed with him in heaven, which were two thirds of them, chose to be good and do good. And then a third of them, which were, I don't know the exact number, but it says tens of thousands of thousands of thousands, which was the highest number that they could count at that point. Um, you know, were chose to do evil. And then what he did, what God did before creation was, was before human beings were made was they gave, he gave them dominion over earth. And, and that's how, you know, what was once a perfect earth, not, you know, with natural disasters and stuff like that, um, you know, came about. Connor, uh, do, what was my question? I actually can't remember. I'm not gonna lie. What, um, does God have freedom of choice or free will? No, 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 but I, I I was relating to something else other than that. I think I think I was saying like I can't even remember. Um it, it was it was more than that. It wasn't just the free choice. I forgot, bro. Um, it was what I remember you talking action. about grown, grown, grown I, I, I think you just said it's unexplained. <laughs> so I mean if God doesn't have free will right, then I, I just don't see a reason as to why God would be able to determine whether or not to create the universe. Um, well, think about it in a, the way I, I should say I think about it, is like, say you're a being that has a lot of power in a confined, in a space. Let's just say that, like, you, Parker, have a one mile by one mile, you know, box that you get to do whatever you want. And you can do anything that your brain imagines, almost like Minecraft back in the day on creation mode. Um, but anything your mind desires. Uh, are you just going to sit in that space and do nothing with nothing but time? It, it sounds very boring. And it sounds... God can make himself not boring. Right? Like God can just not I be bored. I, I, do you think do you think you could um if i was all powerful yeah i can make myself yeah. not bored yeah yeah well, but how would you do that um just by like causing my my uh, neurobiology to do that i mean does that sound enjoyable to you to j just make yourself never bored and then you just sit there in that space and do yeah, nothing yeah i'm just never bored yeah <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't or, sound boring you, to me. Or, if I'm never bored, how could I be bored? I, I mean, as far as how I view it, is I think it would be more enjoyable and more fulfilling to create something and watch my creation come to fold. And no, have I could always be enjoyed point. without having to create. Possibly. But yeah, maybe so, that's not the highest level of fulfillment. Okay, well, what determines what gives God fulfillment? I mean, I would argue everything that he's created. It, it would sound pretty enjoyable to me if I was able to create all this and watch it all come to fold and then have an end goal in mind, which is to create these beings that choose to love me. And then I get to basically have an awesome family for all of eternity that chose me, even though they could have chose evil. That sounds pretty fulfilling to me. I know in my life, 
the most fulfilling things in my life are my family. Um, and if we are made in God's image, which is meaning that we have the emotional capacity that God has and we feel the things that God feels, then I would argue that his ultimate fulfillment as well would be his family. And, and family are the people that choose you. But God determines what gives him fulfillment. So why doesn't God determine I mean, a manner in which produces less suffering to cause him the most fulfillment? Um, well, again, we weren't what were created first. What were created first was the angelic beings that they call angels. And there what there was a not there's not a said period of time that he existed with them in a perfect environment where nothing ever went wrong and where sin was not and the choice of evil was not something that was available so you don't know how long and i don't know how long that existed where these angels lived in heaven with god and all they did was praise him because they didn't have any choice then god brought in the the, the ability to choose between right and wrong and a third of those angels chose wrong now, there was a reason why he brought that into existence. I don't know that reason. If I had to guess, it's because it brought forth a new level of love, which was, and more fulfillment, which was, oh, now these beings choose to love me and choose to do the right thing. They genuinely do love me, and I'm not making them love me, if that makes more sense to you. I understand that you're saying I'm not making them love you, but like, they can have free will and never do evil, right? That that's that's logically possible. Do you agree? Um, well, I guess then you're limiting you're limiting their choice. No, you're not. At that right. point, just, just wait, just wait. So, is it possible? Is it logically possible for them to freely do the good thing always? I mean, I guess if it's a perfect being. Yeah, so why couldn't God just create perfect beings? Because then they would be God. Uh, not not in terms of this, right? Because they don't have all the characteristics of God. They can be perfect in relation to morality. Possibly. Um, what, what's the issue with God doing that? Well, I just, I don't think that it's... I don't think that that is um, – it almost feels like it's, it's limiting them. If, if, they, if they have the ability to do good but also have the ability to do wrong, but still at the same time you make sure none of them do wrong, like that's almost still too controlling. I don't see how that's necessarily controlling because they're freely doing so. But are they freely doing it if you make sure that no matter what, even though they quote unquote have the freedom to do wrong, they still only will do right because you've made them that way? Say that one more time. Do, are they still having the ultimate ability to do right and wrong, even though, yes, in your quote, unquote, in your world, they are quote unquote always going to do right? Um, even though they have the choice to do wrong, it's still a little bit limiting and restricting their freedom of choice if you make sure that they always do right and they don't do wrong. Um, but if, the, if, if it's said that they have freely are able to do this, how is it restricting? Are they freely able to do it if nothing ever goes wrong? I mean, I could say that when I drop a baseball in my hand right now, it has the ability to go up to space, but it no, doesn't. No, not, 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 give, not given its properties. If, if grabbing, you're right, if, if those properties exist. So if those properties did not exist, which is they actually can choose to do wrong, and some of them will, then, and, and for instance, like sometimes in different spots of, you know, earth gravity doesn't exist let's just imagine that if i did drop a baseball in those spots it would actually go to space but um the same thing applies yeah if, if it to, was physically possible yeah right 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 
So if it was actually physically possible, then there would be instances to prove that it is physically possible. Same thing with choice and, and, and why these beings could choose to do evil. Um, yeah, but God and, can actualize any logically possible world. So if there's a logically possible world in which every single being on earth always chooses to do the good thing freely, well, then God can create that logically possible world. Maybe. And maybe, honestly, maybe he does. There, There is... I'm not against thinking that there's other life in in the universe. And let's say God created 10,000 different planets where life does exist. Maybe our planet just so happens to be one of the planets that where sin does exist. No, but we're not saying that God created all of those. We're saying God selects one particular reality, right? In this in, in this reality, everyone freely engages in action. Right, but when everyone does freely engage in action, they choose to never sin. That is a logically possible world from the set of infinite logically possible worlds. I'm saying I, God I selects mean, that guess, one, guess, right, yes. and it produces it is, it is a reality possible. in which there is no sin over a reality in which there is sin. Okay, so if if we're comparing these realities, we're saying that God has a choice between a reality where there's free will and sin, and a reality where there's free will and no sin. Given that we exist in the reality in which there's sin, that would tell us that God prefers the reality with free will with sin over the reality of free will with no sin, implying that God prefers sin, which is a contradiction, because sin is something that God has a preference against. So this statement would be that God prefers something that he has a preference against. Um, do, I, I still, in, in my belief, I would believe that it's a little bit restricting. Uh, as far as like the capacity of what true love is, if evil doesn't exist. The capacity of true love and, and evil and, does not exist. I'm confused, right? Yeah, if right. evil doesn't so, exist, why can't love exist? Uh, well, I, I think that the freedom of, of choosing love doesn't exist as, as to that highest capacity. Um, so for instance, if I had the ability to cheat somebody out of millions of dollars and, and do it in a wrong way, in order for me to earn that money, you know, in, in the right way, it would take a whole lot more work. But fulfillment wise and, and why it would mean more to me to do it that way would because I actually worked for it and I didn't cheat somebody out of money and doing it in a wrong way. Um, and and for the same way, you know, love can can be seen as the same thing, as far as the fulfillment of how what joy it brings to to God Himself when His creation chooses to love Him, even though evil does exist in the world. Um, wait, wait, wait. So are you saying that God randomly chose the reality to pick instead of just choosing a particular reality? I think He created the earth specifically designed the way that he's created it today that doesn't answer my question though like did god did no, god decide to create this particular question. logically possible world out of all the other ones or did god randomly choose i think he specifically chose this one okay so if god specifically chose one what's different from that and god choosing a reality specifically choosing a reality in which we have always done the good thing because that is a logically possible world in which we always do the good thing, and God didn't determine that. Because again, remember, God's choosing right. from all I mean, the like, set of all logically yeah, possible worlds. There's, there's, there is a set of millions of logically possible scenarios in which things could exist. However, we exist how we exist today, and based off of the historical evidence that is found to back the claim that Jesus did do what he said. And, and that Jesus is God himself in human form coming down in, in the form of human, um, then that is what, you know, best proves that God, God exists. Now, yeah, you're right. You can, you can 100% claim that, you know, what if sin never existed? And what if angels never existed and brought sin into the world? You know, Let's let's think about it that way. If angels never existed, sin wouldn't exist. Us humans were just brought into a world where sin already existed. Sin had already existed 
in creation before we were even created. Yeah, wait, because so that, yeah, uh, that would be an issue then. Or you could also ask, yeah, I agree. You could ask that same question because we're talking about God having responsibility for this because God intentfully created one reality out of all of the other realities that could have been created, right? And if we're saying that God is all good, God is going to pick the most preferred world, right? So it would seem like God would pick the world in which we always do the good thing over the world in which we do sin. Else that would just be right. telling the statement that, that God is, prefers is sin, God which is a contradiction. Do you believe God himself sinned? Like, do you think he created sin? Or do you think Here that he, he did. created Thank you for the money, God. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Here he did, because he decided to pick a reality in which there was sin over a reality in which there was not sin, indicating that he caused sin, because he intentfully engaged in action, knowing that it would have caused this particular state of affairs when it was not necessary. I think, no, I, I think, I do think this is where my belief differs a little bit compared to a lot of people as far as what he knows. God, I believe, yes, is an all knowing God, omnipotent and, and all knowing, uh, where he knows beginning and end. Now, I do believe it's a little bit different on how we view what he knows than say, God knows what you're going to do exactly what, how you're going to do it tomorrow. I think, I, like, do you know like a decision tree? Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you have one choice to make, you know, right or left, and then each one of those two choices have another right or left, and that continues to go down for millions and millions and millions of choices. And it branches yeah. off to millions and millions and millions of different outcomes. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe how God sees everything is he sees everything as the whole he sees the millions and millions and millions and millions of outcomes of how this could happen. However, as time goes on, he sees what route this is going to go. So, yes, he's still omnipotent, all-knowing. He knows every single outcome that could happen. However, you, Parker, have the choice between turning right or turning left on this individual decision, which could, you know, create your path towards the ultimate outcome. Okay. Um, I, I'm not necessarily understanding what your, what your response is to that. Um, but I can provide a different um, sort of argument here. Um, this is kind of like a moral one. Uh, do you, um, do you think that God um, did the flood? Uh, yes. And, and here's why I believe he did. Um, so back in those times, um, it was, uh, mostly actually not just because Noah was, you know, the most pure man of them all, but the reason why they believe, or most biblical scholars believe God, um, chose Noah and his family was because he was the only human um, human generation, or I should say human bloodline that was still pure. And the, so uh, do you know like the term Nephilim? Like Goliath, do you know the term Yeah, Nephilim? I've heard of this, I've heard of it. Okay. So uh, a Nephilim is a uh, human that was actually um, bred with like angelic beings, which is why, you know, they had 10 foot, 11 foot, you know, people. Um, and why they believe Noah's family was actually chosen was because he was the only family left on earth that hadn't been bred and have their bloodline tainted with like different demonic or angelic bloodlines. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really confused how that responds to my point though. So, the, so why do I believe the flood happened? Was because no, I'm not asking the, why the flood happened. I never asked that point. Why I do I believe in the flood? No, none of those questions. Okay, repeat your question. If yeah, you I was just asking if you did believe in the flood. Right, yeah, I would yeah, so, believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, okay. Uh, in this sense, do you, do you think that God killing those individuals takes their free will away? Um, I would say it ends their life in order to make our other actions in the future. 
just they like if the you golden, got thank you so much gold? does it get away does it destroy their free will though like does it get rid of that i think they had free will up until they died okay so if a p3do is graping a child and god just kills the p3do did he take away their free will i'll be honest i don't know what a p3do is but is raping um, a child is that what you think? yeah you have to say r word or essay it's tiktok tos i'm literally like i'm literally using the particular terminology okay. um that's accepted by tiktok but um p3do p e d o okay do you know what that means i think i'm grasping it sure what do you mean you're grasping it I'm a, a, an adult that's wanting to be with a minor okay yeah i got that you got it you got it Yep, got yeah. it. Yeah, God sees a P3DO graping a child, right? If mm -hmm. God kills the P3DO, is that taking away their free will? Uh, I don't think it's taking away their free will. I think their free will was to choose to do that action. So God's not taking away their free will by killing them. Okay, so can God can God just kill Hitler then? Because that's not going to take away his free will, and that's going to save millions of people's lives. I think the only way to take away free will is to take away the ability to do evil. Okay, so God can just unalive all of the bad people. He could raise them. Think the confetti. From I appreciate dead. it. Yeah. No, God can just unalive all the bad people. So if someone's going to commit a sin, God can just unalive them. That doesn't get rid of their free will. So clearly speaking, um, clearly speaking, we should, uh, God should have stopped all of those genocides from happening. Right. But then if he and did God that, did it, so also, God doesn't exist. He would also be breaking his promise, which is something that he can't do. Well, no, God could have done it prior to, to the flood. Well, prior to the flood, he had still already made a promise to Satan and his promise to Satan, which he can't break a promise. That's one of his, one of his things. Um, his promise to Satan was that you have dominion over earth. Um, but I mean, when he did the flood, that's not dominion then. Why is it not? Wait, what's up? Why is it not? Why is that revoking his dominion? He still uh, has dominion over earth. Yeah, He's yeah, because because it killed people, cleaning. right? So you said you said that if if God killed people in general, that would be d breaking the dominion, okay? But then him no, doing I the Noah's Ark that if does God, break it. God restricted the ability to do evil, because in order for Satan to have dominion over things, he has to have the ability for to create and cause evil in in the beings and and tempt the beings to do evil in ways that you know. Again, they're despicable, like what you've been saying. So the flood is a way for one to clean the bloodline, to make it so all humans were, were not, you know, with tainted bloodlines, but still not break his promise at the same time, which was to still allow evil to exist in the world and the freedom of choice to do evil, but his human creation is no longer tainted with Nephilim bloodlines. I understand that you're saying that, but like, again, that doesn't respond to the idea of whether or not that takes away free will. Cause like the, at the end of the day, that's right. If it doesn't take away, again. what's up? It doesn't take away free will. That, that's my point. If it doesn't take away free will and it doesn't get rid of the devil's dominion over the earth, then why doesn't God stop all of those bad things from happening? Well, he will. And it says that he will. No, not will. Why Does hasn't? It? Why hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I mean, I guess that's like, his timing it's not something that i have the answer to so god if can had, get rid of bad actions but decides not to i think when he comes back what he's going to do like what he says in the bible is right now is is the period that he's giving everybody the chance to choose and, and he's trying to allow for as much time to go by before things get too bad um that the people that are going to choose him and that are going to choose to choose him, they have the time in order to do so, so that he can gather as many people as he can in order to bring with him in heaven. Um, but, you know, as Revelation states, it's, it shows that, you know, there is a rapture that's going to come and then there's going to be the seven years of tribulation. And, and eventually 
the people that don't choose to love him are going to go to hell, whether that's they die of natural causes or, you know, all of the, the seven years of tribulation and, and horrible things start happening around the world, earthquakes, diseases, um, and different, you know, people killing all kinds of people. Yeah, is there anything else you want to go over or talk about? Or actually, one uh, more thing maybe. I could ask before I do. Um, so God, there were there infant babies that died during the flood? Um, probably, yes. Had they reached the age of accountability yet? Uh, I think at a cert there is a certain age, that, and I don't know what that age is. For everybody, it's different. But it's uh, where you can actually comprehend the information that you have been given. Um, in order to be held accountable. So there is an age of, age of accountability. Okay, so they were not at the age of accountability yet. So is it is it best? Believe. So if if we're talking about a loving parent, right, and their kid had to die, right, would it be best for them to uh, drown them or to poof them out of existence? Um, I guess you could poof them out of existence, but that has never happened. So I don't, I don't know. Like that's never even said in the Bible. So, so it would be better to poof that. them out of existence. Okay. So if it's better to poof them out of existence, then why did God drown them rather than poofing them out of existence? Um, I mean, it doesn't say that God's a super, like uh, the Bible states that God was almost, is kind of ruthless at the same time, but he was angry. He's angry that his creation got destroyed. And so he takes it out like, on innocent babies. Good. Well, he just takes it out on, on the entire, you know, human creation in itself. That, Including that had innocent different, babies. I mean, there was, there was babies, there was other people, yeah. So what he but did to those babies, not, drowning them rather than, uh, than uh, what's it called, uh, poofing them out of existence, that's not a bad thing for God to do. I think God takes his anger out on things that have chosen to not live the way he desired i mean Wait, for instance those like babies sensing, didn't do that those babies can't be held accountable yet remember well they can't make but they probably go to heaven as far as judgment wise you're right so but but they could they go cannot, to heaven by being poofed there instead of instead of this theoretically i guess yeah you could be poofed if that's what he desires but he sent a flood to kill everybody. Yes. So God desires to drown them over to poof them into heaven. So like, yeah. Okay. All right. So God prefers suffering over non-suffering. I mean, God does, there is suffering that God has caused to those who have not, you know, chosen him. Uh, like for instance, uh, sending. But it's unnecessary suffering. Through. It's not just suffering. It's unnecessary. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many other ways, other than poofing, how many other ways would you like to die? Po no, poofing would, I'd love to be poofed instead of drowning. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, me too. But, but at the same time, okay, that, that's just not what was chosen. Um, and I'm not the one to, to differ that. Now, what, what makes you believe that the historical evidence does not back the claim that jesus lived and that jesus died and that jesus rose again and that jesus so is i God believe jesus existed i believe that jesus was crucified on the cross i don't believe in resurrection as one i dispute the idea that he was even in a tomb in the first place as it was most likely for him to be decomposed on the cross second of all many historians uh, either are agnostic or, or deny the claim that joseph arimathea exists the person in the bible that claim or supposedly was supposed to um have bought the particular tomb, right? So there's very good reason to reject the idea he was even a tomb in the first place, which would then put us in a position to not even accept the resurrection. Okay. Okay. Have you read um, either Case for Christ or have you read uh, More Than a Carpenter? I haven't read those yet, but I'll make sure to look into them. I have friends, like uh, I'm pretty sure you talked to Matt, right? Matt has read that. Yeah. And Matt has gone. Yeah, I would rather that. look into it. it it's it, it's got some good knowledge in there as far as just historical proof outside of the Bible, um, which is something that I do think for as well. Because I don't, I don't, I'm one of the believers that I don't believe that the whole it because of faith. Like no faith, honestly, like that's not enough. Like I, you have to have historical evidence in order to back something, which is uh, it's why we believe other beings before our time existed. Like for instance, Alexander the Great, which 
has one of the most um, amounts of historical evidence to back his claim during that time period. What not a lot of people know was the the bibli. I think it's called a is it bibliography? Like a is that what it's called? Like a documentation about his life. Right, basically. Oh, um, oh, oh! Like a not a, bib a bibliography is like a work cited, a biography. Okay, sure, biography. Um, basically, the first biography, not about his life, but like it's not a biography. It, it's the documents that talked about his life during that time, like to to coincide that, that was written about his life. Um, like the, a the most accurate. Form, sure. Yeah. Like the most accurate forms of documentation that we can find as far as like chronologically to Alexander the Great's life as everybody in the chat here myself included could um, agree that he existed was actually written 400 years after he was alive which is the most it, it is the most accurate piece of documentation that we have of his life and yet we all believe that he existed even though it was written 400 years after his life um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's true but um I, I, if I was you, I would just, I mean, I'm not, again, an Yeah, expert, like the manuscripts exist, so like, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I would just, I would look into it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, um, make, sure, I'll it, make sure to look into uh, that. Is, is is there, like, anything specific you want to get, uh, like, say before I get off? I've been on for, like, seven hours. Oh, dude, I understand. You're probably tired. <laughs> I get it. But, uh, no, the reason why I, I did come to the uh, conclusion that I believe the Bible... Um, gives me the best reason to believe that God exists was because it was a year after Jesus died that everything was starting to be written, and we have proof of that. Um, and then there's also 500 different um, people that wrote about Christ being seen after his uh, resurrection period, which is the most amount of um, evidence that we have outside of the Bible for anybody um, during that time. Um, and, and because of that, it just, to me, it, it's almost harder for me to not believe that Jesus was at least seen or believed to be seen um, after his resurrection. And therefore, because of all of that, I believe that he is God, and, and therefore God exists. Uh, but in order for me to, be, to disprove that God exists, I would have to disprove that Jesus himself did not exist and did not um, That's resurrect false. from Completely the dead. False. Well, in terms of resurrection, we cannot accept that. I, I, I'm, I can give my responses. I think I already did, but um, I think you're just going to reinstate that. So I'll let you I'll let you have ended it there. But, man, I, Connor, I appreciate you coming well, on, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, Parker. Hey, appreciate I appreciate that. what you do, bro. I really do. You're really good at what you do. I love it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate you coming on. Them. Have a good day, bro. All right, y'all. I'm going to get off right now. I love everyone so much. I'm going to send everyone over to uh, someone that Dan, Danny's uh, Danny's friend that he wanted me to like um, send everyone to the live for. Every, uh, I appreciate everyone coming on today. Tomorrow I should be on around 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Everyone go over to the God Talk. The God Talk Spam Parker Raid, Spam Love from Parker, or you can go look up Danny Phil Talk. Spam Parker Raids, Spam Love from Parker. Let's try to boost up their live. They've got like 40 people in there. So let's boost it up right now. Love everyone so much. I'll see everyone later. Again, go to the God Talk. Again, the underscore God underscore talk. All right, love y'all so much. See y'all later. Bye. Bye, y'all.